That's right. Um, oh. Oh, okay. Um, the, the, uh, the otherworldly gaze in response to the fetch land, not something I'm necessarily used to seeing, but very, very happy to see that. Very entertaining from my perspective. It's... I want to say it's something you don't see that often, but only because less legacy is shown on stream. Yes. And we see more modern, where you don't get a lot of that in response to your fetch land. How about you pause? Do a thing, yeah. I, I used to do a similar thing in, uh, in in any format with an Evolving Wilds or a Terramorphic Expanse or Panoramas. Uh, I would I would just crack those at random annoying times in, in combat just to frustrate oh. my friends and, yep. in, in, like, home draft. Just be like, uh, before blockers... I'm going to crack my panorama. Yeah. I mean, although you do have th- you have extirpate and surgical extraction available to you. Yes. So, you know, if you want to cack somebody's scalding tarn and just hold yeah. them off of uh, being able to fetch later on, it's absolutely available to you. In, the, in more 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 larger larger card-based formats, that's very relevant. Thus, yes. he's taking out the painter's painter. servant here, leaving otherworldly gaze and prismara command and some sort of artifact in Cody's graveyard. Cody looking to refill potentially with this expressive iteration here, drawing the mountain here. Cody so facing down Ignoble. Just the Ignoble hierarchy. So if we look ahead and we see Swifty's list, do we see anything interesting that happens on 4-4? Four, four? Aside from all, uh, Aluren, right? Uh, Questing Beast Questing is, Beast. is certainly a potential hit here for, for Swifty. Uh, as well as a potential living wish into X, right? Yes. Cody dropping the expressive iteration. Looking at his top three, it looks like we've got Manifold, Key, Pentap, Pentap Prism, Prism, and something. Yes. So this is still a setup turn for Cody. We're Cody's currently spinning their wheels, just looking for... I don't want to say a critical mass, but I think the right cards, because yes. there's a lot... Based on the list that we see, there's a, a lot of possibility. We don't have a finalized main deck yet. Right. Or, Muddle our manifold key to, hand, to to the bottom, Muddle to Exile, and whatever other card I said to hand. Uh, Hopefully we'll find out what is in hand shortly. LED go. We, which All we right. did know about. So we we are getting there. We are, we are inching closer to being able to do anything at this point with Muddle and, and yeah. Exile. I think this is Cody's. Yes, this is Cody's deck. We just don't know, unless this list that we have, uh, the Moxfield list is... So let me actually, you know what? I there. can just paste this right into the chat, can't I? Yeah. Once I find... Chat, there you go. It is hard to tell, John. We are still trying to figure out who our, our big winners are, but uh, if you if you believe Mason, he's going to win all of his matches. Um but I quite like a lot of the lists today. We were saying outside from a draft perspective, this was one of the more, Jason and I were saying this is one of the more like disciplined drafts that we've seen. And even though there are a lot of cards that we think should have been drafted that simply weren't, people managed to draft cohesive decks and and be disciplined about waiting for cards to show up for them. Yes, like the, we saw a lot of discipline very early on too. Yes. And, and I, that was a very impressive draft to watch it, it was very enjoyable because there wasn't a lot of off the rails uh, movement birthing pod for swifty cody follows up with a mox diamond into a pentad prism yes. mox diamond pitching that mountain swifty going to his next turn starting to look for a pod chain here most likely. yes i i i'm i don't know this list very well so we're going to look for a swifty is going to be looking for a two drop as yeah. are we to see where we could go and i don't i think we have one card that could continue the chain. And Corridor, I think Corridor monitor, monitor into Renegade Rallier. Yes. Could push the chain pretty far pretty quickly here. So this we're bringing Corridor Monitor up right now. Yeah, we're going to see Swifty pay two life, use the Ignoble Sack, the Ignoble Go Get Corridor Monitor, untap Birthing Pod, yep. reuse Birthing Pod, Sack Corridor Monitor, Go Get Renegade, Renegade Rallier, Rallier, bring okay. back Corridor Monitor. <laughs> yep, so let's bring, let's bring up Renegade Rallier for those. This... Oh, that's interesting. I can't find. Oh, you. Oh I, no. I think you you may have pasted. You may have pasted. Hey, I don't know what apparently, despite the fact that I copied something in the previous. It's very strange. Renegade Rallyer. Oh no, Swifty Swifty changing his tune may have may have a quarter monitor in hand, going for Fibblethip instead. Going to go ahead and draw a card, uh, and will not be able to untap a uh, Birthing Pod this yep. turn, unless there's a green unless there's a blue source. 
coming off Fibblethip for Swifty here. Yeah, so right now we're not quite... We're, we're not ready to, to finish potting off. We might be in the middle of a, a, a fishing expedition. I yeah. saw a lure in hand. Yes, a lure in hand. Swifty drawing two cards. Fibblethip coming in, of course, from the library, getting that extra card draw. Swifty looking... Forlornly at that Bosaju in hand, wondering if he's going to have to play it as his land drop for the turn. But it does come into play untapped, which is the nice part. So we could actually cast from hand a Renegade Rallyer yes. if we play the Bosaju this turn. If Renegade Rallyer is in fact in hand, right. which we might think it is. I suspect that the Corridor Monitor is the card in this Oh, game. sorry, that's what I meant. Yeah, he's going to untap it. We will see. Um, it looks like, yes, it looks like that card on the far left of his hand mm -hmm. is Corridor Monitor. Yep. Rector also yes. stuck in the hand. Swifty, a little bit of an unfortunate draw here so far. Yeah, well, I, think we're, I think we're in the position where I questioned during the draft exactly what Rector was going to be doing because we hadn't hit Alluren yet. And right. if I look at this list quickly... I don't see much that Rector can do right now because Alluring is in hand besides go fish for Sylvan Library. Destiny Spinner is an art is an enchantment creature, I think. That's also a technical possibility. Not sure that if that's in uh, Swifty's main deck or not. Looks like Swifty may be passing here. Cody taking the opportunity to go ahead and flashback the other world the gays do a little more self-milling mm -hmm. here. So we are by milling, we are setting up our Underworld Breach. We're stocking our graveyard to be able to recur anything that we might need for our combo yep. initially. So we are still in the, the early phases of get ready. Yeah, Cody, with that LED on the board, getting ready for the Underworld Breach combo here, uh, looking like he may have tried to focus his main deck a little bit more around that than mm -hmm. his draft may have initially suggested. Looks like we're dropping a land and a grim monolith into the graveyard not a hundred, that's a cascade bluffs there. Yes. I had to turn my whole head sideways. That which is the blue red filter land. So <laughs> we we did play a blue source yes. off the fibble thip, and with corridor monitor in hand, mm -hmm. we could have untapped pod by casting corridor monitor and then pod away either fibble thip or monitor to get renegade rally or to get one or the other back. Yes. So if we do that the previous turn, we leave our we leave our entire pod chain exposed. Yes. So so if we wait to untap with it, we make everything a little more interesting for Cody by making Cody interact on yep. our turn instead of taking Cody's turn off to play at sorcery speed. Yeah, these things are these are a little more fluid here. Swifty gets to manually untap the birthing pod. Cody going ahead and playing Urza, Lord High Artificer, drops that construct token to play, featuring the beautiful face of the RD regular Brandon Curry in his alter ego as Dr. PP Poo Poo MD. Goes ahead and sacks the Lion's Eye Diamond. Gonna pitch the whole hand. Okay. Cody's got plans. So this is Four, this is five mana on yeah, board. Five mana. We're going to go ahead and spin to win with Urza here. Ah, let's bring up Urza because I honestly forget exactly what the spin on Urza looks like. And Swifty is going to take a moment to check his text messages. <laughs> <laughs> Shuffle your library, then exile a top card. Until end of turn, you may play that card without paying its mana cost. So are we hoping beyond hope right now? We are hoping beyond hope. When we hit Grindstone off of our one-shot Mind's Desire here, not the card I think Cody is necessarily looking for. But we have Painter Servant in the Grindstone. So yeah, Painter, are... Painter Servant is in the yard. Grindstone's on the board. Oh. Um, if Cody can get that Painter Servant back out of the yard, he's in business. But we have a but we have the Pesagio in hand as well. Yes. Oh. Ice Fang Quaddle coming down at instant speed draws yet another card for Swifty, filling his hand with more goodies. Gonna go ahead and untap and keep this pod chain rolling. Drops the Bosage for Wait, mana. This is a Lurin. We're gonna see a Lurin right here. Swifty's going to try to win this game. Swifty's on the moving spot. quickly. This looks yeah. like it's wrapped up. Corridor monitor. Let's go ahead and untap that mox. Use the mox. Birthing pod. Pod that away. And yep. That's it. Cody sees the writing on the wall. We're going to go get some sort of Acerarak. Yep. There's the Acerarak. And okay. into the lost mine of Fandelver over and over and over again. So we mentioned uh, Acerarak when we were talking about the Alluren chain. So this is, I'll bring up Acerarak and hopefully. It up. There it is. Okay, so a Sararak is a, a self-gating creature, much like Cavern Harpy, Silver Drake, and uh, a Gruul Kavu. There are yes. a number of other creatures, but these are the ones you typically see alongside a Lurin. So Asarak says, as long as you don't complete Tomb of Annihilation, you return it back to your hand. Now, the dungeon that we're looking to to step through is not Tomb, 
But the dungeon you mentioned that I cannot remember the name of. Yes, that's going to be the Lost Mine of Fandelver, which has that room in the middle in the third level called the Dark Pool. Dark Pool is going to go ahead and drain your opponent for one and gain you a life. Uh, the the final uh, the final room of Lost Mine does draw you a card, though. Yes. So you have to make sure you have enough cards in your deck to accommodate the life train that you need to do, finish yeah. your opponent off. And if I was Cody here, I would not ask you to count your library because we did not draw that many other cards despite chaining through with Pod. The, uh, the other interesting part about that dungeon is if for whatever reason you can't chain off and win the game on the spot, uh, the second room actually allows you to make a treasure. Yep, or a goblin. Yes, Yes, so there are a couple of different options for that. If you if you can't dark pool your opponent to death, you can make a bunch of treasures, a bunch of goblins, some of each. Despite the fact that we can't bring this card up on our search, it is a very advantageous dungeon. Yes. It is, of the three, my personal favorite. Although I think Tomb of Annihilation is the one that makes the 5-5 five, five demon. Uh, yes, at the very end, it does It does make, I think it's a 4-4. Four, 4-4. Four. Four, four. Um, and with, with Dungeon of the Mad Mage being the seven-step nonsense pile that uh, nobody ever really went through after the first week of, yes. of, of AFR draft. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, Aserac is, cur- is the current uh, win condition in the Aluren deck in Legacy right now. We mentioned it on cast earlier. The, the Aluren deck on the whole can do some very interesting things now because of Cavern Harpy and yes. its ability to uh, return back to hand. Mm-hmm. So you can we mentioned you can go infinite with uh, with uh, Oko mm-hmm. sorry not Oko Uro but, this, but we don't have Uro in the other end. Yep, we can win on the spot with Aserac. If we drafted Wirewood Savage, we could draw our deck. Yes. and at that point we have Infinite Storm. And we can do, we could even make Infinite Mana with Cloud of Fairies. Yes, there's a lot of there's a lot of options. That's the nice thing about the Solaran deck. There's a lot of different ways to go. And even if somebody takes one of your cards that nobody else really wants, you're not going to get locked out of a functional Lauren deck. No. Especially especially once you have Aserac, right? That's that's a that's a huge boost yes. just to have the two card combo. I think the only thing you would really be locked out of as the Lauren deck is ways to find a Lauren. Yes. That's the most important thing is being able to go get a learn. And I think this birthing pod chain is a very clever way of doing that yes. while also preserving that value engine that you were exactly. talking about during the draft. Yeah, I wasn't sure exactly what we were going to be doing with Academy Rector at that right. point. And the answer is a learn. Now, some of the pieces that we would have liked to pair with Academy Ruins, some of the value pieces, Cabal Therapy, Frexian Tower, yes. were taken in other locations across the draft. But it's not that important to us. Because pod can win in two ways. You can either go through the pod combo into a Lurin, or we have the Malira option. We have modern yep. Malira pod in our list. I was also very impressed with it, with uh, Swifty picking up the Diabolic Intent as well. Yes. Uh, shortly after the, uh, after the Cabal Therapy was taken away. Yes. The following round after the Rector by, by Jeff Blyden. Mm-hmm. That was a good adaptation on, yeah. on, on Swifty's part. Probably a card he wanted anyway. Yes. But still a good adaptation. Yeah. And it's not to say that Cody's deck is boring by any means. There's a lot going on in Cody's deck. But one of the big questions that we have is exactly what the main deck configuration of this list is. And I believe we have it in, in, in front of us looking at the, the sideboard. It looks like it, yes. Yeah. So we're basically looking to gain value with Urza, High Lord Artificer, and then combo off in one of two ways. We have the Painter Servant, Grindstone. Com- I guess three ways. Painter, Stoner, Painter Servant, Grindstone, which we got to, but Painter Servant was in the graveyard. Yeah. But we could have brought it back with Underworld Breach, which is the other part of the combo. Mm-hmm. Or we could just tinker somebody out with Blightsteel Colossus. Yeah, Blightsteel Colossus, or there's also the Time Vault uh, combo going on in the main deck here. We've got the Manifold Key Time Vault along with the Tinker. That's still very doable out of the main deck here. Yes. And, there, uh, there's the time vault. It's disguised because yes, it has an old frame. Very sneaky. And of course, uh, Cody choosing to leave the the tavern treasure combo in in the sideboard just in case that is needed. Tavern scoundrel and frenetic or freed, uh, not making the main deck. No, this wasn't the list. This has this does have brain freeze. This is the brain, so we uh, we could underworld breach brain freeze. Okay. Yep. Cody, Cody definitely yep. cognizant of his power with the the underworld breach brain freeze. Uh, just being able to to mill yourself out and and then and then really go off. Yes, I, and I do like paradoxical outcome as a value spell rather than a game winning spell for yep. storm. It, it seems very appropriate for this deck to just accrue your value naturally over time. Now on the end on token, right? So you you're not bring we're not really making tokens outside of the one. On Urza's Enter the Battlefield, right? We yeah, don't... there's that one and the token that's generated by Fable of the Mirror Breaker, but other than that, that's really it for tokens here. Yes, uh, because Mirage Mirror becomes a permanent yep. when you copy something, 
and Prismari Command does make treasures, but we're most likely going to be flexing that card to use the treasure tokens if we make them rather than yep. leave them around. Same with Ragavan, that those treasures are going to be used to do something. Yes. So other otherworldly gaze we saw cast a number of times. In yes. Game. Two times. It looks like we're getting ready for game two here. Uh, Swifty up a game after taking us all the way through the Lost Mine again and again and again. again. Steven, yes, dungeons. The dungeons are happening. Mm -hmm. Swifty with this Aluren combo deck showing us the power of dungeons. But not dragons. No dragons. No dragons. No, dra no dragons. Very few dragons in this format I think it's today. Just, uh, Ragent. Yeah. Yeah, that's... Uh... There's really not. There's really yeah. not a lot. Yeah. Yeah, we didn't roundabout get there with the shapeshifter. Did we? <laughs> I don't think so. Okay. Ooh, turn, turn one, one Ragavan is huge, especially with that Mox Opal treasure. Mm -hmm. going to make it a little easier to leverage that potentially if Cody wants to save them up. Inquisition I, from okay. Swifty. Uh, Ooh, that is not the greatest hand. No, it's not. A couple of lands and a fury. But we're going to be able to cast that fury in very short order. Yes. It's going to be two turns, I think. We attack with Ragavan. Play a land, so that's two mana. Ragavan makes a third with treasure. Opal's not turned on yet, so it'll be the the turn after that. We'll be able to actually hard cast the fury. Looks like we may have a blocker for Ragavan as veteran explorer comes down. Swifty oh, looking no. to accelerate things in his favor. And with Cody's hand... I think Swifty's primed to block here if he so chooses. Oh, absolutely. Veteran Explorer lives to die. Yes. <laughs> Veteran Explorer is a beautiful, beautiful card. Looks like Cody has drawn Painter's Servant here. Not super helpful in this particular moment, but it does start to turn on Mox Opal. Cody will yes. drop that Painter's Servant and name some color, we're sure. Do we... Uh... We don't have blasts in this list. No, the, both, both of the red blasts went to Alec on that wheel yes. in the middle of the draft there. But we do have four, so we are still probably naming blue. Almost certainly blue. naming blue just for our own advantage here on Force of Negation. Yeah. That makes perfect sense. Swifty dropping a polluted delta looking to accrue a little bit more value. Cody mm -hmm. declines to attack with the ragaband correctly, so I can crack this polluted delta. Think about it. So... On Cody's side, we know there's at least Land Fury left in hand. Yes. We don't know. Are we missing the third card? Or no, he, he drew the he drew the the servant, uh, the servant yeah. played a land, so it is Land Fury, I believe, okay. is the whole hand. Yes, and we we do not know what Swifty has in store for us yet. No, still very mysterious. Blue named confirmed. Thank you, Mark. Mm -hmm. Sephiroth sheds a tear. Yes, <laughs> yes. No Sephiroth today. But bring your commander deck by, <laughs> and, and, and we'll see Zephyrus uh, do its thing yeah. for sure. So we have Phyrexian Tower and Diabolic Intent as ways to get rid of our own Veteran Explorer. We were not lucky enough to pick up Skull Clamp. No, no Clamp. Clamp for, clamp for Sam. Re uh, Renegade Rally are coming down. Oh. Going to benefit from that uh, Polluted Delta, and yes. probably going to bring back that Polluted, polluted Delta. Delta. <laughs> Imagine us. Look Making our own veteran explorer. Incredible. Swift, you going to go down to 18 here, grab another land, thinking about exactly what he's going to want, but I'm yeah. sure there's some mana fixing in the store for us. Blue Delta really does get pretty much everything. Breeding Pool coming in untapped. Looks like Swifty has something else to do this turn. The double green source, if I'm Cody, tells me we're ready for a learn. Oh, yes. No, bringing that, bringing that in along with that, that Mox. Pretty telling. Uh, and we've got the Ignoble Hierarch. Yes. Because Pod uses Phyrexian Green on both halves. Yes, which, indeed. Which makes that card extremely flexible. All right, Fury coming down, pitching. Did we name Red with Painter Servant for Fury? Wow, wait. Hang, hang. That, that is, he, they're asking the same question. Yeah, okay. Exile a red card from your hand, so yes. Yeah, no, I, I just want to make sure that uh, that we really did name red here because i was told we named a blue and that distresses me you know you know how i get worried about this sort of thing i'll be right back i'm gonna go check in on that okay verified painter servant didn't name red we expected blue because i overlooked fury but i guess our blue density for force is high enough we do not need to name painter we did not name Need to name blue, which is yeah. your, your standard choice. Yeah, the pretty pretty standard choice, but with fear in the hand, especially and Swifty knowing that, you know, it's it's probably very clear to both the players at the table what was happening, and yes. the only people confused are us, us. over here on the sidelines. <laughs> 
Because we set our own expectations. Oh, yes. That's what we do. <laughs> ah, thank you. Using the infinite tokens. That's why I brought them. Perfect. Representing that game state. You love to see it. Uh, the way is clear. Rag Ragamon and Painter Servant coming in three damage. We We're going to go ahead and get yeah. that trigger. We didn't draft. Woo! Okay, so now we're we are out infinite damage. Yeah. Well, well, not 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 uh, not for now. Let's let's go ahead and pull up murderous red caps persist here. We are in the same boat. Yep. So that's going to come back under if it dies under Swifty's okay. control. Now, is it obviously, yeah, because the owner owner supersedes yeah. control. Yes. Now, obviously, Cody Cody wants to beat Cody sees this opportunity to beat down, right? Yes. But. I don't know how many cards are in Swifty's hand. If there's a bunch of cards in there, mm -hmm. I might think about just leaving Murderous Red Cap in exile. I'm just saying, no, thank you. I don't want. I don't want you to have this. Yeah. It. That was, that was an interesting turn because if I'm Swifty, I don't see Cody's deck as really putting my life total under duress, so I'm ready to leverage it as a resource. And right. now all of a sudden it's under duress in a way I did not expect. Yeah, well, Swifty, Swifty seems to agree that uh, his life total is a resource, dropping Dark Confidant here alongside Fibblethip, trying to draw more cards, get to that Alluring combo, finish things out. Just two cards yeah. left in the hand for Swifty. So we have, is it three four drops? Yes, right. I believe we so. Are, the Red and, Cap, the Rector, and the Questing Beast. Yes. Oh, no, we have more than that because oh. there's Alluren. Ah, uh, yes, Alluren, Alluren, yes. And yes, Pod. Yes. I was thinking only of the creatures. Yes, Alluren okay. and Pod both both has four cost yes, cards. Yeah, sorry, I wasn't thinking about what we could get with Birthing Card. Thinking I was thinking about, about Bob. What, yes, what kills us? Mm, yes, 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 yes. Swifty here at a, a somewhat precarious 11 to 1 toughness creatures, both well equipped to block Ragavan. Yes. And Cody passes the turn. I think that's res I th yeah, I think that's respect for Dark Confidant. Yep, it sure is. Dark Confidant taking one point of life away from Swifty as he draws that Thought Seize here. Picking up a second card. We're going to see if Swifty is willing to spend two more life Thought Seizing Cody or if he believes that card in hand is a dud. It, Opal is, in fact, engaged. We have the Treasure Token down at bottom, Grim Monolith, and Painter Servant alongside yep, we are, we Opal. Are, we are overcapped on Metalcraft. Mm -hmm. Very nice for Cody here. So, and can sacrifice that treasure with impunity if he mm -hmm. so chooses. So we're we're alive for everything. Yeah. Anything can happen here from Cody's deck. It looks like Swifty doesn't have too much to do thinking about casting that Thoughtseize. Indicates he may not have too much other action here. Thoughtseize is going to go to uh, eight. He, I think he was just as curious as we were as what could possibly be in the hand when he played Grim Monolith and passed the turn. Right, it's and, either Blightsteel Colossus or nothing. Yep, and the answer was nothing. Yes. <laughs> Swifty spends two life and a card to find out here. Going to go ahead and continue with that turn. Cast the last card in his hand, which looks to be Parasitic, Parasitic Strix. Strix. Going to drain Cody for two here, yep. going up to 10 with Cody falling to 18. This was also in the, the midterm Alluren lists before we got Acerax. Yes. As a, a kill con because of the draining game. So you would, you're because you're draining two and gaining two, right? Yep, you're outpacing yep. your yep. your uh, your Cavern Harpy. Yes. Drain on yourself. Which is the important part. Swifty going to go ahead and pass the turn here. Go ahead, go ahead, go over to Cody. Cody looking for one of these combo pieces to finish things out. Maybe a grindstone would be nice. Doesn't look like we got Urza? that. Instead, it is Urza is going to let us spin the wheel. Yes. Essentially, I was I was thinking that if we had Urza, this is this is not our do or die turn, but our, our clock is ticking. Cody down at eighteen, but not really facing a life total threat so much as an existential Alluren yes. related threat. Yeah. <laughs> so if you spin. If you spin Urza, you can win off of Grindstone, exactly. Do we have enough mana for that? Isn't uh, it, We cast it for free, and then right. the treasure token to activate. Isn't Grindstone... Grindstone's one to cast, three to activate, I, was, I thought it was two and one. I don't remember. One and three. There it, it is. One yep. And three. yep, okay. So we do not have enough to activate the we Grindstone. Be short, but we are going ahead and going to activate that. Because, of course, we can't tap the treasure token for mana and tap it to sacrifice it. Those are mutually exclusive. Mm -hmm. So we're going to go ahead and oh, flip. Oh, the Raugren Triumph. Triumph. How sad for Cody. That is not what we want at all. That's going to live the rest of its life out on a deserted island. So 
Next turn, if we don't pay to untag Grim Monolith, we have Opal, four lands, so that's five, a treasure token, and a construct. That brings us up to six, and Painter Servant is seven. Yes, indeed. So the Trion brings us up to eight. So we have two spins that are as a next turn. Yep, we've got uh, we've got some shots here. Uh, Cody, go ahead, gonna go ahead and play that Trion from Exile. That's mm -hmm. really all you can do there. Uh, Verdant Catacombs off the top from Bob. You hate to see it as the opponent. I know, it's so sad. It's so sad when they get that free card. Mm -hmm. It's the worst feeling when you're playing against Jund in Modern. It really is, because you know the spell that they drew off of the draw step is way more powerful. Right, you're that, just... was, that was their three mana, three mana card that they drew yep. in their draw step, and they hit their land off Bob every yes. time. Yep. Every single time. So it looks like we might be checking an Oracle. I think so. We're taking a moment to check some Oracle text on something. Not sure exactly what that would be. Neither neither am I. That's okay. So Grim Monolith costs four to untap, correct? Yes. So it is in our best interest to leave that tapped and get at least two looks. And then we can decide if we want to untap it or take a third look. Yeah, at the moment, we're going to go ahead and leave that tapped just, mm -hmm. to, just to make sure that we don't, uh, yeah, don't waste our mana here up front at the beginning of the turn. Yeah. Don't want to go negative so early. But once we see what we spin up, mm -hmm. we'll figure out what Cody wants to do. Of course, Cody might just draw the nuts here. He might draw exactly what he needs. It is quite possible. I think, for me, what the mystery is what is in Swifty's hand to see where we go. Yes. You know, we, we have the ability to pod. Okay, so that's just asterisk for value. Swifty can adventure into the dungeon. What he was looking up was dungeon. Was so I think we're going to see a scry one off the first room of Lost Mine here. Yes. Yep. We scry, card to the bottom. So Swifty does believe that they're under pressure. Yes. They want to try and find an out to the situation before Cody can end the game. Yes, Swifty here is looking, looking for that out. Knows that at, at minimum, Urza and Mana places places Swifty under quite the threat. Yes. Uh, if not simply the presence of is that large token. Parasitic Strix is it? Okay. I thought Parasit if Parasitic Strix was a two drop, I thought we might have actually been choked on three because Renegade Rallyer is already in the graveyard. But we have a three, so that means we can move on to a four, which would be, is it only Rector? Um, I mean, Rector is what you want. I mean, I, I suppose you could get Questing Beast if you were really particularly excited about doing so about swinging through a bunch of two power creatures i can't see I the can't. reason for doing that especially yeah. especially not you know going up against the uh, the large token here as well yeah so we could if if we hit pod we can pod to three. Oh, there's kitchen things too so we can yes. stave off combat a little bit longer yes that's true swifty is making something i'm not sure what this brandon represents ah it's the dungeon. the dungeon, I guess. Okay, so the Brandon token is something else. I think he gated Asrax again oh. and went to the second room, so it might be the goblin. Oh, it's okay. Yes, it is the goblin token. Very good. So I think it was just a sh we missed the shortcut of play Asrax, move into the dungeon, play yeah. Asrax again. Yeah, we didn't show Asrax, but because... Cody knows about Asrek. Yes. You can just tap three mana and say, here, yep, I get a goblin, go ahead. Mm -hmm. So this is another defensive maneuver, as mentioned. Cody choosing to to just go ahead and leave that uh, monolith tapped for now, as we mm -hmm. mentioned. Going to go ahead and spin Urza and see where we land. Okay, I do want to find the dungeon because I don't know what all the rooms on that side. Ah, uh, yes. Lost Mine is a good, is a good dungeon to know. Um, I believe on the left we have is it the plus one, plus one. Yes. Yeah. We have storeroom, dark pool, and fungi cavern are the options in the third level where you, uh, where we can put a plus one plus one counter on target creature. We each opponent loses one life and you gain like one life. So that is the combo: the dark yep. pool, uh, fungi cavern. Target creature gets minus four minus zero until your next turn. So if I had to guess, we might actually just gate Asarak again to drain and gain just to stay, continue to buffer our life total. Yeah, because the with the two options here being plus one, plus one counter and drain one, gain one, mm -hmm. uh, with the cavern being on the other side of the dungeon, inaccessible, uh, definitely I think the, the better option here is to drain a little life and just have a little bit more of a buffer. Goblin yes. token uh, is going to go ahead and eat the... Uh, uh, eat, eat the damage from that attacking construct. Yeah, if we had a way 
to oh Malira. Okay, so this actually plays into what I was going to say is if we had a way to get rid of a kitchen finx, mm -hmm. we could actually reset the persist counter on it by putting the plus one plus one counter on the kitchen finx. Yes, and and effectively rebuy it. I'm starting to think, and, and this may be sort of biased based on the games we've seen, but I'm starting to feel like Swifty could have used another sack outlet, a carrion feeder, or some, a viscera seer. Does he have there a is viscera a viscera seer. Okay, we have viscera seer. I, with, I withdraw my objection. Viscera seer is present. Yeah, I, th I think you're right, though. I think we are still just one short, but I don't know if there are any that that are that were left that were good with the plan. Carrion feeder and uh, Nantuko husk are both great because they cost zero, just like a viscera seer. Yeah. But they're aggressive options. Right. The only reason I think of carry and fear is simply because it costs one mana. Yes. That's really all I want out of it is to be cheap, right? Yes. It costs one mana and I can sack for free. And it being an aggressive option, I think, is kind of important to know. Because if you do land it for one, which is very important, you can start sacrificing your creatures early. And be, it's an aggressive option because the counters don't go away. Yeah. Carry and fear just... Buffs itself forever. Yeah, just not being able to block, of course, is a, a pretty huge downside for a deck here that is looking yes. to play more defense in the mid game than offense. Yes, uh, Swifty has a nice creature configuration, but at the end of the day, a lot of these are Grizzly Bears. Yes. If you don't have a Lorraine and you don't have Birthing Pod, you're casting a lot of air. Yep. And that doesn't win games, so you need to draw things out as long as possible to get to your your end game. It looks like we're going to see Aserac a couple more times here. Going to go ahead and... Oh, no, here's the Phyrexian Tower. Okay. Which works well if you have something to do with the mana. Yep. Well, um, potentially... Aside from Aserac, are we empty-handed? I think we may be. We're going to go ahead and sack Fibblethip. Oh, no, there are two, at least two cards in hand. Okay. Oh, okay. Fibblethip down. Your journey has ended. Is this a uh, questing beast here that we're about to see? It's either that or a learn. Ah, uh, no, it's Eternal, Eternal Witness. Witness. So we are floating... Okay, we are floating one black. Floating a black, getting back Renegade Rally. We're going to go ahead and play that Renegade Rally or maybe bring back our Fibblethip here. That's what I think is going to happen because it's the last value card in the graveyard. Yep, a little more draw here for Swifty. Are we still floating? Uh, one, two, three, four, I don't four see five, a... six. No, no, we're... Uh... I don't see a blue tap for... Th Fibblethip. Oh, no. Renegade Rally is going to bring that card directly so back directly to the play, battlefield. Okay. So we're, we're oh, floating. okay. That's right. The three was for the Renegade Rally. Yeah, yes. we're floating no mana. We have three for three for wit, three for Renegade Rally. Mm -hmm. We are all set. Mana okay. will empty. Swifty's going to think a little bit more about what to do, how to proceed. I suspect we're going to see Aserac once yeah. again. It is an interesting value engine that creature really offers. Yes. And uh, we talked about it. We, we do think your de decision points are a little bit pigeonholed, but they're only pigeonholed based on what you want to do because both sides of the dungeon are very good. Yes, they are. We're just kind of already on that track on the left side of the dungeon. Exactly. Two mana for Swifty here, dropping the corridor monitor. Going to go ahead and untap uh, um, I something. I think you might have pointed... Did you point to the box? Okay. Yeah, we're shorthanding. Short we're going to go ahead and grab that Malira and say, all right, well... Have at thee. We're setting up. We're just going to present a board. Okay, so we know Aserac is in hand. That is Cyclonic Rift. Ooh. Overloaded. Overloaded Rift. Going to send all this nonsense right back. We slammed that car like we knew it was there. <laughs> oh, that was it? Yep. Well, uh, I mean, he can attack for more than seven. Okay, that's right. All right. Life total is a resource, and I forgot we still had some. Yes, indeed. One of the one of the few times that Cody's going to really yeah. care, oh, you're at seven? I guess I'll attack you. Yep. Now. And that, like, I think that is a, a harsh lesson to learn, because like I said, if I'm Swifty coming into the game, I don't think my life total is really going to be under duress. But now that I know Cyclonic Rift is in there, preparing to just remove my board for one turn's worth of getcha... I think I'm going to play my game a little bit differently, and I might sideboard a little bit differently. But I don't know what the configuration is. Like, yeah, I'm not sure what uh, what Swifty's deck looks think, like. We do have we do have the Mox Field list for Swifty now. We can take a look at that oh, okay. here in between. Because we have the Living Wish. Yes. So, But we saw the Besaidu in the main. So we instead were... of having a virtual two copies of Besaidu, mm -hmm. we're limiting ourselves to one. Yes. Uh, so, okay, so... Sideboard, here we go. Baleful Strix. I would assume we brought in Collector Hoof. Should we pop this up on the uh, on the stream for the folks? Oh, yes. Let me... So I'll, we'll pop it up on stream, and I will also paste it into chat so Fantastic. people can check on their I love own. it. Oops, let me type all of this properly. <laughs> so this is Swifty's list. All right. 
So, let's hope this works. Oh, it's targeting the wrong... It's targeting Scryfall. So let's go back to us for a moment while yep. I they can look at me take care of this. So we're looking at a... So we have this window. Oh, I understand why. Okay. So, okay. We will take care of this in a moment. So let's go back to gameplay. Yep. We've we got to drag these. that into the other window. That is exactly yep, what it is. Yep. This is the production you pay for, people. <laughs> we're working hard to improve this experience for you. Every time we're trying to make we it little, better and better. We get a little bit better. Okay. This is one of our cool improvements this time. We've got some Moxfield lists for you to look at. This here is going to be Swifty's list. So you're going to be seeing this Aluren combo deck here in front of you. As you can see, we've got that fantastic two slot. But what we're really interested here, in here right now is the sideboard. Which of these cards do we think is appropriate. Obviously, Collector Oof something to think about I would, here. I would believe so. I don't think we have... De we know Cyclonic Rift is in the list. Yeah. And its potency list la uh, lies in the Overload. The yeah. Overload doesn't target, so I don't know if we want Destiny Spinner. Destiny Spinner doesn't really matter. There's not a lot of counter spells coming out of Cody. I don't mm -hmm. think that's going to do too much. Endurance is a consideration, though, if we're worried about Underworld Breach. Yes. Uh, we saw Parasitic Strix come in because yep. of the additional combo piece that helps buffer the life total in the interim. Questing Beast is in the sideboard. Yeah, there we go. That's good to know. Yeah, I don't think we'd bring it. And then we have Rex Sage. And Veil of Summer, both of which I think are very alive in this Absolutely. Matchup. Both of those cards seem very strong. Veil of Summer at minimum cycling and Rex Sage, of course, something that's going to mess with uh, Cody's board. Yeah. So I think we're likely to see all of those cards in the deck. Yeah, and with Basaju, knowing Basaju is in the main and looking at what we're bringing in, I think the value of Living Wish is so diminished that we mm -hmm. put it in the sideboard now. All right. Let's see if we can get back to the game here. Absolutely. Here we go. Swifty starting off with a quick Zagoth Triumph. Cody going quickly. Oh my gosh, we have a turn one Time Vault off that Soul Ring into Mox Opal. Opal is live here, folks. We've got three artifacts. Time Vault, of course, coming in tap. We may see a quick win from Cody here. Yeah. If we can find that key. Swifty Dude. dropping the Malira threat saying, hey, if you can't win, I might. Yep. We, we kept a hand based on what we were capable of with our combo, and we might just get hoisted for not having the turn one interaction spell like we had the last two. Months. We might. Cody, Cody uh, mistakenly un untapping that time vault here. It doesn't really matter because I don't think he's going to activate it, but I'm sure Mark will tell him about it on the way over. And uh, we're going to go ahead and see Cody drop a land. Now, I don't see a slam manifold key mm -hmm. with authority here, but I do see back, back to basics. basics. That is going to shut this game oh down. Oh, my gosh. Swifty's in a real bind here. Those lands simply do not untap. Oh. Ho, ho. <laughs> <laughs> well, Swifty's got the, the forest. He's going to go ahead and tag for two, bring Cody down yeah. to 18 here. This is a spot where I if I kept Baseju in the main and moved Living Wish to the side, I might have kicked myself. Yes. Because having two copies of Baseju, mm -hmm. or sorry, it's still, actually, it's still not, it's not two. It's still the one. It's still the one. I guess it doesn't really matter, yeah. But you're also not, you can't pay the channel on it. Right. It costs Cur a million. It costs, uh, Boseju is, yeah, one, one in a green for the channel right now. Right now out of reach for, uh, for Swifty. Oh, no, not true. He has a legendary creature in play. He could oh, no, channel Boseju here. Right. <laughs> for the one. For, for, for once, for, for once, that's <laughs> relevant. I, I'm a I'm a living end player in modern, so I play cards like Odawara, and okay. you know my my Odawaras are never discounted, right? Yes, yeah, it's yeah. never a thing. You, you're, you're the reason I sideboard in Flusterstorm. Yes, yes, you, <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> Cody falls to 15 here as he takes some beat down from Malira. Cody going to go ahead and cycle that Ravrin Triumph here at the end of Swifty's turn, trying to find that key. Or I believe Mirage Mirror is or, also in the list. Yes, Mirage Mirror is in the list. Uh, as is Tezzeret the Seeker. All right, so Cody's got a couple of options here for ways he can go off with Time Vault. None of them seem to be present though here as he is no. in the tank. Passes the turn. We do have. I don't know if I would consider this a critical mass of artifacts, but we effectively paradoxical outcome at almost paradigm. Okay, so this shits down birthing pod. Yep, cage. The cage does rage, and we're going to bolt the Malira for good measure just to stay at parity on board mm -hmm. in terms of creatures. Cody, go ahead, going to go ahead and tap some more and just, just brain, brain freeze, freeze somebody. So I assume we're going to go ahead and fetch a basic here. Yes, almost certainly. Now, 
Is Cody brain freezing Swifty here just to lock some things up in the cage in the graveyard? The way he pointed, I think they're all going at Swifty Sounds for that good. exact reason. Yes, right. This is just if you luck out and you hit a learn, which at this point is the only way to, to win based on what's on the battlefield. Yeah. I think you're you feel really good about that. So Cody get a meal. I, I believe nine cards here off of the the castings of uh, Cage, Bolt, Bolt, and Brain Freeze itself. Blame my mind. All right. Okay, that's one. Rector. Rector. Okay. Bob. Triple tip. Okay, and so uh, some of those cards would have been very nice for Swifty. Those basic lands, that mm -hmm. Mox Emerald probably would have been pretty helpful. I think each player is disappointed in their own way. Yes. If I'm Cody, I'm disappointed I didn't hit anything of true impact. If I'm Swifty, I'm disappointed because my Emerald and my Ignoble Hierarch are gone. Well, folks, that's what happens when you mill someone for nine. <laughs> Nobody wins. <laughs> <laughs> Cody looking forlornly at the Fury in his hand along with something else there. Just going to go ahead and cast the Double Striker, clear away the yep. Viscera Seer. Viscera Seer getting sacrificed for Scry value. We have the advantage. We might as well press. Yeah, you got it. I mean, at this point, Cody needs to. Cody wants to close this game out, and if the way to do so is attacking with a two two power double striker, so what's the harm? Yeah, so be it. So back <laughs> to basics isn't the sideboard as is Cyclonic Rift. So we're taking a look at Cody's list right now, and Fury, Fury's in the sideboard. Fury also a, a feature in the sideboard. Cyclonic Rift also a sideboard card. Quite a lot of sideboard cards coming out of, for Cody here. Yeah, that I think that game one gave him quick pause to reconfigure and decide to cut. A few of the slower options in the deck. Otherworldly Gaze and Cody chooses to leave them all on top. That speaks to the possibility that there's a Time Vault combo piece here. And, and that's is. Manifold Key. Swifty speaks, scoops them up. And that's a 2-1 for Cody. Starting the tournament off oh. right with a 2-1. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Still had all these, had actually. All these, yeah. <laughs> Clicks draw cards, draw cards, show hand in Moto. Yes, I <laughs> love it. Gotta love draw card, draw card, show hand. I, I, the only time I ever press show hand on Moto is when my hand is a truly depressing pile of garbage, and I want my opponent to know, yes, this game was as miserable for me as you thought as it you, was, <laughs> as you had hoped to. These were, the, uh, were these the only combo decks that we have? Other what the everything else is kind of pseudo combo. Or Blind, we have... Blindness, yeah, pseudo combo. Alec is pseudo combo. Infect is infect. Yeah, that's a three. You could consider that a three card combo. You need yep. a creature, a pump spell, and then a doubler. Either yeah, uh, and become a mon a pence isn't necessarily a doubler, but it, it does the job, right? Steven letting us know he thinks this is Cody's first camera win. Congratulations, Cody! If that's the case, that's yeah, really awesome. I know Cody has been to a lot of VRDs, won mm -hmm. his fair share of matches for sure. No, no slouch in that department, but. Securing your first win on camera is really something. It is It is different. It's very different playing on camera than it is just playing your matches. I have never made it uh, to camera, mm -hmm. but I have made a backup feature match at a Star City team event. And I will say, the scariest part about that wasn't the fact that we could possibly get on camera. Mm -hmm. Because a member of my team is a regular on camera when they play Star City events. Sure. And my opponent, the team we played against... We're also regulars. And I want to stress the plural of every one of those All words of on camera. Them, right. So my fear wasn't being on camera. I was playing Legacy against Noah Walker <laughs> on Grixis Delver. And while not fully powered, <coughs> I was on burn. Because I understood nice. the deck very well in the in the lands Grixis meta that right. we had. So my fear was just getting absolutely demolished on camera and not being able to do anything about it. And if, frankly, if you're going to get demolished by somebody on camera, though, Noah Walker is a good choice. Oh, absolutely. It was a fun match, a great human being, great to talk with in and outside of the match. Um, and one of the things I had hoped for, actually, by being on camera was to listen to the playback of oh, yes. where I made my mistakes. But instead, I got to talk to Noah yeah. and Dylan Donegan. Oh, that's good value. Yes. Those are both great people. Absolutely. I've, I've driven Noah to my fair share of PTQs yes. back in the day. And it, the, he was out in the Amherst area when I was. Yes. I'm, no, I want to say a local Massachusetts player, but Noah traveled everywhere. Yeah. Noah was, Noah's all over the place. Yeah. Looks like we have a, a new match coming up here on camera. We have Dan Zielinski versus Sam. We're going to have the battle between these two color creature based decks. First off, Infect for Dan, and then Sam's white black. Uh, Death and Taxes, Dead Guy Ale style deck. Sam has actually titled their deck Forty Shades of Forty Shades of Bones. <laughs> so 
while the players are resolving mulligans, we'll just flash this up quickly. I love this. This is this. Sam's list. This is basically what we expected. This is Dead Guy Ale. This is uh, a deck that's looking to control the board a little bit and work the hand and eventually put you in a squeeze by playing fair and balanced magic. Yeah, fair, fair and balanced cards like uh, Liliana of the Veil and Court of Ambition. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm glad we found room in the main deck for Tiny Bones here as yes. well as these powerful Planeswalkers. That, that makes me quite happy. Also, Paladin Class, a real standout in this list. I was pulling cards when somebody mentioned that and I had to have that card explained to me. <laughs> Paladin class? Yeah, that's a sweet one. So Isochron Scepter, we saw that card drafted next to Disenchanted. I was very curious what was going to go on in Sam's uh, Sam's games, and I'm still curious to know what Sam is going to tuck under that Isochron Scepter. Well, so, I was I was quite pleased to see that she did draft that Orm's Champ um, with her 46th pick, and I believe that's going to be her ideal card to place under uh, under that scepter most of the time. However, there are other instances in her deck that she can drop under there if she so chooses. Yes. Dan, meanwhile, playing some really sweet ones. In particular, Test of Talents is a pretty entertaining card. I think the players are, they are determining right now. So let's cut back over to Dan's list while we're looking at this. This is, this is the list that we weren't sure what was going to happen because we started out with white and then we cut and we discussed, well, maybe Teferi Time Raveler actually works out well in the infect list because you put your opponent at sorcery speed, which yes. works out well for you at the end of the day. But, but it, that's in the sideboard. But it looks like, yeah, Dan went went full blue-green and managed to draft enough playables that he could shave his way all the way down to 13 lands alongside Chrome Mox and Mana Crypt. So a very impressive recovery, sort of, yes. as Dan decided to pivot out of that Bant Control shell. Yes. When I, when I was talking about this... Uh, to other people in the room, it was explained to me that Dan pivots very well. He does, he Dan, does. Dan understands uh, this format and understands their plan yep. and is able to make a change to something else that works when necessary. Indeed. And as you look at this format and think about entering it, I think that is a skill that you want to learn and pick up is don't stay blinded on what you're doing and have multiple lists coming in that all function off of some part of your card pool in case you get cut off. Yes, absolutely agreed. And this is an exciting start here for both players. Dan with the turn one Mana Crypt into Icker Claw Mirror, but Sam following things up on her own turn two with Stoneforge Mystic going and grabbing that Cauldra Complete uh, and presenting a pretty serious yes. threat to Dan's attack with my creature. Game so play. when we had Sam's list up, I didn't see any other equipment aside from... Uh, skull clamp and reviewing i still do not see any other equipment besides well yes call draw complete and skull clamp right yes so i don't believe there we, is anything else yeah because we we talked we talked about i'm assuming everybody in chat was here from the uh, beginning yes, and yes, they yes. saw call draw complete and as <laughs> we had hoped we would see more of an equipment package coming from sam but we do not yeah jason I want, and i were talking about sort of fire and ice i think you're also on a similar yes. uh, feeling a similar way i I think as Jason and I were talking about it, I said if I was Sam, I would have slammed the Demir Sword in this mm. draft. But we don't have the Demir Sword or the Gruul Sword. Those are the last two swords that we are missing. They are still out of here. Sam, or Dan rolling for that Mana Crypt, taking three down to 16. And that does actually matter in this matchup. Uh, nobody drafted Lion Sash. We printed it out. We were ready for Lion Sash. Nobody drafted yes. Lion Sash. No Lion Sash for Sam. I suspect she would have liked to have that here. Yeah. Uh, looks like some heaters in Dan's hand. Flusterstorm to go with that. Uh, Vines of Vastwood. A lot of a lot of solid protection here. A couple other mm -hmm. blue cards. Looks like Dan is very prepared. Uh, scale, scale up there up. as well. Yeah. So this is interesting. Um, not just game game state, but we have a monocrypt on board. And usually, tails never fails. But we're rolling here. We're rolling odds and evens. Yes. And uh, Dan Dan took damage on an even roll. So uh, so like many magic players, yeah. he is odd for life. I assume. <laughs> That's the way to be. Absolutely. Unless your name is Steven, I suppose then you can justify even. I mean, but Steven. even then. Scale up on the Iker Claw. I'm so going to go ahead and get big. So we're looking at a 5-5 five five now? I believe this is a 6-4 Iker Claw Mirror. If I remember scale up correctly, I believe it's going to go ahead and turn that into a 6-4 base power and toughness. I thought 6-4. Okay. I thought it was 4-4. Four four. Okay. But no, that is Might of Old Croza. That adds plus four, plus four. Yep. So I have my pump spells. So yeah, Dan, Dan here up. lacking the third green to kick Vines of Vastwood and finish the job, but yes. still doing quite a bit of infect damage to Sam here. Now this is going to be interesting because Sam is going to be able to untap with that Stoneforge Mystic and drop Caldera Complete, which I believe has first strike and when this creature deals damage to another creature, you exile that creature. Caldera Complete has a lot of words on it and those are some of them. Yes. <laughs> this, this, so... 
I, I, I play my own little brew in modern. I, I basically play Bant Snow Control. It's nice. a, I, it's uh, Ice Fang Coddle, Snapcaster, Mage, Spell Queller, Stone, Stoneforge Mystic. So my equipment package is very tight on Caldera Complete, Batter mm-hmm. Skull, and Sophie. Sort of Fire and Ice. Yeah. And I have come to determine that Caldera Complete is actually not the equipment you want to get num- uh, the, as the first piece of equipment most of the times. Modern is so fast, I still find myself getting Batter Skull. Yes. But there are times when you're fa- when you're playing against a linear deck like Infect, where actually all the words on Caldera Complete are the ones you want. Yep. They're the important words. Now, this is interesting. Sam has chosen to attack with Caldera Complete here. No fear. She says, I am not afraid of your Aircraft Claw, my friend. Or ghosts. <laughs> does, does Sam have swords to plow shares? Sam does have I'm, swords why to am I looking plow at? shares. I want to say, yes, there is. There it is in the mana value one, one slot, swords to, to plow shares. Now, we have an interesting dance to do because I believe the pump spell Dan... Oh, no, Dan, Dan just picked up a berserk. That doesn't quite do it. But no. the pump spell Dan had in his hand, I thought, was vines of Vasper, and that leads to a little bit of an interesting dance with swords to plow shares, right? Yes. Because if he doesn't... If he blinks first... Which he did. Which he did. No. And if she has swords. So this is either game over or we continue. It appears that she doesn't. Nope. All right. Trying to bluff her way to victory. And it turns mm-hmm. out that didn't quite work. Dan's going to take this away. Is there a, there's no pump spell that Infect plays. Uh, this is in general, not just Dan's deck. Sure. That makes your creature indestructible, correct? Um, no, the closest we get is blo- the Hexproof off Blossoming Defense, which uh, Dan has chosen not to main deck. Yeah, here. or Apostle's Blessing way back in the day, which just gave them protection. Yes. Okay. Yeah, the, uh, Dan Dan did not draft the uh, Tamiyo Safekeeping here. Okay. Um, which Jason and I were talking about. Mm-hmm. So he's he's chosen not to take that path and, and, or go, and go for indestructible things yes. here. So as the players are sideboarding, we can bring up our deck list and take a look. So we're going to look at Dan's list first. And the sideboard contains a number of cards that we just can't play. Yeah. So they are right out. And I just <laughs> don't know what I would be looking I would... I would think about Spell spell Snare. Spell Snare seems very good, especially since Dan will be on the draw here. Yep. Uh, I think uh, Necropede is an additional Infector, but the the trigger is not something I'm interested in right now against Sam's deck. I don't think she has enough uh, one toughness creatures that that's terribly relevant. There's tiny bones and not a ton else. No. Frantic Search is just uh, draw. Same thing with Consider. I don't think... We're looking for that, but I do think Blossoming of Defense is probably the other card I'm bringing in. That's very likely to come in. I think we're less less in need of something like Test of Talents, perhaps, here. Yeah. Sorceress Sight. Okay. I had no idea what this card was. Yeah, that is that is Peak 2, the sequel to Peak. Got it. The, peak, the peak will, if yeah. you will. Oh, that's good. That oh, is very good. We found yeah. it. Yeah, it is sorcery speed, though, yes. being a portal card. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so there's not much else that really plays in this match. You could think about U- Uro if you wanted to play a longer game, and you are putting a number of spells in your graveyard, but Uro and Become Immense fight one another, and in an Infect deck where you want to be done with this quickly, I don't think Uro is where we want to be. Yeah, Uro, Uro does not seem like the card that Dan is looking for here. I think I think we pretty much nailed it right off the bat. Spell Snare Blossoming Defense going to come in. Okay, let's take a look at Sam quickly before we cut back over and hope the players are still sideboarding. Contamination, not the one. Okay, I thought it was the the Force of Will equivalent for Black, which would be very good here. Uh, Ophiomancer. Oh, Rankle. Rankle is interesting. Zealous Persecution is an interesting card yes. here. A lot of one toughness creatures for Dan. Vindicate. Thalia Guardian of Thraben. Actually, I think all these cards are very good for Sam. Yeah, there's quite a few cards in in this uh, in this sideboard that that are very strong. I th- I, th- I think Rankle is actually. Stronger than I might think because of that last option. Each player sacrifices a creature. Yes. In fact, it's a critical mass built around one creature. And aside from Inkmoth Nexus, I really don't expect to see Dan with more than one creature on the board. So I feel cool. similar about Ophiomancer here as a sideboard option. To bring in to help bl- both block by offering the snake each turn and then offering the snake a sacrifice to Rankle? Exactly. Okay. Exactly. I think it's it, it plays double duty there. Um, and it's 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 just something that you can use to gum up the ground. Yes. And if you can play something like that early, it's going to be a lot harder for Dan to push through. Yep. He's going to have to play card. He's going to have to prioritize cards to get trample. And you can use instant speed removal to yep. punish him. Now, I would think that Vindicate would be too slow, but without any other way to interact with lands, I think Vindicate becomes a top priority for me because that's the only way I can effectively kill an Ink Moth next. It's quite hard 
to kill Ink Moth Nexus, you you ha end up having to use something like Swords to Plowshares on it. That's not ideal. I suppose you could disenchant Ink that's Moth what Nexus, I was thinking. right? Is it an artifact? I, I think believe that's the it question. turns into an artifact creature. Yes, it does. Yes, I keep it's mute of all that doesn't. Right. That's the one. I keep forgetting. Like, of all the colorless lands that turn into creatures, it is mute of all that is not an right. artifact. <laughs> because I'm used to factory. Yes, yes, of course. But at least the factory workers have morale. Right. Whereas Mutavault doesn't. Mutavault, Mutavault does not. Mutavault, Mutavault is non-union. Poor it, Mutavault. It needs no beatings. <laughs> morale is already improved. Maybe that means Mutavault is the one that's union. Oh, maybe. <laughs> Plus two is very... Very good. We're not looking at Soren, are we? I think I think uh, I think Mark may have been talking about blossoming defense. Yes. Oh yes. Obviously, yeah. The pump on that is is extremely yeah, good. That's quite helpful. Yeah. Versus uh, to me, a safekeeping which offers no pump, just hexproof and indestructible, and gain two life. Yeah, which becomes a redundancy piece and not a for a protective redundancy piece and not a combo kill. Kind yeah. of like Apostle's Blessing. It is just a redundancy protection piece that ends up costing you colorless because it costs a colorless and Phyrexian white. Right. Dan's going to go ahead and uh, go once upon a time, go find this forest, mm -hmm. fix things up. Very, very powerful card, once upon a time. Always yes. happy to see that in uh, in VRD. Sam playing the swamp on her first turn. It looks like we've got another Mana Crypt opening from Dan, potentially, but he's going to choose not to play that That's when he doesn't elf. need to. Very disciplined play here, just drops the Glister Elf and passes. So, going back to Sam's draft and talking about Stoneforge Mystic, nobody drafted GTA. No GTA. And GTA eats this deck alive. GTA would have been so good in this right. matchup. So I don't know. I it That's a turn two. Yep. We're gonna we've got all of our mana, we got a pearl, we've got a planes. Let's see what uh what Sam can play here to further her cause. I think anything, but the question is, is it worthwhile as opposed to holding up disenchant and or swords to plowshares? But you could still play Stoneforge. And keep up. Forge, keep up. You could play. There's a tiny bones in hand that you could just play as a blocker, and it looks like that's we what we're going to get. All right. So I want to bring up all oh, the yeah. text on tiny bones. Oh no, shade to Sam. Absolutely not. Only saying that it would have been good in this matchup. Very impressed. As as I said to Sam outside, I was very impressed with her draft. We've got a tiny bones. We've got a skull clamp. Mm -hmm. All right. So we're in business here. Yeah, Sam's only done a couple of drafts and and has been playing Matt for someone who can play VRD at this level, yes. has not been playing Magic for terribly yeah. long. And Dead Guy L isn't necessarily a deck that wants to play an equipment package. So that right. was less a, a question about Sam's prowess during the draft and yeah. more about we have the hindsight of being able to see what Dan did at the end of a draft. Yes. <laughs> and ask just kind of posing questions. The omniscient right? power of the commentary exactly. booth. We know all, we see all, and we think we're better than everyone else. <laughs> and it turns out we're not, or we'd be out there winning the tournament. You think we'd be more <laughs> humble as judges. <laughs> not to say that judges aren't great magic players, but on the hierarchy of things, judges are not the best magic players. No, yes, traditionally, tradi on, on average, yes. and there are, there are of course outliers, but but because we judge more, we play less. That's exactly. just how it goes. And, and John hits the nail on the head. There's a lot yeah. of action at the end of the draft. And Sam did make a lot of impactful choices at the end of the draft. Very much so. Glistener Elf coming in with Rancor and Groundswell. That's going to be seven oh. poison right off the bat. Very precarious position for Sam here. She's going to need to dig up something to ideally deal with uh, the Glistener Elf. But if not, deal with Rancor if she can. So that... That absent. unexpectedly absent. That is what is in Sam's hand. That's a very good option here. That's something that uh, that could put put the Glistener Elf just just back in the library and uh, and slow things down. A yes, bit. I like that very much. My ability to spell all of those words is at a low point, so I was just hoping to copy and paste because I saw it. There it is, right under tiny bones. There it is an incident. Card. Okay, I thought it was a sorcery. Yeah, no, very very cool card coming out of one of the commander sets at one at one point. Mm -hmm. Just uh, just adding a little bit of an extra dimension to things. Sam says, go. "I'd like to put." Uh, all right. Well, there's a little confusion here. Dan trying to figure out exactly what's happening. Okay, yes, uh, there is there is an absence here. Yes, I think it's just exactly where the card went from. Yes, absence. right beneath the top zero cards of Dan's library. Yes, in fact. <laughs> A little bit confusing, but long story short, to the top it goes. Yes. Tiny Bones gets Hi Ian getting some value. Sam slows Dan down a little bit here. Dan draws that glistener. Yeah, you never would have guessed. 
What a surprise. Mana Crypt coming down. Waterlog Grove takes a life from Dan. And two more mana brings us Blightsteel Ooh. Agent floating a colorless. And we're going to get a, a Glistener Elf. Two creatures on the battlefield. And that, that, Blightste- that Blighted Agent blighted is going agent, to be yeah. a little bit difficult for Sam to block. Unblock. Wait, because it says so, right? Yeah. Can't block it. You can't just can't. Yeah. It doesn't have unblockable. You just cannot block it. You cannot it. block it. It cannot be blocked. <laughs> Not allowed. Well. This is the scary part. When Infect starts diversifying its threats, and it oh, doesn't yeah. have to rely on vines of Vastwood. Yes, and we know that there's that Rancor in the hand, right? Or, yes, that can be. That, that came right back, went to the graveyard, came right home. Or is it Might of Old Croza that is better at sorcery speed? Uh it's Might of Old Croza. Okay. Yes. Yeah. We already saw Groundswell. Groundswell already happened, but mm-hmm. we could we could very well see um, a pump spell here. But we know that we have the Rancor. Yes. So we have a blocker, which will in theory, block the Rancor creature because that is the obvious target to block. Yes, well, if the Rancor creature is Glistener Elf, great. If the Rancor creature is Blight- Blighted Agent, which I suspect it will be. It, yeah, that is an oh no. But we, as the ca- as uh, casters, do have the benefit of knowing that there is, I believe, a Disenchant in Sam's hand. Ah, uh, yes, she does have the Disenchant. And she's got that, that Mox uh, Pearl over there with the... Oh, interesting. Uh, interesting. This is, this is the, the diversification. Yeah, so Dan going to go ahead and say, I'm going to put Trample on the thing you can block. And that means I may have a pump spell in hand. Mm-hmm. So now we get to see what's going to happen. Mutagenic growth, okay. Mutagenic growth on the Blighted Agent, not taking any risks here. No. Now, so, this, so this kills. Sam needs a piece of instant speed. Removal does not have one, unfortunately. Yeah. Dan going to take this one down 2-0 with the familiar Infect deck. Yeah. Other creatures play Blight and Agent kills. Yeah. For those people that have ever listened to Man of War. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. <laughs> All right. Well, we've had two fantastic feature matches so far. Let's take a look, quick look at the bracket uh, at the standings. See where- All right, so as we are changing hosts here and waiting for our next round, hopefully we'll be able to talk with Sam a little bit about their draft. Oh, okay. We have a... Oh, all right. We have Dan and Swifty coming up for a future match, so we'll be getting our other caster in here shortly. We'll go down to the gameplay area. So we have Dan again on the Infect list and Swifty on the Alluren Birthing Pod combo deck. So this is going to be, be pretty interesting because Infect can finish out the game rather quickly. And it's not this And with enough acceleration, Swifty can keep up. But there does present the opportunity where Swifty just gets blown out based on the speed with which Infect can play their own game. Yeah. Uh, Dan, quickly wrap that one up. I'm actually excited to see this matchup here. Uh, so we have Aluren combo mm-hmm. with Malira in the main. Notable, Mr. Hagen, you are correct. Yes. Uh, which had it two of the three games, I believe, in round one. Mm-hmm. Uh, and especially, you know, knowing that Dan is on Infect and has minor removal, like if any, I think he may just aggressively mull for it here, right? So if we look at Dan's deck, and we can bring this up while the players are shuffling... 
we don't really see a lot of removal in the main. No. There's this... Spell Pierce doesn't get it. Fluster Storm doesn't get it. Nope. Uh, Pact of Negation and then lose is an option. That is an option, I yeah. guess if you're going to lose to the card one way or the other, that's a way to do it. We have yeah. uh, miscalculation to do that. But other than that, in game one, we do not really have a lot going on in ways to interact with Malira once it's on board. Uh, did we see there's bounce the, spell? There's no bounce spell. There's no bounce spell. Oh, you spell. can Oko it. Oh, yeah, yeah. You can, so you can Oko it, which we do have Oko in the main. Yes. Uh, worth, worth noting, which, again, relevant... Nobody picked a pivoting needle effect. So Oko is really good here if you can time it appropriately. Yes, it is. And there's the turn one glistener. We have an ignoble, a few fetch lands. Let's take a blind moment. Okay. They are taking care of that. Yep. I wanted to go take a look to see if up names have been updated, and they have. All right, so we have ignoble pass off of no land. Not, not yet. Yeah, not, not yet. We'll see what we get. Yes, I. We didn't catch a mulligan, but one, Breathe two, three, four, five, six cards in hand at least are supposed to. Be. So we might have actually, seeing as we, we are heads yeah. up. Yeah. We do know what our opponents are playing. We yeah. might have attempted to mulligan for a hand that we knew exactly could operate quickly. Okay, so there is the ground swell and the invigorate. So that's the win. This is a getcha. Yeah. So does Swifty stop shuffling? To interact or continue shuffling for game two? Oh, no, we're on nine because you didn't pump turn one. Oh. Yeah. So we, we have one more turn and... Three. Oh, yeah, four, eight, nine. Yeah, that's yeah, right. Yeah. We, didn't, we needed a five. We didn't. Yeah. We don't have a hierarch in this build. Yep. We are playing against all the hierarchs yes, on Swifty's side. Yes, all of the hierarchs are over there. And so we have misstep in his hand. I didn't see if he had a pierce or fluster storm. Hi-ya. There's a fibble thip. Uh, fibble thip is going to block the all heck out of this ballista. Yep. yep. Fibble Let's tip, see. In, my, in my experience, exists in two places. Your library, your graveyard. Yeah. Those, those are the only two spots, actually. Some, some creatures are just meant to be speed bumps. Yeah. And that is Fibble Thip. Uh, Wirewood Herald is another one. Yeah. That's another great speed sure. bump. Veteran Explorer. Veteran Explorer is a great speed bump. Yeah. Let's see. Mog Fanatic, when damage used the stack. RIP. Yes. There is Fibble. I do not... God. Yeah. Out of all the magic cards I could ever want to learn to spell, this is not one of them. Yeah. So for those who are curious about Fibble Thip... So when, when Phil Bethup enters the battlefield, draw a card. If it entered from your library or was cast from your library, draw two cards instead. So when you pod into Fibblethip, you're actually going to draw two cards, which yep. is really good for you. It's a great value. It card. is, yeah. You know, it is of cards that can cycle mm -hmm. effectively. It yeah. is probably one of the best. I would think it is the best out of Elvish Visionary and uh, the Pup from yeah. Kamigawa and Dynasty yeah. because it's blue, thus it pitches to force. Yes. And cards that generally pitch to force tend to be best. better. Yeah, yeah, are the best of the options. The the pup from Neon Kamaga uh, from Kamigawa Indian Dynasty is interesting because it is an enchantment on yep. top of just being a creature, yeah. which can play into a lot of different themes for drafts. So maybe that's a little bit better than Fibble Thip. Ethereal Thet. armor. Yeah, uh, it, it sees playing Pauper Bogles and Modern Bogles now because the deck doesn't draw a lot of cards. So yeah, it works out. Oh, we have land mox. We are good to go on uh, Pod land? or Alluring right now. Yeah. with the fourth land drop. That's true. Pitch to Force of Vigor. All right, so we have three mana here. Cycle Cy Triumph. Cycle Triumph. So we're digging, I guess. Mm -hmm. There's a Bobbert. That is. So yeah, we're just we're just throwing out roadblocks at this point to try to be able to block the infect creatures. Yeah, we um, we feel fine throwing away Fibblethip now because Bob is our yeah. our engine. Hopefully. Hopefully, yeah. And the interesting thing here is, you know, the both of these decks have a lot of inevitability right now because if. At nine poison, if there's... Okay, oh. Living Wish. Now, this is interesting, so we need to take a look at Dan's sideboard here. Or sorry, Swifties. Swifty's sideboard. So... Strix, Oof, Spinner, Endurance, Gloom Shrieker, Parasitic Strix, Rexage, Questing Beast, and Veil. Vale. So, there's not... If we could get Baleful Strix and just throw up a Death Touch blocker. Yeah, that's true. We uh, could do that, yeah. Yeah. I think that is... Uh, one of the better options, and just hope our opponent does not have um, Gem Razor because Gem Razor just mercs yep. Baleful Strix because it's yep. an artifact, or Rancor because that's the only option that gives trample on this list. Yeah. Right? Scallop does not give trample? No. Okay, so we are kind of protected in that regard. Yep. Otherwise, collect uh, a lot of this is uh, kind of 
Just a bunch of duds. Yeah, so we have in Dan's hand, we can see a Chrome Mox, a Mental Misstep, a Might of Old Crosa. And I can't see the fourth card, but none of those really help us. Yep. But So we've done exactly what we need to do, which is buy time. Yeah, exactly. And, and we are happy to be in this position. Yeah. Because we really are just a pot away, basically, from getting there. We have our one drop yes. to get our untapper. We have yes. our two drops to get our three. Yes. Uh, which can get back the two drop off Renegade Rallier. Yes. With Revolt and then just go from there. Yes. And then without Malira on board, we're not going infinite. Ooh, Coco. Coco. That's... Name phase Coco. Oh. There's a Lauren. Oh, oh that feels bad. Noble Hierarch and an Eternal E-Wit. Witness. Yeah. Which are the two we end up getting, which are not great options. Especially when Aloran goes to the bottom. Yes. And I think we just have two lands in Graveyard. But to... Yes, we do. Although so, one of them is a fetch land, so we can shuffle that Aloran back in and... Oh, we go for the Cycler. Okay. So the the reason we might not okay. need to do that is because of exactly what you were talking about. We can pod chain our way to Rector. Yeah, And then true. Rector away. Yeah. So we're always kind of... There. You're there, yeah. We're, so there's we're a nice thing. If, I think Dan is just playing this waiting game of, can I... When do I draw a Blighted Agent? Yeah, yeah. When do I get blighted ink moth or when am I able to mutate because every single toughness that Swifty puts on the board means Rancor needs yep. more food essentially yep. you're getting plus two plus zero which is great but that takes care of uh, e-witness and noble hierarchy then you have one toughness in dark confidence so that's your entire board Rancor and glistener elf yeah now if you add a blighted agent well beyond that we know he has uh, what was the pump spell uh, Might of Old Crosa Might of Old. is in okay. his hand. Yeah. So we have we we have additional, we have a way to get around there, but we still need yeah. Rancor, right? Yeah. So the longer it takes, now we we still have to subtract one because of Philboth if we didn't get there yet. Yeah. And that means we're getting over for two now, which is still lethal. Yeah. We're peeking at the hand. Asterix, Renegade Rallier, Living Wish, Triumph, Triumph and, and Ice Fang. So Snake. stuff we knew about more or less, and then Rallier yeah. and and Swifty did not draft a Snowland. He did not. Okay. Yeah. Uh, interestingly, I think Rallier is actually not great here because he does have the pod. You really want that to hit off the pod itself to be able to chain it up rather than... Yes. Yeah. Uh, Which we also don't have white to cast it. Yes, because... Although Fibble he does have the trial. Yes. Fibble that only triggers off of the uh, cast. It doesn't yeah. trigger off ETB. Yeah. Which makes it a little more interesting. And I think the Triome in the list is actually the Sultai Triome. It is the Sultai Triome. It is the Sultai Triome. So the okay, only so way... Rallier is... Rallier is cast off of Scrubland and Savannah. And Noble, which we do have in play, yes. actually. Okay. So we it's can the top, go yes. there. Um, but after casting Pot, I think we may have to wait a turn here before we're able to actually get it going. All right, so... With Rallier in hand... We can pot away. No, we pot away. We pot away witness. Exactly. Yep. We get Rector. Yeah. I think. We don't have another untapper at four, right? No. Uh, no bell ringer here. Okay. So, oh, we could get red cap and he just got red cap to kill uh, okay, the elf. Yep. 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 Pop. And we're going to might have old cross it. Which now removes additional pump, right? So now you're yeah. just straining your opponent's resources. Yeah. Red cap is on board. So we could actually pot away one of our one drops to get Malira yep. at this point, right? And now that puts Dan in a very interesting position if enough pump is not drawn on that turn. Yeah, I, we can even hard cast Rallier here to get... Yes. Yeah, yeah. If, if we sack a one drop to the untapper, we can hard cast Rallier after that to get Rector or whatever else mm -hmm. afterwards and be able to go from there. I think we've we've... We're going to cross a Zenith rather quickly if we haven't yeah. already, where the game just becomes Swifties based on board presence exactly, and yeah. the threat of what's to come. Yeah. Did the casters just call? Uh, I think the overlay is f Yes. Yes. So correct on both accounts. Yes. Uh, so we now, well, we untapped after tapping. Yeah, we played the Triumph. Yeah. And, and then, I, I don't... I think Swifty may just have this. That's what I'm saying. It's like, I think this is the, the turn. This okay, is, there we go. Plague Mirror is not great. 
No, I, I think this is yeah. this is the apex, right? Yep. This is we're cresting to the apex, and after this, it's all the flash ice thing. Get the draw. Now it's we have the extra three drop. Yeah, yeah. I, I think we just have it at this point. We're yeah, we're in the show me phase. Yeah, right. Garbage time. Was that the core monitor that we just saw go by? I couldn't. It it honestly looked like I thought Veteran Explorer, but I don't think he drafted. Oh, he did draft Veteran he did. Explorer. Okay. Veteran Explorer. So is that was almost, Veteran Explorer. Okay, yeah, yeah, it's an art I'm unfamiliar with. Yeah. Yeah. But we pay two. Oh, we just oh, have there's the Malia. Okay, cool. See you later. That's GG's. We can't get, yeah, we can't get Viscera Seer, right? But now we can't be infected. So, yeah, this is one of the ways we could, cre we could crest the Zenith. And the game is ours. Yeah. The Dan does not have interaction in the main, as far as we could tell. Except Oko. Except Oko, yes. So we are slightly live to that. We pot away. Red cap. Get your elf. The three. What do we get here at four? So this is kind of the question that I had, which is our four drops really are just Academy Rector. Yep. And red cap, which we already have. Which we already have, exactly. So we're going, we're going to get Rector, I assume. Did we not? We failed to find. Oh, so Rector's in hand. Okay. Yep. Get you with the Coddle. Because Pod is one plus or less, or is it only one plus? Uh, it is only plus one. Oh, so yeah, we just failed to find. Because Red Cap and Rector are both four. Yes. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it, it was that was basically deliberately, I'm going to shuffle to get my Aluren back. And yeah, there, Dan skips him up. As well as Mercury. Yeah. Your infector just to prove a point that this game was mine on my untapped stuff. Yeah. Okay, so if we take a look at Swifty's list, we take a look at the sideboard. I don't think you want parasitic tricks because you want to be able to wish for the combo. The, I well, beyond that, Dan is not pressuring the life total because there's no high arc in the deck. Yeah. So you don't need to worry about the life gain. True. And Rex Sage is good off Collected Company. Yeah. But not as a sorcery speed answer. Yeah. Because you can't get in. You can't get. Um, yeah. Ink Moth Nexus. So it might be oh, your thoughts. Uh, you yeah. Think? So I I think the only thing I would maybe bring in Gloom Shrieker gives you a little bit of redundancy. Mm -hmm. uh, which again, having the wish package makes a lot of this kind of obsolete. Honestly. So like, am I bringing an IOK or Veil here? I don't really see a reason to. I, you, you know Dan, like, yeah, he has the pump, so IOK is only good turns one through three when he can just kill you. Yes. And if it's not turns one through three where he can just get you, IOK is dead. I agree with that. I'm, my question is, is there anything that I can sideboard in that is just better than what I already have? And looking at this list, I think Sylvan Library might be too slow. That's fair. Yeah, so, so that, the library might be. So, so that, that is my be, mindset is, yeah. do I have cards in my sideboard that are just better if I draw them early? Yeah. And yes, Sylvan Library is great because we talked about Dan not pressuring the life total, but it costs two when you have much more important cards that you could be casting onto. Yeah. Like Veil is really good. Malira is really good. Like there yeah. are just better options. So that delays the play of Sylvan Library. Yeah. Okay, so is it as good on three or four or five? And I, I don't think it is. So yes, I would look at... I look at Gloom Rider, I look at IOK, I look at Val Summer, and probably Baleful Strix. And at that point in time, I think I'm cutting Living Wish. Yeah. Yeah, and, and that's... I mean, that's... Because you're... Okay, if I'm going for the Aluren combo, Strix is nice to have, obviously. Uh, because it does give you the two-loop uh, Parasitic. Oh, Parasitic. I, I'm not even yeah. thinking... I don't even think I'm going to do that. I think yeah. I'm just going to play it... I want to say play it slow. And by that, I mean I'm not going to aggressively pod into the Alluren combo. Yeah. I like, I'm like. i going to bring in Baleful Strix yeah. because it's yeah. a Death Touch blocker. Yeah. And That's what I want to do. Trips. Yeah. Exactly. If I, I'm I'm hoping that the players have looked at each other's list and you see in Swifty's list there aren't that many ways to yeah. really give your creatures trample. So a 1-1 one, one Death Toucher holds the board really well, yeah. right? So that's where I'm thinking. Plus yeah. you pod into a 3. Yeah, exactly. Which is pretty good, right? So that's where I'm looking. And it gives, it kind of overloads Gem Razor. Yeah. Because that's Pod, that's Aluren, that's Baleful Strix, that's, uh, there's something else in there, I can't just remember off the top of my head, like the Moxin that mm -hmm. are in there, right? It just overloads the, the removal that Dan might have. And now looking at, at Dan's list, you know, you have uh, Blossom Defense for extra pump and the Hexproof, you have Spell Snare, and this is kind of the danger of what happened to Dan, which is Dan had a pivot, so there are a bunch of dead cards in the yeah. sideboard that I don't think are great. 
Teferi Time Raveler could make an appearance, but Swifty's not doing much on Dan's turn. Yeah. Uro, I think, is really good, too, here. Uh, and Dan, Dan mentioned he may actually just go the Persistent Petitioner's Transformative Sideboard route. Okay. Oh, there's 15 of them. Yeah. Yeah, because when you draft one, you get 15. 15 of them. Yeah. I didn't think about that. Yeah, that is actually a really that's a really good look. And so that actually allows you to flex into some of those other spots. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so let's cut over and see if the players are shuffling up yet. We can continue to talk about this. Yeah. I think if Dan wants to transform, that's, that might actually be... I, I don't know if that's better. It's very difficult for me to say. <laughs> of... Of course he put everything as foils, absolutely. That is that is Jeff's Jeff's MO. He has always been known for foils. I mean you might as well. Right? Yeah. Yeah. I don't have to pay anything extra for it. I just get it. Exactly. So why not just highlight it? Ah, okay, okay. So we don't have this list open yet. So we haven't had Jeff on camera. We should fix that. Yes. So while the players he are shuffling. Swiftly beat Mason in two oh, games. Geez. Yeah. It is just a Generic foil overlay for everything. Yep, yep. <laughs> it's not great. everything. Yeah, Impulse gets the uh, sweet promo. Yeah. Okay, so let's get... Uh, while players are shuffling, I can assume the first couple turns are going to be pretty quick. Let's go back to, to Dan's list and just yeah. look at this. So let's pretend we're going to move into the Persistent Petitioners plan. Yeah. So that basically means we're cutting out the infect, the infect package, which is almost all of our one mana value spells, right? Aside yeah. from the interaction. So yeah. that's a good chunk of them. That's pretty easy. And then we take out some of the creatures that are infected, right? So that gives us some other room, some more room. And now we can actually think about bringing in our Uro and our Teferi. Yep. And Mind Sculptor, since you've got that yes. glut of ground blockers. Mm -hmm. And looking at Swifty's list, you know, it's basically the Strix. Mm -hmm. That's his flyer. You know, there's, there's not a whole lot left. Yep. Um, Socialist clam dad, yep. clam dad. Yep. With the uh, the reset. Appreciate you. Hey, you missed a, an action packed draft, but we are only in round one and a half or something like yep. that. We have a Dan. I this is Dan's uh, second round on camera. So. Yep. Uh, oh, this is Dan's third round. Yes. Ooh, damn. Yep. Uh, the infect deck moves quickly. Imagine yeah. that, right? Yeah. yeah, it does. It turns out. So I saw a trop and a handful of blue cards, but I don't think they were petitioners in Dan's no. hand. So I, and I think Swifty might be doing what we talked about in game one, which is attempting to find a functional hand that act, that has quick action. Yeah. Because I think that is still it, our it best It really option. is a race. It, it is. In fact, it's a combo deck. Yep. It, it just is. Similar to Dredge, Dredge is a combo deck. Hammer Time is a combo deck yes. in modern. Uh, you may be turning dudes sideways, but it is effectively... You know, see you, Mr. Hagen. Combo deck. Thanks for popping in. Yep, appreciate your friend. Exactly, and even though you might have shaved on cards that were slow or dead in the matchup, slow because they take time to set up. You're not sideboarding in a lot of zeros and ones. No. You're sideboarding in things that range between one and three. So you're yep. still pretty slow. Yeah. To really get a footing, so you need to slow your infect opponent down, and hopefully he's still on, on infect and not persistent partitioners. Yeah. So if we look, if we consider persistent partitioners as a sideboard option to side into mill, how many mill decks do we have? Does that make two and a half or three and a half? Two and a half. Okay. Because uh, Brandon opted out of the mill plan and went for channel fatties instead. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. There's an Uro. That card's really good with a Lauren. Yes. On the field. Very yep. good. But uh, it's on the wrong. Oh yeah, but he can't. Uh, Dan cannot loop Uro. Yeah. You will gain. You will get the, the ETB both ETB triggers, yeah. but you will have to uh, react appropriately to both. Yeah. And you can't just interject. Dan is considering his top deck. Captain. So that is a Savannah, a nice beta Savannah, which kind of oh, looks like a beta scrubland. Yep. There's a petitioners in hand. We oh. have two of them in hand. Okay, so we have sideboarded into persistent petitioners. Yeah. That is our that is our game plan. Boom! There we go. Bring it. We're on. All aboard the choo-choo. Okay, so I'm going to bring this card up because I know you can play as many of them as you can stomach. And we can stomach 15 of them. Yeah, that's, that's our limit as St. Lotus. So we will eventually begin milling one card at a time and get up to 12. So we have, we have a couple of turns, maybe. Yeah. Kitchen Finks presents a clock in regards to actual combat. Yep. Being a three-two partition, partitioners, a one-three, and I don't know if, if I'm dead, if I want to sacrifice partitioners in no. front of an exalted kitchen yeah. finks right now. Yeah, limit is twenty-five. We just have fifteen in our board. Okay, 
So yeah. maybe 15 is a limit on Mox Field. That could be, yeah. Which seems kind of weird if you're playing e- a monocolored EDH deck. Yeah. With two sets of planes. Give me them all. I got to cast a yeah. Chroma. <laughs> ah, the rulings. There we go. Yeah, I think the difference is uh, what we're seeing in on Mox Field where it says 15 yeah. versus the St. Lotus rule set. Yeah. Uh, oh, three mana. Oh, That's we are the Euro, like you, like you yep. mentioned. So we're going to gain our three life, we're going to draw a card, and we're going to sacrifice Uro in an order that we choose, despite the fact that they're two different triggers. Yes. Oh, and we're going to get to put an additional land into yep. play, which we opted not to. Oh, I'm going to not have hit one. I'm going to say we opted not to put it. Yeah. Did, this is not a show of strength, my friend. Yeah. This is yeah. This is to send a message. Yes. <laughs> Yes, there might only... Well, that, that's the thing. We were When we were looking at this list, there are only so many cards to cut, right? You can't yeah. cut 25 cards because then you just have, like, Pack and Negation and Persistent Protection. There's right. that deck. I have no problems with that. I mean, no, you're... De- deck is great. Win fast, <laughs> lose fast. I think that's yeah. how Dan wants to run this event. Yeah. As uh, our viewer Stinkfist is known to say, I plan my games around my vices. I play Belcher because either way, I'm done with my round and outside smoking in 15 minutes. Yes, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Dan just needing that second blue source so we can start doubling up quickly here. He's I, I think fallen that, behind. The, the Uro helped. I think there there might be a Jace the Mind Sculptor in Dan's hand, which speaks exactly to what you're saying, which is that second blue source is really going to be our limiting yeah. factor right now. It's kind of interesting. For the amount of times I've cast Ice Fang, Coddle, and really, in modern, maligned the fact that the blue-green Snowland doesn't come into play untapped. Yeah. Yeah, Belcher for bathroom breaks. It, That's another good one. It's still extremely good. Yeah, for like, sure. I'm never unhappy to draw that card, despite yeah. the fact that I might not have perfect mana for it. Mm-hmm. Oh. No no miss land drops over here. No, no. We are all lands all the time. I, I, and I think we're one card a turn, so we might have six in hand. Oh, that's a Bosage. Oh, uh, okay. So if he wants to play it or... Now, we do not need an additional green source, so I think this just signals the fact that we have hit the end of lands in hand. Yeah. And we want to play pod. Interesting that he didn't just pay the Phyrexian, so we are activating right now. So we care about our life total for some reason? Okay, so we get... My assumption is Renegade Rallier here. Yeah. Rallier brings back Coddle, and we just continue our little value train. Toot toot. Yep. So we're fine playing a, a slower game is yeah. really why we're paying the Phyrexian. There's yeah. nothing in hand that we have that can that I guess cares to yeah. interact with Persistent Petitioner, so we're just gonna play it slow. We are still a blue source and two persistent petitioners away from milling the top twelve cards of our library. Yeah. We are going to mill the top card here. I yeah. Gotcha, first of all. It's a swamp. I think we're fine. I think yeah. we're finally seeing that. So if we're Dan and we draw a blue source, where well, do you think? We drew we go? a snapcaster. Which is like a blue source, except it requires blue more mana. Yeah. Once upon, yep. Once upon a blue source. Yeah, once upon a blue source. Uh, have cast that spell myself a few times. Not as good. So the, I cast it. Yes, ter- we got hey, there. We are there. So that's another Persistent Persistioners. All right. I cast that spell when it was legal and modern, and the best deck was Death Shadow. And I'll tell you, I tell you what, it was a great cast. You couldn't actually cast it if you had to pay mana for it. The deck did not play green. Yeah. You were just on four in hopes of having, having it in your, in your opener. opening hand. Yep. And the, I don't even remember how you got rid of the rest of them in your hand. I think you didn't. You just looked at them really sad. Yeah. You're just like forlorn. Because you looking. didn't have force of bigger, so. Exactly. Yep. You just, it was a, a I forlorn I look we're at doing your hand. The thing. Yep. Yeah, it's a sad Charlie Brown song yeah. as you're looking at them in your hand. Da, da, da. All right, we're passing we're, it back. We were debating maybe casting another petitioner, or leaving counter magic. Up. I think we're leaving the counter magic up yeah. in hopes that we can catch something. I I don't like that here because he has you so far ahead on board. You have to start doing something. So you, to me, you would have to cast the petitioners there. Yeah, it, you have the two extra mana for a learn. Yeah. Right. So if you cast the four, you're not going to catch it. You're yeah. never going to catch a creature through a learn with spell pierce because yeah. the card says you can't. Yeah. So it might just be the stone cold bluff, or be. or hoping that Swifty starts potting away some yeah. of his mana creatures. Well, there's the learn. There we go. Incoming. You can't pod. Ah. Uh, yeah. If Swifty 
is sandbagging the land. Yeah. Right? Pay for it. No fluster storm. And there's Asterax. Asterax for the win. Yep. Right? Oh, we can hear the players talking about it right now, about the missed land drop. Yeah. And that how that was game. Yep. So we're gonna we're gonna use Asrak to go through and drain our opponent. Enter a lot of dungeons. We're gonna spend a lot of time there. You say a lot of dungeons. It's a lot of one dungeon. dungeon a lot. Yeah. We're farming. It's basically. a it's that Abe Simpson meme where you yeah. just walk in the door, turn in a circle, walk out the door. Yep. 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 <laughs> just in and out, in and out. Yeah. Okay, so I I'm I'm gonna look up a card because of the last message in chat. This keyboard is killing me, man. Three times in 63 drafts. I uh, That's... Point one. Yeah. <laughs> I don't is, know if that's a respect. Is that our or... lowest, lowest score? You know, if you... I feel like if you just go hard on all the free counter magic and you take, like, all your blasts and stuff like that and then you just don't draft a single... Like, you draft a bunch of the rituals to go around Tinder Wall and stuff, people yeah. might not know that you're going to pull a belcher out of yeah. your butt in the last couple of picks. Yeah, that would be pretty good. Okay, so we had Questing Beast and Veil come in. Okay, Questing Beast is not a card I expected to come in, but I guess if he was predict if if he was predicting the petitioner's trip, yeah, I think it's next level to next smart, level yeah. by absolutely doing that. Yeah, Questing Beast is such an interesting sideboard card to take for this, but I guess as you're reading the draft and you see how when was Questing Beast taken? I feel like it was late. There it is, Questing Beast thirty four thirty fourth. So it was very late in the draft. So yeah. so Swifty had enough time to analyze the draft, see that the majority of the decks that he was going. That they were going to play against involves creatures with very little. Is it? What's the clause on questing beasts? I believe it's CMC. Is it or value? power? I thought it was power. Power, yeah, yeah. power two or less. Yeah. See, which is the vast majority of the creatures that were chosen. Exactly. That is just going to swing right on through in sideboard games. And so it just presents an opportunity to clock somebody. Yeah. You just cast it naturally. You don't need to, you know, pod your way into it. It seems. Yeah. It's it, just a good value creature to have access to. Exactly. And in a matchup like this in the sideboard, you want to bring it in anyway for, for petitioners, and it does offer you the opportunity to sack your rector. I yeah. mean, no, sorry. If you have rector in hand, to sack your three drop and go get something relevant. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Well, what are our value three? I'm going to bring up a Swifty's deck list again to take, because the Allurin deck and the pod deck are basically the same kind of thing. It's basically just a, a toolbox list, right? Yeah. So we... Attempting to memorize everything in this toolbox is a little difficult. So, what do we have any value? Okay, Kitchen Finks is our value three drop. Rallier's not bad either. No, but I'm, I'm talking, so yeah. I'm talking, it's already on board. Oh, yeah, yeah, We're going to yeah. pot it away yeah. because yeah. we have, uh, let's say we have Red Cap and Rector in hand. So, and yeah. we're bringing in uh, Questing Beast, right? Yeah, that gives you the extra four drop that you can actually search for off a of value dude yes. or just if it's what you need at the time. Yes. Because Red Cap is clearly there for removal. Rector is there for protection. Yes. If you want to play a fair game, Questing Beast. Yes. Okay, so our three-drop slot truly is Kitchen Finks for value. That's the only creature that's going mm -hmm. to give us incremental value when we sacrifice it to the Birthing Pod. Yeah. Because everything else just does its thing when it enters the battlefield, which exactly. is perfectly fine. Yeah. That's what you want. The, the, the modern deck only had... Kitchen Finks in three drop slot. I'm I'm tanking real hard on this because they they took my baby away so long ago. Yeah. Uh, I think it was just a four X of Kitchen Finks. I some list did run E Witness, I believe. Yes, that was yeah. yeah. Right. Why wouldn't you just play a single a singleton E Witness somewhere? Yeah. I mean Jund did. What are you gonna get back? A lightning bolt? Cool. Yeah. Lily Val, Lily Val, Lily Val, E Wit, Lily Val. Oh. Yeah. Yep. So for round two, or I guess like one and a half. One and a half ish, yeah. Oh, sorry, so we
take everybody can take a look at the draft, right? So Brandon is on the left and Alec is on the right. So we're looking at the extremes, and I don't see a way. There's no dragon combo. There's no char uh, to effectively tie the game. Each yeah. deck has its own unique win conditions. It's yeah. not. There's no mutually assured destruction in here, right? Yeah. Dovin doesn't do that. Dark Depths, we know what that does. City of Traders. I'm... Uh, I did see Shark Typhoon do a ton of work for okay. Alec in game two. Is that okay? We can. I'll pull up Alex's list because we'll give everybody the opportunity to look at that. We'll be looking at it because I, I was curious. I saw Shark Typhoon and that was one of the the last like eyebrow raising picks that I saw Alec make. So it's it's because it gives him a late game. So what he was able to do, uh, Brandon had depths on I think six counters at this point. Oh, he was just. At, like paying to reduce counters from depths. Yep. Uh, and Alec landed Shark Typhoon, and then the next turn, Mind Springs for three. Gets a 5-5. Five five. Brandon is playing Mind Spring, okay. Uh, Alec is playing oh, Mind Spring. Yeah. Spring. So he has Mind Spring with Shark Typhoon. Yes. And, of course, just gets a 5-5 five five since he Mind Springs for three. Okay, uh, I, okay, I need to see this. Mind Spring is 43... And Brandon takes stroke 44 because there seemed to be this yeah. interesting little like back and forth between the two that's like, I'm going to take one version of the effect. Exactly. I'm going to take the other version of the effect. And yeah. when we were just getting everything set up, we were discussing ex blue X draw spells. We, were, we got blue sun zenith, yeah. instant speed, stroke of genius, and instant speed. We have mind string was the card I couldn't remember, but I, I said yeah. there was like a sorcery speed version of the draw X spell. Yeah. There's brain geyser for that cost triple blue. Yep. So how do you make a reserve card? And also targets. Oh, that's right. Yes, bring guys. You can bring yeah. guys your opponent out. So how do you like pseudo reprint a reserve list? Yeah, and that so that was actually when he'd written down a brain geyser. He was typing out brain geyser on the sheet. Yes. And Blyden goes, wait, there's a misdirection, and Alec crossed it out and put mind spring. Ah, okay. Specifically to avoid the misdirection. Okay. I heard somebody say brain geyser, and it was after a conversation that we yeah. had, but I did not know that's why. And, uh, yeah. and, and yes, Mark, we I definitely agree that Typhoon is good. The reason it was eyebrow raising was because up to that point in time, there was nothing that Alec really drafted that stood out as a card that was going to make a really large shark. Yeah. It just seemed like it might be cycled to make a really large shark. Yeah. No, and, and even, you know, a 5-5, five, five, a 3-3, three, three, a 4-4... Four, four, that was just how he was able to get there, was just being able to value it out. Yeah. Because Brandon's deck has no creatures. Yes. So even a 1-1 one, one at that point is mm. really good. Pretty much like take it home. Yeah. Is there written anywhere on the website how Lotus score is calculated? A couple of friends of mine have a cube called the Pickable Cube, and they're looking for a good card rating metric. So the Lotus score is calculated by the script, basically, that's... It calculates average pick Actually, position, how many on. times it's picked, uh, etc. Mr. Gatorberg, I believe, is listening to chat. Yes. And actually yeah. has very intimate insight into what's going yeah. on. So if we could page Mr. Gatorberg. Yeah, he'll he'll be mentioning in chat probably in a second uh, what that is. And I, I think also it's worth noting in Alex list with Shark Typhoon. Uh, I'm not sure if there's a GitHub of it or not. Um Typhoon and Hall of Storm Giants both give him that inevitability, which That's was literally the Storm what Giants he said. go into. Okay, yeah. okay. Uh, I, I he, sleep. He said he wanted a way so. to slow the game down with his counter magic. Yes. Answer the relevant threats, protect his two threats. Yes. And then just win the game that way, like a traditional mono blue control shell, basically. Okay, I thought Storm Giants was going into Brendan's deck. No. Okay. Yeah. But I no, sleep. That, that okay. was that was Alex list. So he literally has two. Win conditions, uh, and then you know the Jace Wielder of Mysteries paradigm shift combo as yes. a just get there kind of thing too. Okay, um, yeah. So there's there's the GitHub link for Ninth Seed, which is the bot that calculates all that. And it, it was interesting because I was talking to him. You know, he sent me the list last night. I showed it to you, and I was like, oh my god, they're on literally the same list. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and they were Brandon and Alec. That is, and he said he kind of. Audible basically out of that list and wanted a more mono blue control shell that had a couple of finishers that can just get there if you're able to control the game to that point. Which it looked like he was pretty much set up to do from the beginning, even if the permission is conditional. We see yeah. uh, mono leak and counterspell, mana drain, 
lose focus that's is replicate, lose focus, which yeah. is really good. Yes. Um, Discard your hand and draw that many cards. Yeah. So, oh, telepathy. Yeah. Eh. Uh, and that's nice. that. That was actually why he said he wanted telepathy. Was he wanted a way to? Okay, what are the actual relevant things I need to control? Yes. Yeah. Without having to look at a deck list every thirty seconds to see what cards were in some. You save a name. ton of mental energy having to bre- predict what your opponent can do when you can just look at what your opponent is capable yep. of and then see their draw step too. You, you yeah. for the amount of rounds of these after drafting, spending the time of drafting, and the amount of rounds these players are going to play, it's going to save Alec a ton of mental energy by the end yeah, of the day. Yeah, for sure. And, like, yeah, there's still a lot of work that goes into it, so Alec might not be as crisp as he wants to be, but he would be, like, the crispiest person at the end of the day if he's going to play Mono Blue Control and exactly. VRD and not have something like Telepathy. Yeah. And it also tells you when you can slam your Typhoon. Right? Exactly, yeah. You, you like, know, all right, this is it. And the interesting thing is there's one deck with enchantment removal. Sam. Dan? Yeah. Sam is the only person oh, so, with enchantment removal. Uh, Dan, uh, in the main. Uh, in the main, yes. Yeah, yeah. We so we do have Wreck in Swifty's Ward. Yes. Uh, but at least main deck, that's really all there is. Yeah. Which is great. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I think it's a really good meta pick. I think especially with him grabbing Pyro and Reb, mm-hmm. there's very little that anyone can do, you know. Yeah, there, there's... A stranglehold that can be placed on the game. Yeah, and exactly. you don't even need like the stars to align for that to happen. It's no. just by playing your game and drafting this deck in a very specific way, he's able to craft that state, I, I would assume, yeah. pretty reliably and pretty easily. Yeah. Um, the, the interesting thing is, so we have Jace, wielder of mysteries, in here, but we do we have we have the paradigm yeah. shift. Yeah, okay, he does so, have paradigm shift main as well. Okay, so we do have the backdoor win. Yeah, yeah, he does. Okay. I was curious about that. I, I know there's a, a bit of friction yeah. around that. So we do we can just oops, which I is again, you want to play muck, mono blue control yeah. in a format like this, again, going turn four Jace uncontested after telepathy because you know it's fine, or even turn five, turn six, whatever, into paradigm, paradigm shift, shift the next Talarian turn. Wins or saves whatever, you, you know. Yeah, so much time and so much mental energy, and I think a lot of that is overlooked by by players. Not just yeah. in the draft, but just in general. The amount of mental energy you have to put into this game really is taxing. Yeah. Especially again, as Caterberg said. This event being seven rounds after a four-hour draft is really draining. Yes. Um, I think this draft was over in like two, maybe three hours. It was really quick. This was one of the fastest drafts I've ever seen for our in-person. Yeah, it felt pretty poppy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, And to your point about having to wait a turn, he actually mentioned Mana Drain was added because, well, obviously it's a good spell, but it adds to Mind Spring because it means he doesn't, he literally just needs the two extra blue mana in order to be able to win off of that. So even though it's a little bit tighter, it's just really good to, like, all right, I can speed it up a turn if I have a mana drain backup. That's really interesting Uh, thing about Just to use it aggressively as, like, I'm going to counter something so I can win next turn. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And uh, there's a, what is it, is it Plasm Capture is another way to do that? Yeah, Plasm Capture is the Simic. Yeah. Yep. Is it Plasma Capture? I thought it was plasma capture. Oh no! Yep, plasma it is plasma capture. capture. Yep. Okay. Although it adds colored mana instead of colorless. Colored, yeah. But I mean, they're they're, they're going to do the same thing, right? Yeah, if you're yeah, ma- unless yeah. you're mana draining a blue spell. Yeah, the, exactly. Uh, but we saw in this in the draft, almost everybody is blue. Base yeah, blue. So yeah. You, everyone's base blue. The opportunity to pick up extra blue from here is pretty easy. It's just it's just a gimme. Like, yeah. Uh, spell Swindle costs infinite mana, so yep. like, you're not going to yeah. run that one. Let's see, do we have anyone on cam yet? Uh, I do not. Caterbird? We have not been notified that we have a camera match, but we could just go bird. Let's see. Gameplay area. Oh, there we go. Ooh, we do have Brandon. We have Brandon. On Brandon. Is this, uh, hopefully this is game one? I think it might be. You know, let me let me go tag uh, Mr. Levine to come in here sure. and talk about Brandon and his colorful dream coat. Yeah. Yeah. I think he's going to enjoy this one. Is, and is it Dan and Brandon? So is this going to be real quick? Do, are we in game one or game two? Yeah, right. <laughs> Where are we? <laughs> How fast is Dan playing? Yeah. Yeah, in before Spelljack. Spelljack is... 
I don't want to say criminally underrated because I think criminally underrated is the wrong phrase to use for what Spelljack is. Spelljack is a spell that sees usage to an amount. Appropriate or inappropriate, who's to say? But it does see usage in an amount, and that's the important thing. All right, so here we have Mr. Levine here. I'm back, folks. I've returned. All right, now is this round, is this game one, do you know? Uh, is this we, game are, two? we are going into game two, I believe. I, I know, so the game one of this feature match, we had the um, uh, Brandon, Brandon show and tell about the Emrakul. Oh, okay, yeah. And Dan still got him with uh, <laughs> a blighted agent that, uh, yep. that got uh, mutagenic growth, uh, something else, and then berserked. And then berserked, berserked. yeah, so gotcha, yeah. So, okay, yes, you are correct. Spelljack is better than other cards, Mr. <laughs> Caterer. That does not mean it is a good card. Many cards are better than other cards. I would yeah. say, I would, you know, they're, they're, they're cards that are worse than a curse and centaur. I mean, yeah. Mudhole is still a card, folks. Yeah, Mudhole is still a card. You, you, know, you know what is better than some other cards? Mountain Goat. <laughs> okay? It's better than a 1-1 one, one without, without uh, Mountain Walk. Yeah, we are going into game two. Yep, that okay, makes yeah. sense. So one zero for Dan so far. Is he about to run this back on Infect again? Is he, he just going to be the mono Infect champ? He might be. That might be what we get. I um, especially after. So this is Alex. That's deck. Alex deck. Yeah. Okay. Do we have these lists loaded up? No, we don't. Currently. Brandon's we do not. Uh, Dan's we do. Oh, okay. Right. Of course we have Dan's. Dan's been in the feature match all day. Yeah. Oh come on. No no no. Just copy it. Just go. Okay. Okay. No, we're there. All right. And we're there. All right. All right. We got there. So here's here's Brandon's list. I just wanted to look a little bit at the sideboard here, see if there was anything that really spoke to me. Dressed down. Dressed down. Yeah. That's pretty much really the immediate good. thing. Days, Arcane of. Denial. Yep. Uh, he, he has some good spells here that he can use. I, yeah. You know, it's interesting. Having played a lot of Legacy, Sneak and Show actually does not have the best Infect matchup. Yeah. Because it, it literally takes a 1-1 one, one and two cards in hand to just kill you. Yeah, you can just they, they can just go right under you with that yeah. Blighted Agent. No matter yeah. no matter what you sneak in, you're not blocking Blighted yeah. Agent. It's not happening. Yeah. I I have seen it many at many a legacy event at Moonbase. Oh yeah. Someone show until in an Emrakul and just die. That said, it looks like Brandon's got a pretty good hand. He's got a couple of defensive pieces. He's got that worldly tutor. A thespian stage, a ballista, no yeah. depths. Okay, but so Worldly Tutor with Stage is pretty good, I hear. It is pretty darn good. So we're going to see a Forest for Brandon. Mana Crypt coming down for Dan. Going to go ahead and sacrifice that Windswept Heath. Get a, t a Tropical Island here. Dan with a lot of mana availability to start the game off. And not worrying too much about his life total. Because, well, against Brandon, it's either, you know, zero or it's not. Yeah, it's it's zero or 20. It's the, We have two combo decks playing each other, which is fun. Oh, yes. In infect, infect may look like it's one of those decks that attacks you to kill you, but yeah. it, it really only does that once most of the time. Ooh. Dan has a uh, pact of okay. negation in hand yeah. here, dropping the Icar Claw Mirror and passing. I, I was curious, you know, why did you play the Mana Crypt if you don't need it? But then I remembered, oh wait, he doesn't care about his life total. This is an EDH. None of this matters. Yep. And uh, it's just like whose line is it everywhere? Anyway, <laughs> where everything's made up and the points don't matter. And. Dan had scale up in his hand, yes. so he doesn't he doesn't win next turn, but he gets pretty darn close. He's pretty close, and if he does happen to have mutagenic growth in hand, which I don't think he does, but if no. he did, that would be a game-winning play. Brandon yeah. tanking on whether to worldly tutor here. Going to go ahead and choose to do that. Probably go ahead and get that depth here. Yeah. Nope, it's Emery. We're going to go ahead and find... That Emery. Mm, I guess we're hoping that we can get to four mana to play Ballista. Mm, okay. Because he did have Ballista in hand, but I have to... I, I don't think that's going to work. I, I, the worst thing is, honestly, I think the only matchup that Dan was just not favored in, he, he beat round one. Yeah. Uh, the, the deck that actually had removal. Um, but he lost to Alluren, didn't he? Yeah, he did. Swifty that took him fair. down. Yeah, Swifty did take him down, yeah. So Brandon here, 
Going to go ahead and play another land. Seems like he's not angling to hold up the Arcane Denial. That may be because he doesn't have blue available. I'm not sure if he has a blue source in hand or not. He had a few lands. I couldn't make them out besides Thespian Stage and the Forest. Yeah. Uh, it looks like there's another... Oh, no, that's a Memory Jar. And he is up against this rankered up Iker Claw Mirror. Yeah. yeah, no blue sources natively for Brandon. He may have the Thespian Stage. That's a tropical island, but he's going to go ahead and play Ballista on one. Ah, okay. Block damage on the stat. Oh. <laughs> and he says, you know what? I'm just going to shoot that now. Let's not even worry about yeah, it. Smart. And then we can get Emery back and yep. load up. That's fair. The odds are in your favor, my friend. That's yes. how you play that card. Oh, look at that. Take three. <laughs> Sorry, roll the four. A uh, little, little, uh, little close-up magic from Brandon there. Nobody ever saw exactly what happened. Is that Nobody a blighted agent? Sure. It's blighted oh, agent here. It is brutal. And Dan holding up that extra mana, representing cards like Blossoming Defense here, Yeah. which he may or may not have, but he is going to hold that up. Yes, thank so, you. All right, so so it does look like Brandon has a Misty Rainforest. Oh, and Memory Lapse. That's Ooh, a very that's strong really card here. here. Being able to hit something like a Berserk with Memory Lapse is just really delightful. Yeah. Brandon dropping that Misty Rainforest. Going to think a little bit more about what to do with his turn, but my guess is he's not going to do much. If I were Brandon, I if would pass. I, if I were Brandon, I might actually deploy the Emery here. Hmm. I would be worried about the amount of just powerful... That's fair, yeah. He could, because... Yeah. Well, Brandon hasn't taken any Infect, so... Right. If, yeah, that's fair. But it's it's just a concern of, you know, especially after getting Berserked yeah. game one, we he do may. know one of the cards in Dan's hand is Rancor, right? We yes. know that for a fact. Rancor coming down, going to go right on that Blighted Agent. Brandon going to take a second to think about how he feels about Rancor and its repeated return to the battlefield... I think if I were Brandon, I'd be willing I like to say no to this. Denial here because I want to draw cards. Or do you think going the tempo play with memory lapse is the play here? I'm a big fan of arcane denial here. I don't think I think memory lapse is much better served for a pump spell most of the time, mm -hmm. um, or or even just a creature. And I'd I'd rather I'd rather just be done with rancor, especially because the trample stops me from, you know, having being able to block profitably with Emery in a pinch, things like that it makes it a lot harder to do that. Oh, there's an island. Brandon takes Activate one. Activate Thespian stage. Resolves. <laughs> yeah, let me just real quick copy that tropical island yeah. of yours. Just shore up the old mana base. It's obviously a, a fantastic choice here, but not what Brandon's going to do. Brandon's going to make the much more suboptimal play of, you know, countering the spell. Very boring. And yes, we see Brandon picking up the lands for Arcane Denial right in the front there. Richard King Ferguson says no. Pact of Negation. <laughs> Go to three. Yeah, now, now yes, here's the, here's the question. Did, did Dan have another counter? I thought it was just Pact in his hand. It's just Pact. Okay. Dan, Dan, oh, no, he has Flusterstorm in his hand, but that would not, uh, hurt. Yeah, I don't think Brandon would be too terribly flustered with that. Yeah. That would not be. Asking, oh, ooh, that's a strip mine. Oh, that's and fair. Dan is missing a bunch of land drops here. Oh, and we just got a Black Lotus with an Emery out, or with an Emery in hand. That's very exciting. So Brandon Brandon could be looking to do some degenerate things coming up here. Yeah. But none of them involve Garth One-Eye. No. For a Black Lotus token. Very disappointing. Which is unfortunate. Garth One-Eye, uh, always beloved and never bedrafted. Yeah. Strip mine coming well, down for Brandon. He'll be able to constrain Dan's mana a little more. When he takes away this tropical island, and that's going to happen right yeah, now, Dan's yeah, going to yeah. be unable. Nobody needs Amazon rainforest. No, that's... no, just go ahead and cut those down. Don't want you to have blue mana. Black Lotus <laughs> coming in, and the powerful plays begin here from Brandon. As we're going to see a two mana Emery here, discounted one off that Lotus. Do it. Brandon's second-guessing himself here, but I think he's got the right of it. Going to go ahead and slam that Emery. 
We've got a walking ballista in the yard as well. So a very yeah. nice pickup here. We're going to mill Hex Drinker, Yavamaya, Lotus Cobra, and Bark Channel Pathway here. Sure. None of those really matter, except maybe Hex Drinker, yeah. but not even. Although I like Hex Drinker less than a list that doesn't have Academy or Cradle, neither of which are well supported by Brandon's list. No, so. not really. And uh, you know the funny thing about uh, Cradle is that's three damage. Dan takes a lightning bolt from his Mana Crypt. A little bit of an that interesting That is the funny time. thing about Cradle. Yeah, the funny thing about Cradle is that uh, nobody drafted it today. Yeah. Very disappointing. I Nobody drafted Ancient Tomb. Yep. Like, there are so many cards that we see every time that just didn't get drafted. Do you think that is a testament to just how many different possibilities there are in this format? I think so, yeah. More than anything, that's what it is to me. Yeah. Uh, For, so we have four... So we're, we're representing Pact back up here. Yeah, this is five mana Chrome Mox. Scale up. Pitching the <laughs> Glistener Elf... Blighted Agent is going to get real big here, and Brandon now has to think about whether he wants to spend his Black Lotus memory lapsing that. He chooses to not. Says, I'll take seven. Do you have more than seven? Or I'll take six. Do you have more than six? Dan says, yes, I have ten. And now Brandon is priced into memory lapse. Pact of negation back up, yeah. and Brandon extends the hand. Dan takes this one down two to zero. Man. Uh, did, did you know that in a game where you have 20 life, having your opponent's life total is effective? Today I learned. <laughs> yeah, when you're... Uh, counting to 10 is twice as fast as counting to 20. It's, you know that's true. Yeah. <laughs> that was, a, that was a, a great showing by Dan. Once again, and really showing us... Giant killer. Oh, It's yes. a giant killer it moment. It is a giant that's... killer match. Yeah. The Sharpie is coming out. Reptar is bringing the Sharpie out to the feature match area. No, not the... No, no, yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> there we go. There it is. And the giant killer has happened on camera. Here we go. So for those of you that don't know, uh, we have a giant killer token that is signed whenever a champ... A previous, the previous BRD's champion is defeated on camera. And we have some, some great signatures here. We have the... Uh, we have the XJ Cloud signature, of course, John Ryan Hamilton on there. We have uh, some other signatures on there that I can't completely read, but yeah. now adorned with Brandon's signature and uh, temporarily beheld by Dan Zelensky. Yes. Very well done. Uh, have we seen a more successful pivot deck? I don't think so. I don't think so. Yeah. There's there Most pivots... Have not that I've seen have been unsuccessful. To be perfectly honest, Dan is the first person really to pull this off to say I'm feeling the squeeze. Yeah, I'm I'm getting cards taken from me. I need to move out. And yeah. Dan very happy to be uh, in his old standby. In fact, Dan getting of course to sign the back of the card, doing his best to use that sharpie yeah. there. <laughs> uh, so to answer your question, John, the amount of work that goes in between these varies by players. So there is a Discord where we have asynchronous online drafts. I can tell you for a fact, Brandon is in every single one of those. Um, Dan, I don't believe, is in the Discord. Some of the other players do brainstorm lists. And there are some of us, like myself and Mr. Hagen, that usually have about three or four lists we're working on at any given time, which are distinctly different. That way we can show up, and if we get drafted out of one, we can pivot early enough to get into another. Alec, for example, came in with one plan today and one plan only, and Alec is on that plan, it turns out, even though three other people were on that same plan. Yep, that's just, sometimes that's how that goes, and it, yeah, like like you said, it really varies by person. Um, you know, I, I, I have a, a, a Google spreadsheet that has uh, eight or nine different yeah. possible deck archetypes in it that yeah. I update every so often when new cards come in, and uh, yeah, it, it it just it just depends on the player. One of one of my favorite things to see at any of these events, I, I always love seeing Mason. Not just because I really appreciate Mason, Mason, which of course I do, yeah, but because Mason brings my favorite VRD character, Mason's Notebook. Yes, have you seen that? Mason's thing? Notebook is incredible. <laughs> Uh, there, there needs to be like a video stream in the Discord one day where he's just like, here's my notebook one page at a time. Also, I love that this is something Mason does. Yeah. Every time he plays, he sits down and says, would you like to look at the decks? Yeah. Because you obviously have access to the deck list, but it's a lot easier to just look at it, see it, and visualize that way. 
and that's one of the friendliest things I think you can do in VRD, which is, you know, rule enforcement level, don't be that guy. Yep. Yeah, exactly. That, that was a practice that that uh, that was was passed on to me at the last VRD. I started doing that because it was just like, yeah. I don't want to look at your, your deck list. You don't want to look at my deck list. Just pick up my deck and look at it. Yeah. That's going to tell you everything. Shuffle it for a little bit, whatever, and we'll right. know. Here's, here's my deck. Here's the cards in my sideboard. Just yeah. keep them separate for me, please. Uh, and, and Mason is very confident about his list this time. Yes. And he got run over by Blyden's list. Yes, Blyden, he, he had a lot of trouble with Blyden. Blyden's combo just too fast, uh, yeah. too, too mana efficient for Mason. But Mason's match against Cody was incredibly one-sided. Yeah. Cody was just unable to keep permanence on the board. He was locked out by Venser and Caracas in one yep. of the games. Just, you know, kept trying to put Urza on the board. Urza would get bounced. You know, the token would come in, the token would get blocked by Venser, Venser would go home with Caracas, Venser would be replayed, bounce the token, repeat, yep. repeat, repeat. Uh, interestingly, I did get to see Blyden name his card with Demonic Consultation, and he said, this is the only one you ever name now, it's you are already dead. <laughs> so he swung in with Shadow Mage Infiltrator and says, trigger on the stack, you're already dead. <laughs> and Mason goes, wait, what? And he goes, that's what I'm naming, you're already dead. <laughs> See, Bef- I, before damage, you're already dead. That's beautiful. <laughs> See, I'm a, I'm a, I've been naming Brushwag since I was, since yeah. I was small for when I, I don't want, I don't want a card, but I, I think Blyden may have leveled it up. So All we right. have Death Stage and our stage, opener from Green. Crab Nessa, Mason S- has Spellseeker Recall Get Probe Standstill. Yeah, we have some incredible hands on both sides. Yeah, it's just a question of whether Mason can beat the uh, the land combo here. Yeah. Blue pathway for Brandon. I don't know the name of that back half of that pathway, but I, uh, that's okay because I don't have to because I know that this is ruin crab. Yeah. I uh, I don't know what any of the pathways are called, but I know they're at color X, color Y pathway. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. That's that tide. Sure. I do know the name of that. It's tide channel pathway, the back ah, part okay. of bark channel pathway. Whoa. <laughs> okay, so we, we have Depth Stage and Nyssa. Yes. Some of the more powerful and cards ruin crap. in Brandon's deck presenting themselves here. This is the Brandon hand, tried and true. Yes, indeed. Getaxian Pro brings Mason down to 18. Going to go ahead and draw a card off that. Hits the island, has, the, has plenty of mana available. Uh, and by that, plenty, I mean one. But that's enough yeah. to cast re- Ancestral, so... Is certainly plenty. Again, uh, the the Brandon special of I care if your life is zero or twenty. Yep. Guess what? <laughs> Looks like we're gonna see Misty Rainforest trigger Ruin Crab a couple of times here. Archmage's Charm, Caracas. That's huge. Ooh. Both of those are very good here. I saw Mason steal a grindstone with Archmage's Charm in his last match. That was very good. When we were sleeving up the decks, I told Mark, you know, I think Archmage's Charm is criminally underplayed in this format. And he said, I don't think it's that good. And um, my my thought was, there are so many one-mana spells that are integral to certain strategies. Your Ruin Crabs, your Hedron Crabs, Soul Ring, even. Just stealing that is a huge value. Absolutely. Not to mention the countering a spell and just instant speed draw two is good. But oh, we got time walk with the next. The yeah, next we got one there. We got the time walk now. Here's my question: is is um, does Mason have Snapcaster in hand? Where is Snapcaster Mage? I don't think it's in his hand, but I don't think so. It doesn't look like it now. Mason was the one that ended up with Snap. I believe so. Let's check. Just look over here. Yes, Snapcaster. Okay, yep. pick and, fourth and four, round. Yeah. Nice and early there. Well, he was saying the same thing that I was, that he was like, these are the cards I need. I want to pick them aggressively. Yep. Uh, and, you know, go from there. Right. Once I pick those cards, I'll see what else is on the board, and I'll, I'll move into a narrower archetype at that point. Yeah. Right. Sea Chrome Coast coming down untapped for Mason as the third land. Oof, that force of will looks real bad staring down stage depths. It sure does. Vendillion click going to go ahead and come down, take one of Brandon's cards away. Has to be depths, right? It's got to be depths. Or does, does click hit land? 
I thought it was any card. I can't remember. Non-land card. There we oh, go. Oh, it is. So he okay. cannot take depths. Yeah, so he can get Nissa or Memory Jar, neither of which seem like the thing you want to go for. Yep, and uh, so... three Boomerang. That's an important hit. Yes. Mason chose correctly, I think, to take nothing out of Brandon's yeah. hand there. Mishra's Factory. Ooh, Winter Factory, even. Yeah, the, good. The, the good proxy. Good proxy. Good choice. You wait till end step, Brandon. Don't do it now. <laughs> Don't do it now. Brandon's being disciplined. He's waiting. He's waiting on his uh, depth stage nonsense. Yeah. One thing. One fun fact about Merit Lage, that token is legendary. So if Mason does hit Caracas. It got milled. Oh, it got milled. It oh, that's right. Crack, that's yeah. right. Oh, that's big. That's a big deal. Oh, Alec Hush. <laughs> Yeah, this Mason guy can't can't even stop a twenty twenty. Yeah, what is he doing? No Brandon service to fall, plowshares in that list. Brandon falls to seventeen off Bendillion Click. Going to go ahead and activate ruin the crab. Misty Rainforest. Yep. Get another Ruin Crab trigger, such as it is, just in case Brandon needs an alternate win condition here. Probably not, though. I don't think I saw Vapor Snag. Uh, I don't in, think I see it in the hand there. No, but he does have a uh, spell starter sprite. Okay, so he can block. He can block. Because somehow a giant eldritch horror that is born from the ice does not have trample. Yeah, you know. Doesn't really seem yeah. relevant. Spellqueller going away He's here. He's a small on land. <laughs> <laughs> So we're going to see this uh, this depth stage combo pop Maybe. off here. Maybe. Maybe. Here's, here's the play. Okay. From Mason. Oh, Stan still got milled? Yeah. Never mind. No place. <laughs> no place. No place. None. I thought he had it in his hand, but if, if standstill's gone, I guess I guess it's over. No, no stand standstill. He's not playing hesitation. And here we have a Dr. Poo Poo PPMD token with a brazen bar. Wow. Bow, 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 bow. Air horn, air horn. Yep. Brazen bar, we're going on an adventure here. That's really good. Because a... now we're way behind. Yeah. On lands to cast this Nyssa. But we are, we've been milling a lot, though. We've been milling a lot, but Brandon will be facing down six power in the air every turn once that Brazen yeah, Borrower comes down. Already at 17, going to fall to 14 this coming turn. And then that'll be a, a three, turns. three turn clock yeah. after that. So he's going to need to either mill Mason out or find a way out of this, this uh, fairy yeah. conundrum pretty quickly. Yeah. It, it, the other thing is we haven't even cast recall yet. No, yeah, that's still in the hand. We have plenty of. Uh, oh, there's the snap. There's the snap. You're gonna go ahead and time walk here, is my guess. Oh no, recall's in the bin. Oh, recall's in the bin. Archmage's crit charm. I'm gonna take your crab, please. Yep. One crab. Woof. That's a good play. Brandon taking a moment to. To consider and yeah. says, nope, uh, yep, that's that's yours now. All yours, friend. Brandon going to take three, fall to 14. And now... Congratulations. Yeah, I think we're seeing Brandon go from what appeared to be a winning position to just an unwinnable game. Yeah. Uh, which, the power of the good adventure spells in this format. Gosh. Uh, Bone Crusher Giant, Love Struck Beast, mm -hmm. Brazen Borrower... Murderous Rider. I think those are all criminally underplayed, especially Murderous Rider. Murderous Rider uh, does not get the respect it deserves. I, I, it's, to me, it is of the caliber of Brazen Borrower, and that it it is a so a two for one solution. Yes, or half for one, I guess, if you want to call it that. Like, right, you're, you're using half of a card to answer theirs. So why would you not do that? And then you no. still get a real card when you play it. Yeah, it's not exactly. like an amazing card. But it's a totally serviceable card if you are in, in some sort of like blue-black mid-range strategy, yeah. something like exactly. that. Exactly. A strategy that, by the way, does not get enough play around here. No. Brandon falls to nine off this attack here from Vendillion Click and Snapcaster Mage. Mason holding a lot of action in his hand, gonna choose to preordain leave mana up for that Venser in his hand, also still has the powerful force of we're gonna look at cryptic command here. Probably gonna put that in his hand if I had to guess. Nope. Sure. It, oh no, fairy conclave. Ah uh, yes. Mason trying to Cube is better. Get out of here. <laughs> Cube is better. I mean, Cube is better than a lot of things. 
Uh, so we got Emery, World Detutor, and Prismatic Fisto. We are paying one blue. Mystical. Yep. Now that you've uh, ruined crabbed me, I feel safe with Mystical Tutor. Yeah. I wonder what what uh, what he thinks he wants to resolve here. So we have a show and tell in the library. There's a ballista. Yep. There's the Emrakul. So it's not show and tell. Yep. It's not channel. Certainly not Hexdring. I don't think he has an out. I think Brandon is using this spell to look through his deck and see if there is something he can do. Yeah. Which I respect. Yeah, for sure. Show and tell. Not going to do much here with the Emrakul in the library and yeah. a Force of Will in the hand. Yep. And a Venser. Yeah. But you know, you can dream. You can. It's important to dream. But this is the look of a Brandon who is realizing that there's not a lot for him to do. Yeah. Grabs the show and tell just to make a token effort. What can I even put in? That's a great question. I don't know what else is in his hand because... Uh, or even well, in his list. Yeah. It doesn't put walkers in. It certainly doesn't. I guess he could put Jar into play, right? Oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah, I I don't know. He doesn't have a whole lot here. I don't Yeah, I don't think putting Jar into play does, really accomplishes anything here. Well, I mean, you know, it's just going to get countered. Yeah. I don't know that Mason cares. He's got dominant board position he, and okay, I you know, you draw 7 and I don't. My position is still so dominant that I do not think you can come back from it knowing what is in your hand and what is in the graveyard. Right. Well, the question is, ah, yes, he's just uh, going to venture yeah. that back, say no thanks, still has Force of Will back up for another problematic card. Yeah, definitely with two. With with this also making the clock one turn, right? Yeah. Because we have seven power on board plus the Fairy Conclave is nine. Hey, Hyphenated, how's it Good going? see you, friend. It looks like Mason's going to take this one down yeah. pretty cleanly. Mason. Counting it up now, sees okay. We've got the we've got lethal. Yep, and Brandon says you got it. Yeah, uh, it turns out slam. There were like three people on mono blue, and one of them audibled into blue black. Yes, we have consultation cool. combo. We have quite a lot of blue players here. Do you think that was Do you think that was Blyden's plan from the start, or I know for a fact it was not. His oh. his he audibled into that. His plan was Alex's plan almost exactly. <laughs> uh, I He got mad when the Jace paradigm shift wheel happened. Right, I remember and that. And Blyden was like, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? And I said, what? I can tell you for a fact that was on his list that he sent me last night. And he said, yeah, you know why it was on his list? Because I was at Uptown last week and didn't know he was in this event and was talking to him at the bar about what I wanted to play. <laughs> <laughs> Alec, Alec abusing his bartender's yeah. privilege. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. There's a code. Yeah. <laughs> and that code has been broken. I love it. Yeah. It was right. pretty good. So sideboard here. I think Reality Smasher comes in. Reality Smasher feels important. It just, it just you know... Presents a threat that's hard to deal with. Yeah. We just saw Dove in Hand of Control get put face down. Yep. I think that's really good here. Uh, I don't know that I care about Denial or Daze. No, I don't think so. That's That doesn't look like what we need here. <laughs> <laughs> I was hoping Alec would hear that. Yeah. <laughs> Love you, buddy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then, so what does Mason bring in here? That's does, a great I, I question. I feel like Mason's list is so stacked in the main that I don't know if he cares. Yeah, he may just not need to do too much with that here. It's very possible that he just doesn't make very many changes, if any. Yeah. Let's go ahead and take a look at the old sideboard there. Oh, where did he put his sideboard? Good Lord, what is going on here? We just have it sorted by mana value. Right. Well, no. He just didn't put his sideboard in yeah. the in the thing, so okay. we just have to guess. All right. Well, yeah. thank you, Mason. We appreciate you. <laughs> we do appreciate you, just not this thing that you did, Yes. to be clear. Okay. Lutri is in his sideboard, I know for a fact. Yes, because Lutri is for sure his companion, yeah. uh, and that's been made very clear to everyone. No worries there. Yeah. Uh, disrupting Shoal, I know, is in his sideboard. <laughs> I don't think he cares about Shoal. No, I don't um, think so. Uh, Vile, I believe, is in his sideboard. 
Yes. Uh, no, Vile, my, eh, Vile's in the main deck. Well, I, I know Disrupting Wait. Shoal is in the board, and oh, so I is see. Lutri. He didn't oh. designate sideboard. He literally just separated it by mana values. Uh, oh, no, the, the so the, the the software separates it by mana values. Oh, okay, right? okay. Um, so he just forgot to designate a sideboard. Yeah. But he's showing everyone his deck, so it's not a huge deal. Yeah, not not that big a deal. All right. Well, we'll, we'll get him to do it later. Yeah. Um, yeah, Brand Brandon, and that was... Something I noticed during the draft that I mentioned was it seems like not a lot of people got those sideboard cards. Right, yeah. It, there just wasn't a lot. Like you and I had alluded to, there were people that had, you know, obviously you have your wish board. Yes, uh, yes. Sam has sideboard-ish options. Yep. Uh, Blyden has some cards, I guess. You yeah, know, there, there's just not a lot of sideboard options that were taken. You know, the, the mono red deck would have been great because yeah. nobody took Boil. You, you could have... Yeah, steamrolled with mono red today. Yeah, absolutely. I think I think there was certainly the potential for mono red to be very powerful today. Yeah, I if I had come into the draft, if I had been playing today, I would have come in looking to draft mono red. Yeah, like right. that was that was going to be my plan, uh, especially if I got a later seat. Okay, Arc Mage uh, and Reflector Mage are coming in. Sure, Arc Mage dealing with a lot of Brandon's problematic uh, non-creature spells, and yeah. Reflector Mage just another way to deal with something like. Uh, Either either a merit lage or just to just to bounce a a, a ruined crab and take a turn off. It does like hit Emrakul. Yes, that's true. Yeah, a good uh, show and tell option. and death right. Ooh, death right. Interesting choices. Death right makes sense because Snapcaster exists, and there are so many instants and sorceries that that's actually a reasonable clock for Brandon to exile those from Mason's graveyard. Yeah, that's quite a good pick here. Yeah, and with Brandon presumably milling Mason, obviously something he's interested lot, in. Yeah. Yeah, I think that this may be one of the decks, like, with the crabs, that actually is able to effectively take advantage of Deathrite Shaman in this format, which yes. is really just not as powerful as it is, even in EDH. Yeah, it's very interesting to see just how different the power level of that card is in a format like this versus, you know, it's Legacy your traditional 60-card constructed, or, any of that, yeah. or even EDH, where, you know, even though you're still bound by the singleton restriction, there are, you, you could just a play a lot of, of fetch lands. lands. Yeah, exactly. And it's a multiplayer format, so they compound because a bunch of people have them. Exactly. Uh, so, still, main boomerang is a very interesting choice to me. I guess it makes sense in Mason's list because he has so many ETB creatures. He has a lot of ETB creatures, not a lot of early actions, so something he can use to get an early problem. That's from both crabs. That is double crab. Ow. Brandon, considering living the double crab life, is Mason throws his cards? back. No, he's got seven Nimble Obstructionist, City of Traders, Crab Crab. Oh, so it is, yeah. Island Depths Emrakul. Yeah. That's what we're working with here. Versus the the now going to six for Mason. Yeah. I mean, that represents, what, 12 card, twelve cards milled in two turns? That's a fourth of your deck? Yeah. I, I feel like I keep that in this format, right? That's pretty darn good. Yeah. Play, play Island, play Crab, untap, play Crab. Play another land. Yes, yeah. that's, that's six. What? <gasps> the problem with the Brandon hand. Brandon making a discipline choice because that isn't capable. Yeah, the I problem know. with the hand is that it doesn't do anything yeah, else after you mill those 12 after. cards. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Especially with Dark Depths being one of the three lands in the hand. Brandon yeah. making the sensible choice here. But if that was a fetch land. Oh, if that was a fetch land. Yeah. He would have kept it. Yeah. That's, <laughs> that's half your deck. That's 18 I, cards. I don't need to here. do anything at this yeah. point, you know? I'm going to mill most of your deck, and yeah. we'll figure it out from there. Yep. <laughs> All right, both players going down. Let me go down to six here. I have to believe this favors Mason. Oh, uh, yeah, I think so, yeah. I think Mason's deck and maybe Swifty's deck mulligan better than any of the other ones that we have here today. I think you're almost certainly right about that. Most of the other decks, like... Have have a bit of trouble with that. Blyden's deck has difficulty with that. Alex's yeah. deck. Dan really needs a critical mass of cards. Yeah. It's just that, you know, the issue we constantly talk about of the linear strategy versus a modal or dense redundant strategy, which mm -hmm. Mason has a lot of redundancy. Andrew has redundancy by having two somewhat overlapping archetypes in his list. Yes. Uh, and other than that, most of the other lists are pretty linear in what they want to do. 
Cody being the one that I'm, I, I saw him win. It was great. Right. Uh, we saw him on camera win. Outside of those, I don't think he's maining Tavern Scoundrel. No, he's that not. That package is in the board. That package is yeah. in the sideboard for sure. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's just interesting to see how those how those are looking. Um, the, the, maybe Alex deck, I mean, it mulls into control cards well, but you still don't have anything to do after you counter all their spells. Right, and eventually you have to actually do something in this format. Yeah. That's why I like Jeff's much more proactive-seeming version of the deck. Yeah. Mason going to be going to five here. It looks like Brandon tanking on keeping his six. I think he may be keeping his six. We've got a couple of lands, Lotus, Cobra. Is that a Lotus? Oh, uh, it's a mana vault? Oh, it's a vault. Still still quite good. Oh, and look, he, he knew what we were saying. Yeah. Getting rid of it? Interesting. So I guess that's a crop rot as well. Okay. So we have two lands, Cobra, Crop Rot, Dovin Bond, or Dovin Hand of... Hand of Control, yeah. Control. Brandon, not sure that this is the right decision. Thinking about... I really like being able to get... Well, I guess you can't untap the vault with that Karn. No, but I, I like... I think that getting the Dovin down is one of the most important things you can do here. Yeah. And I yeah, taxing know. Mason's mana because yeah, he drew a lot of lands last game. But I, I think don't know. yeah, I think accomplishing that on turn two as opposed to turn three yeah means resolving Dovin versus not yeah exactly. And and I also think it's important knowing that Mason did Mulligan. Yes, uh, applying pressure to his mana is significantly more effective. That's because true. He went down to six, and sure, I think he even went to five here. No. He went to six because uh, he had four cards in hand in addition to Hallowed Fountain and Preordain, which he just cast. On his he first... drew. He drew. Oh, first he turn. drew. Yeah, yeah he, so he you're went, right. He yeah, went second. He did, he did yeah. go down to five. So especially knowing that, yeah, that is definitely. Yeah, I think it, it might be it might be a tough road here if he does in fact find a two mana counter spell or this time walk. Yeah, ooh, he's going to be able to time walk. Put a uh... two mana explore. Yeah, well, that's... I, I, I know. I, I think that may here. be what it is, yeah. It's going to put a land into play and allow We're just going to to get a land. Yeah, it's going to allow him to have Spell Caller here if he, if he finds a land. Okay, so we did draw Recall. Okay. So we potentially... I mean, here's three more looks for a land because he didn't have one in his hand. This is important. Mason drawing three cards here, Caracas. trying to find a land to play. That's a Caracas. That's going to be pretty big in this matchup. However, it does mean that Brandon is much more likely to be able to resolve that Dovin here. Yeah. Unless so the so it's crop rot for a fetch land. Oh, there's a fetch land. We don't even need a crop rot. Yeah. We we just got a fetch land, boys. <laughs> That's four mana. That's a Karn. That's a Karn, or you know, it's 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 five mana even if you want, right? Yeah. Let me go ahead and get a mana from that Lotus Cobra, but I think. A card, I think the a card is nice, but okay. There's free hex drinker. Okay, I like that here, because now we can still fetch. Yep. Dovin have mana up afterwards for something else. Exactly. You can crop rotation doesn't do much at that point, but no. But I think he's fine saving crop rotation for something like wasteland. Yes. So that he can waste Caracas if he needs to, you know. Right, uh, or or simply waste, you know, Hallowed Fountain here yeah. is a potential choice. Going to go ahead and search up an island here. And I assume we'll see Island Island casting Dovin. Yep. Or Island Forest casting Dovin, bluffing one mana counterspell he doesn't mm, have. I, yeah, I think, I think yeah. Mason knows that he doesn't yeah. have that, and he knows that Mason knows that he doesn't yeah. have that, and so on and so forth. Although I guess he does have days in the sideboard, so well, mm. that doesn't need to be untapped for that. So yeah, we just leave Crop Rod up if we need it. Yep. And there's our Dovin. Very nice. You love to see it. Dovin, hand also, of control. Also worth noting, we can get Hex Drinker halfway leveled up next turn. Ooh. Hex Drinker getting, uh, getting ready to go crazy here. Hex Drinker, of course... Turning into something with protection from instants followed by protection from everything. He's thinking about whether or not to level up Hex Drinker, and he's going to do it. Yeah. Level 1 Hex Drinker. 
And Mason passes back. All right. Yeah, so this this is when a spell like Crop Rot can be very powerful if we don't have the counterspell backup. Yes. Uh, especially knowing, as we do, hey, you've only got one blue available. Yep, Cavern of Souls, uh, not known for making blue mana to cast instants and sorceries. Of no. course, something like Venser or Brazen Bar or, you know, the, yeah. the, the actual creature. But uh, not not the adventure part. Not the, Two uh, mana and two hex drinker? Can we not use this D4? Do we? We're going to okay. bounce it in response. Okay, yes. sure. Yep, there we go. Sure, guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to cast it again. <laughs> yeah. That's fine. I'm going to go ahead and attack you with this Cobra. Pay one. Get a Hex Drinker back. There we go. Yeah. And, of course, uh, casting the, the the bounce part of Brazen Borrower did cost Mason all three of that mana. Something that's... Uh, and notably, he cannot cast the creature now because he does... Oh, no. He does. Yeah, because he, he has Cavern, right? Yeah. Mason down to 14. Snap gonna go ahead and recall. Play Snapcaster Mage. Going to have trouble casting Recall off of just one mana. Hang on. Hang on. No, 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 no. Stop, 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 stop. Yep. Uh, where's the remote? Uh, it's in my hand. Hang on. Go, okay. go. Just go, yep. go chat at them. Don't drop. Don't drop. Don't drop. Do not drop. Do not drop. Okay, they got it. They figured it out. Okay, good. Woo! <laughs> Crisis averted. They actually seem to have figured it out just as uh, just as you open the door. Yeah. Yeah, we figured out that uh, Snapcaster Ancestral was not going to work. Can't actually cast the Ancestral Recall yeah. here through the Dovin Hand of Control tax. Of course, Dovin making your many things harder to Artifacts, cast. Artifacts, enchantments, instants? That sounds right. Yes. Oh, oh artifacts and sorceries. sorceries. And there artifacts. it is. Okay, yeah. Brandon yeah. holding Karn, Crop Rotation, Memory Jar, and Nissa, who shakes the world here. I, I really think the value of Wasteland here cannot be understated. I am, yeah, I am. I, I, I would love to Dovin see Dovin is taxing here. so hard right now that if you just Crop Rot and get Wasteland to hit Hallowed Fountain... It looks like Brandon agrees with you. He's tapping a single green. I hope that's what this is. Going to 19. Oh, he's, oh, he's going oh, yeah. to 19 he's going because to 19 of the previous that he, yes, that he yes, 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 yes. Yeah. So he crop rot. Do you sack an island or do you sack a forest here? He's going to sack the island. Yeah. He's floating the blue. Island to the yard. Yeah, you, you've got to keep that one forest here. Yeah. Spell Queller coming down. To snipe the crop rotation. Sure. You just hold on to that there, friend. Um, <laughs> and of course, when the spell caller leaves play, Brandon can choose whether or not to cast crop yes. rotation. Yeah. It is a May, so he's not priced into, into rotating if he doesn't want to. But this does leave him with sort of a, uh, a problematic situation here regarding this, uh, this new flyer and its ability to attack Dovin. Yeah. Can he use that free mana to... Minus one hit. Yep. Yep. Minus one on Spell Queller. And just going to go ahead and bash. Mason blocks something for free. Goes down to 12. Yep. Dovin down to four counters. I know that's slightly off screen, but I'll tell you how big Dovin is. It's four. Yeah. Sna Snapcaster may honestly be... Okay. And now Wasteland is not worth anymore. Yep. Uh, now we do get Snapcaster, Recall, gotcha. Mm -hmm. So I, I think this is the point where we may start to see Mason run away with this one just because of the pure advantage that he has. Yeah, Mason Mason generating this uh, this mana advantage, spell quellering the, uh, the the crop rotation was a, a absolutely back-breaking play here. Yeah. It may, may indeed have won Mason the game. Yeah. Now, we do have a 2-3 flyer that, that, that doesn't deal any damage right now. We are, we are locked out of that, but... Mason can start casting spells and drawing cards. Yeah. I, I think the important thing, too, is... Now, if, if Brandon top decks a land... Yes. This game changes drastically, because then... Oh. Oh. Okay. Oh. Yeah, that's a thing. 
That's a that's not just any land. That's yep. strip mine. That we we get a mana from that. Okay. We can pump that mana into hex drinker. We sure can give it protection from instance. That's yes. pretty exciting. Also makes hex drinker a four four, pretty notable size, bigger than spell queller, bigger yep. than wrestling. Yep. Um. So we'll see what uh, what Brandon chooses to do with that. I think Brandon's going to cast the Karn, which I think is a mistake. I am also concerned that he's got that Karn floating in the front of his hand. He's considering casting it. I do not like that. Because what is what is the end game of that, right? Nothing. Oh, 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 there we go. There we go. We got a 4-4 pro instance. Yes. All right. Level 3 Hex Drinker. Strip Mine going to go on a little bit of a journey. Take away presumably the Tundra. Yeah, I don't think he cares about Cavern. No. You want to shut him off the double blue. Yep. Carnis yeah. Ajar, the hand for Brandon. Thank yeah. you. Field from our our our, our, our field, field reporter, <laughs> Mr. Caterberg. Appreciate you, who is a lovely host. Wonderful, wonderful person. So generous in, in opening his his home. His his whole family really yeah. really really kind to all of us. So what Just are we great. strip mining? If anything. I, I think there is merit here to not strip mining, to spending three mana to get Hex Drinker up to level six. Six is an interesting spot for Hex Drinker sitting just below that seven. Obviously, there are not too many cards in Mason's deck right now that uh, that bounce the Hex Drinker, but the one that I would be concerned about is Venser Shaper Savant. Exactly. So um, so, have in, so the, the question is, okay, do we give him a turn to draw it? Right. Tap this strip mine to put it one under so that I can use the strip mine next turn. Mm -hmm. Or do I use strip mine now so that he has to both have a land and a venser and it takes me three turns to level this up? Yeah. Either way, there is a turn of like being open to it, right? Yes, exactly. Um, But we also know that Mason after the error, has Snapcaster and Recall available to him. Yeah, and that, inf- that changes this. Um, Brandon can try to force Mason's hand here by using the Strip Mine to try to try to force Mason to use Snapcaster. Yep, there we go. Um, recall. Snapcaster, sure. Recall, yep. And I think at this point, not using the Strip Mine makes a lot of sense yeah. here because we know... Snapcaster, Snapcaster Ancestral. We did. We uh, have to level here. Come on. I don't think he used Strip Mine. He's already. Oh, come on, Brandon! Oh. Oh no! Uh, I don't like this play at all. No, what are you doing? Unless his plan is to oh get killing the Caracas. Even interesting. Interesting. Okay. We're just Zoidbergen out of here on this one. Well, two it's mana. Okay. Level it up. Mason's got. Get it to five. A million uh, lands in hand, so yeah. it's not really too big of an issue results-wise. But yes, Brandon does not have anything else to spend this mana on. Yeah. I I, I would very much, because, all right, if I top deck a land here, it doesn't matter. Right. I get it to eight anyways. But if I don't top deck a land and can't get it to seven, I'll be just so disappointed. Yeah. Snapcaster coming in saying, do you want to block me, Lotus Cobra? No. <laughs> I, I do no. not. I do not want to do that. Don't do it. 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 Don't, <laughs> don't do it. You're better than this. We believe in you, Brandon. Brandon, of course, a a, a, a solid player, VRD7 champion. Yeah, I, he, I, I hear he beat somebody who's who's pretty okay at Magic yes, in the finals. Yes, he, he so, did. Uh, uh, quote, Eric was being so nice to me, letting me win, is what he said last <laughs> night. And I was like, Brandon, that is not what happened. That is not at all what happened. Trust me. He made me work so hard to just barely lose each yeah. game. <laughs> yep. Uh, all right, Snapcaster trading off with Lotus Cobra here, protecting the Dovin Bon. Oh, we leveled once. I guess we're at three now. Yeah, we, oh, well, yeah. we leveled yeah, yeah, with right, the right, right, uh, yeah. the free mana off. Yeah, Cobra. we had to be at four. Yeah, because yeah. we've got where 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 protection from instance brought Mason down to eight. Okay, that's not terribly helpful. That's a ruin crab. I don't think it's that. a blocker. It's a blocker for the dead snapcaster mage. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Perfect. Level them up, buddy. Unfortunately, the Dovin is going to have to continue to tick down to keep Spell Queller off its paces. 
Yeah. I Well, again, it, twice as long, right? Yeah. We take twice as long to get there. The thing is, I think Dovin is now at one or two. Yeah, I think it's and down to two now. And if we had used the strip mine to level Hex Drinker, mm-hmm. we are there. Yes. I do not like Ruin Crab here at all. I don't think Ruin Crab. I guess it gives you an extra, okay, I can block if you deploy another threat and level once. But again, I think in, like, we're all aboard the Hex Drinker Choo Choo, right? Yeah, that's the, that's, I think the Hex Drinker at this point is the only realistic way Brandon is winning. Yeah, he's, he's the conductor for our, for our engine. Yeah. Especially with, I mean, Mason's at eight. Mason's at eight. We have a bunch you of You kill him this turn if you had tapped and leveled. Mm-hmm. Oh, no. We have a bunch of dead cards in our hand. Karn, Nissa, Jar. None of those do anything yeah. with two, manas and two mana in play. Mason, you know, and I, I, I hate to say we because, of course, I have a great appreciation for Mason, but I'll always root for... <laughs> the home for team hero. The home team. Mason, Mason, of course, coming down from Chicago. And Brandon, Brandon is ours. He's a... Uh, He's he's our local St. Louis talent, so we ha- we have to root for him. A little homerism here. Hex drinker coming in four four. Looking to do a Level little work. Up. Level it up. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Ah. Mendelian click comes down, and Mason's going to see Brandon's uh, embarrassment of a hand here, and be like, "Oh, we're going all in." <laughs> you keep all of those. None of those matter to me. Those yeah. can all stay. I'm just Keep channeling Mason here. Yep. Yep, Mason agrees. Those can all stay exactly where they are. <laughs> and uh, Vendillion Cluck now available to either block or just hose Dovin. Kill Dovin. And I think that's the most likely outcome here. Oh, no. Yeah, it looks like we're watching this game slip away from Brandon just, just bit by bit. Now... Hex Drinker, a fantastic card. Yes. Card I'm always happy happy to see. Yeah, V click into nothing is the best feeling. Oh yeah, I, I love also V click yourself is good. Yes, Another clicking good. myself to just bury some garbage in my hand that you know my eight eight hundredth land. No, yeah. you can't take a land. My just my my eight hundredth counter spell. Gris, Gristle brand land. number three. Yeah, extra combo piece. Oh, we're double blocking here. Ah, uh, we didn't. Interesting. We didn't dove in. Didn't activate Dovin. You know what would have been great there if that Hex Drinker was level 8. <laughs> and had protection from everything? Yeah, that would have been awesome. That would be very cool. That would have been game. <laughs> GG, baby. Unfortunately for Brandon, that's not what we have here. Brandon is instead faced with the un- unenviable and vaguely pointless decision of whether or not to cast Crop Rotation. When Mason has four land. Yep. And Lotus Cobra doesn't exist anymore. Yeah, because it was used and, to block. And. When you, uh, blah, 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 blah. Jason is, is is feeling the sadness here, and so am I. As, uh, yeah. Brandon looks on forlornly at his copy of Crop Rotation, no longer the card that it was. More importantly, Mason has Sensor in his hand, and that yes. makes me happy. Oh, uh, Sensor is beautiful. Nobody so. drafted Forbid. No, Forbid not making an appearance today. Uh, Would you say it was forbidden from being drafted? Is he not casting it? Because if he's not casting it, yep, there we go. It stays in exile. We figured it out. Yep. <laughs> we figured we read the card and we learned how it worked. Hey, it's an Archmage's charm. That's oh, still Rune Crab. Uh so we have Ninja of the Deep Hours. Yep. Hey, look, it's a land. That uh, would have sure been great. <laughs> <clears throat> Bark Channel Pathway coming down for Bran. He's going to pass the turn. Brazen Borrower coming in off the adventure, and Mason's going to take control of this game from here. Thank you very much. Brazen Borrower likely to take down the Dovin hand of control. Mystic Sanctuary oh, to hand one. for Mason, and that is going to be incredibly brutal here. Mystic Sanctuary coming down untapped. Mason going to take a look at the graveyard. What are we going to take? Time Walk being the obvious candidate. Yeah. I like it. Two mana walk. explorer is still good when you cast it a second time. Yes, indeed. Especially when you have a clock on the board, and that clock is starting with Brazen Borrower. Oh my gosh, it was a ninja the whole time. Brazen Borrower back to hand, ready to perform more adventure shenanigans. Brandon falls to 17, and Mason draws that time walk. Guess what he's going to cast? That's right, folks. Is it a time walk? It's time walk. Yeah! Now, Dovin is still in play. Ninja of the Deep Hours, of course, was pointed at Brandon, as was the... Brazen Borrower, so he does still have to pay the extra mana for that, but that's no problem. Dropping a Scalding Tarn here, and can go ahead and continue the nonsense. 
Ninja of the Deep Hour is coming in. Brandon falls to 15. Mason draws yet another card, just burying Brandon in card advantage here. That's forceful a forceful to hand. Mason thinking a little bit. Something tells me we may not see Brazen Borrower cast. Or Brandon may not be resolving another spell this game. Something tells me that if if Brandon does resolve any other spells, they're they're going to stay on the things will stay on the battlefield for a very short period of time. Lotus yes. Battle drawn for Brandon, not the ideal object here. That's a treasure token. Mm hmm. Wow. Way to, way, to, way to take Lotus Petal down yeah. a peg. Really just reducing it to its <laughs> finest form. You just drew a treasure token. How yep. do you feel? Yeah. You, you just drew a $20 treasure token. Congratulations. <laughs> but it's, it's, just, it's... Cody needs a lot of hard. those. He does need a lot of uh, $20 treasure tokens. Yeah. Brandon taking a little bit of a look at the board here, thinking about his options... Possibly Scoop lamenting him up. his decisions. Scoop him up. Yeah, well, Brandon Brandon can enjoy the, the slow boa constrictor-like death that Mason's deck is offering him, or he can simply concede here. Both of those are viable options, Dovin. Going to maybe be activated here? It's hard to tell. It's off-screen. Mason falls to seven off of Scalding Tarn, presumably just going to get a basic island there. That Man. is. Uh, that's that's less than the damage that Hex Drinker would have done. <laughs> We're going to keep revisiting that one. I'm, first thing I'm doing is I'm going to be like, Brandon, why didn't you level it up? Oh, oh, oh we're bouncing it. Devin Bond goes home and Brazen Borrower goes on an adventure. A little petty theft here. Brazen Borrower going to come on down onto the battlefield. Mason goes ahead and untaps because, of course, that was some end of turn action. Ninja of the Deep Hour is living upside down for reasons passing understanding. Oh, it was Dovin. Yeah, it was Dovin. Yes. Yeah. Aether hey, look, Vial. it's a vial. That card's very useful now. Yes, Aether Vial, very relevant here. Brain uh, draws memory lapse about a thousand draw late. steps too yeah. late. <laughs> With that Dovin and Lotus Petal in hand. Along with the, the three dead cards you see before you, Karn, Jar, and Nissa. Just not terribly useful here. Do Dovin going to try to come back down, but my guess is one of Mason's 83 different counterspells, Sensor included, might take quick care of this. Sen sensor does just cycle to kill this, doesn't it? it uh, it's pretty good. Yeah. yeah. It's pretty good. Do and it. Do it. Get blown out. Do it. <laughs> Entertain the folks at home. Yes, give give us give us your entertainment. Ah, lotus all right, petal. he's playing the Lotus Petal. Okay. Fine. There's a Dovin. And now we can't censor it. We have to use a real counter spell. Archmage's Charm going to come down, counter that Dovin, and crush any of Brandon's hopes of coming back here. We're going to have five damage coming in from Mason this turn. Vile at one. Live those life totals. Vial up to one. But Mason's going to get to draw a second card this turn thanks to the erstwhile ninja. Brandon taking a moment to think about his life and his decisions. Thinking maybe I should have leveled up that Hex Drinker. This game would be <laughs> over. It's uh, it's hard to know what would have happened if he'd leveled up the Hex Drinker. How quickly would Mason have died? It's hard to say. Yeah. <laughs> At eight life from multiple turns. It, it's a, You know it's a bad state when we're paying Phyrexian to get Probe you at seven life. Yes. At seven life and with eight untapped lands. Yeah. No less. Mason... Simply just does not want to give up that mana advantage. Brandon drawing an unhelpful combo piece here. Missing one half. The other half doesn't really do much at all. No. That crop rot sure would have been good, though. Gosh, wouldn't it have been nice if crop rotation had resolved? Yeah. Alas. Alas. Instead of instead of keeping the mana vaults. And Dovening on turn two. Yeah. We kept kept the Cobra, or we, we went the Cobra route. Yeah. We kept this Karn in our hand. This Karn has done nothing. No, he has not. There we go. All right. Now now we scooped him up. So Mason took that one home. All righty. The, 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 the Beaker is one and two. 
Brandon Brandon losing this one. Yes, Mason going up to two and one, taking a not a quick two zero, a a a slow and methodical two zero, yeah. but a decisive one. Yes. And, oh, and there we go. The the real winner is the person who gets to eat after round three at every Magic event. As you know very well, Mr. Levine. Yes, uh, the, the real winner the real winner is the people who get a lunch break built into their, yeah. into, into their day yeah, and, get, that, and, and, and don't have to worry about how well they play in relation to whether or not they get paid. Yeah. Of course, I'm talking about me. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so I'm not sure what we're going to see up here next, but uh, we may see Mason stick around. Take a quick look at the standing. Oh, good idea. All right, here we go. We are back post standings, and we have Brandon back at it and Cody at it as well. Yeah, we're going to see if Cody's uh, artifact amalgam can take down Brandon's yeah. Brandon deck. Yeah, uh, that... This is a Cody deck, and this is a Brandon deck. I think that is a very good way to describe these. Very much so. Uh, are there are there weird combos that you haven't thought about outside of Commander and maybe not even there? They're in Cody's deck. Yep. And he's going to make them happen. Yeah. Uh, he he did say, I asked him, so what, what was the plan? He said, well, I realized after I picked the Breach pieces, I'm like, wait, I, I don't have the rest of the Breach pieces. I don't know if I want to go for the rest of the Breach pieces. But I guess I'm going artifacts. Also, you know what I just realized? Nobody took dark grit. Yeah, no, there's there's no there's no rituals. A lot of the fast mana just yeah. not represented today. No, surprisingly, a very mid rangey type format. E even the combo lists, except for Blyden's, yes. tend to be a little bit more drawn out, mid rangey. Want to play it? Uh, and you know, I'm I'm curious who Blyden has played. Uh, yeah, soft soft shelled crab. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. The soft shelled crab strategy for Brandon here, and of course Brandon uh, has has proceeded to the pizza phase, but is still in the feature match area. Yes, <laughs> that is. I I have always said the people at events that win are not the vendors, they're not the judges, because we don't. We're there for sixteen hours with no breaks. Yes, we're we're not doing anything. <laughs> it's the people that grind side events. Oh yeah, that get to play for three hours and say, oh, "I'm gonna go to the bar and get some food and a couple drinks." Right, and then come back a couple hours later and grind more side events. I'm like, man, what I wouldn't give to be you right now. <laughs> I there was a a like three month period where I didn't judge a GP, and the only tournament I attended was a Grand Prix in Indianapolis. Which I just drove to and played side events. That's all I did. Yeah. I just drove in, got a hotel room, played side events for three days. Yep. And drove home. That sounds awesome. And I would, you know, I would just like, I'd play a side event in the morning, go get lunch, come back, play a side event, and then go get dinner with people. Yeah. And then just, I did that every, all day for three days. It was and great. It sounds amazing. Exactly. You, <laughs> you, you get to spend time with friends. You get to enjoy your time. Uh, it's similar to basically just having an all-day VRD where you get yeah. to hang out, take breaks, swap out, <laughs> and, you know, we also get to drink the whole time. It's great. It's pretty incredible. It's it's like that, that thing that people talk about but nobody ever does. Vacation? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. People talk about that sometimes. I don't yeah. really know what that is. No. I have I've unemployment. I know about yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> that's... that's 
That's like, uh, what if you took ah, a vacation, but you couldn't go anywhere, and also you were unhappy all the time? Yes, <laughs> yes, that's that's what that is. I'm not sure who won that die roll, but some Cody won the die roll. Okay, fantastic. Cody definitely advantaged by getting to go first. Car oh, Crucible Wasteland? This Crucible city? Wasteland. Going to be interesting here. City of Traitors. Young oh, Mike Coast Tech Drinker. That's a... Oh. Meanwhile, Cody with a big old pile of nothing. Yeah. So that's that's a turn one hex drinker, turn two crucible. Yep. I if I'm Brandon, there's no way I pitch that, right? No, you gotta keep that hand. Yeah, that's insane. That's a great hand. That's one of the best hands this to hand his deck could probably produce. That's that's like a turn four level eight hex drinker. Yeah. If, if we decide to if, level it up to eight. If we level hex drinker. Yeah. We'll see I, if we level hex drinker or not. I guess we'll find out. Yeah. But Brandon in a strong position here, Cody Mulligating to six. A bunch of lands, a Wheel of Fortune, and a uh, Fable of the Mirror Breaker. Not really what he's looking for. Hey, look, that's got a wheel. <laughs> that's, that's, although, you know what's really bad? Uh, wheel when your opponent has Crucible. Yup, just pretty terrible. There's a Force of Negation. Uh, rain Freeze. Rain Freeze. Island. There's a Time Vault there, too. Okay. That's to the left of the Force. And Cody can gaze and try to find land drops here. Yep, getting rid of the vault. Because there, other than gaze, which I think he wants for dig, he didn't have a card to pitch to force. Yeah. And honestly, forcing that crucible on two seems real strong. That's going to be huge if that plays out the way we think it will. Yeah. But I'm sure we're going to see turn one island otherworldly gaze from Cody here. There's also a grindstone. Ooh. All righty, turn one, island to go. Oh, that's a strip. sweet draw. No, no, don't, don't, don't throw it out there. You go for hex drinker, son. Well, I mean, if if only he knew what was in Cody's hand, yeah, he might true. consider it. Yeah, but uh, the the right play here, of course, I I think is to to drink the hex. No, oh, Brandon, aggressive strip mine. I suppose with the uh, yeah. with the the multi six. Yeah. It's, it's now possible. playing the aggressive, I'm going to pressure your mana from the start. Yes. Oh, three lands. Okay, that's okay. a sick rip. All right, so... Oh, no, that's two lands LED. and an LED. One of those was a fetch land. Yes. So I guess, do we put... If he puts the fetch land on top, maybe it's only one land. Yeah, I, it's just a question of whether he wants to, you know, leave LED in the deck, put LED in the yard. Yeah. Where does he want that to live? I on the breach plan? Who knows? And it looks like Cody wants to draw two lands in a row, I think, the way he ordered that, which I yeah. think is pretty sensible. Oh, he has Servant in his hand, too. So he has Grindstone oh, okay. Servant. Oh, okay. So he drew the fetch land, but he can just hang on to it. He doesn't yeah, have he, to crack it. He can it. hang on to it if, if indeed it was a second land. It looked like it, but it may not have been. I think it was. Yeah. Ooh. Oh, that's huge. That's just Crucible now. Ooh, that's pretty big. Brandon now with something to think about. Does he want to play Coast Hex Drinker or does he want to play City Petal Crucible? I know what I'd do, and it involves City of Traders, but hey. Brandon taking the more circumspect Now 4-0 and live for the sweep. Oh, and we're going Petal wow. here. Interesting. Brandon exposes the Lotus Petal here, drops the Hex Drinker, and falls to 19, theoretically. Are you know. we going to force this? Okay, and wisely chooses not to force. Well, he I think he only has force of negation. Oh, he yeah, can't right. hit the, the hex Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I don't think... Yeah, Brandon ought to be at 19. So, Levi, uh, or Absolute Rages, Jeff is on a oh, demonic consultation list, basically. It's demonic consultation, lab man... And some wheel effects with Inverter and uh, Thoracle. He he basically drafted a Thoracle deck that also sides into Phyrexian Dreadnought Stifle. If I had my way, Jeff would play the rest of his matches in the feature match area. Yes. We need to get him there. Yes, we do, because he is uh he is he's really tearing it up today. 4-0 already. Really incredible. I think we just city level. Yeah. I don't think there's any reason to aggressively pursue Crucible here. Especially not given that the only available target is this this fetch land. Like we yeah. can we can put ourselves in a very foolish situation 
Or, or we can simply level the hex drinker. There yeah, it is. There we go. Brandon, Brandon, you know, Brandon will make mistakes as we all will, but Brandon has learned from his mistakes last round. His mistake not yeah. leveling hex drinker aggressively enough says he's gonna get to go ahead and okay, slam. Okay, so we draw board. the second. Yep. We crack the fetch. Yep. Some nice tight play from Cody. Painter stone get you. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Jeff's deck is particularly a potential game changer because Thor has yeah. gotten a lot of talk, but it hasn't really showed up, and no one really forced him yet. Yes, no. I, I, I was saying to Mark outside that I think that the Thoracle Demonic Consultation archetype is really underrepresented, and it's just just has just gone un, undrafted. And I I have a I have a list spec'd up for it, so I'm very oh. excited to see. Oh, ho, 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 baby! Yeah, I I think. And this, this is actually one of the reasons that I think this format is more similar to CEDH than Vintage. Yes, I agree. Because combos like that are where CEDH lives right now. Um, well, someone did draft Tasha's and Persistent Petitioners for the transformative sideboard. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I was in the bug list. Yeah, that was a yeah. good deck list. Oh. No, 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 no. Uh. I Oh, no, that's wrong. Uh. So we're going to sack here. We're going for Karn. Okay. Oh, okay. To shut him off, which eats the force of negation and the brain freeze. Yep. Which is fine. Because we can wasteland... Yeah, we can wasteland the, the, Vulk, the Vulk, right? And then he's off of... Yep, yeah, Karn exiled. is exiled. That's correct. Yeah, no, I agree with this. You wasteland the volcanic. Yeah. And now Cody has one mana. Yes. And Lion's Eye Diamond. Yep. Cody falls to 11. And he cracked his fetch. Yep. Yeah. Th Thoracal is literally the like number one win con in CEDH right now. Yep. That's uh, the yeah. That's the way. That's the way you win games most of the time. If you are playing blue. That's okay. what we're trying to so do. We, and we have more land in our hand right now. Okay, yeah. Brandon's, Brandon's got more land. Can work his way back up to Crucible Mana and get things back there, but for now... Next turn, I'll have Crucible up. Now, the thing is, Cody's just one man away from Painter. Right. So we're, we're almost just there at this point. Brandon playing the Tide Channel Pathway here. Oh, we're leaving blue up for mystical. Yep. Doesn't really need to level here. Not not a difference between level three and level four. Yeah. But goes ahead and does level up to four anyway. Cody falls to seven off the hex drinker attack. Brandon holding up mana for that mystical tutor so that he can get something. Yeah. Presumably a memory lapse or something in response to whatever Cody does, which I assume is going to be land servant. Oh, no, no. Brandon says, you know what? Level five. Okay. Level five, which for those of you that are old D&D players, <laughs> was the most important level in the 3.5 rule set because yes. you got everything at level five. That's where all the goodies happened, and that was if you were going to multi-class. If you were going to play two classes, you went 15-5. Yep. Uh, yeah, so he's. it looks like we're mathing here. Cody not possessed of quite enough mana to play the painter. Land. Level, Level up. up. Kill you. Or wait, does that bring him does that, that brings it to bring eight. To one? Because he's an eight eight. Oh. Oh, it's a six six. Oh, okay. oh six six. Okay, yeah. Oh, then he wouldn't have won that, that yeah, other yeah, game. You're that right. Yeah, okay. I thought it was an eight eight for some reason. All right. Well, that changes our evaluation slightly of the previous game. Yes, Hagen, that is correct. 14-5 and 1 for Monk for the saving. Phase. Yes, yes. And the speed, right? And the speed, yep. Or is that Barbarian with the speed? I don't know. You get the, yeah. the, the Monk The monk saving throws were sweet. Yeah. Okay, so so Brandon ultimately decided not to level up. Um, Cody has one turn. That's a land. It's a land. So that gets us... 
Servant, and then we sack LED to activate. But Brandon has Emrakul in this deck. Oh, that's true. So it doesn't Ooh, actually yeah. matter. Yeah. Unless he sideboarded out Emrakul, which he, I'm sure he did he not. Didn't. He didn't. I would not guarantee he did Also, not. this is game one. He can't have sideboarded out oh, Emrakul. Yeah, true. <laughs> I just realized, wait a minute, this is game yeah, one. This I, is game one. I live in a very confusing dimension where I came into the booth halfway <laughs> through a match yeah. and don't know what's happening in my life. Brandon Has says, sure. Okay. Hang on. Hang on. I don't know who won that game. I mean, Brandon's allowed to concede. If he did make a mistake and concede, he did. But I do want to know who won that game. Yeah. We're going to go ahead and clarify that. Make sure we understand whether Brandon conceded. Okay, Cody is pointing to Brandon, saying that Brandon won. Yeah. Cody knows about the Emrakul. Okay, I think I understand the hand gesture. He showed his hand to make sure Emrakul wasn't in there. Ah, uh, he showed his hand to make sure Emrakul was not in the hand. Of course, very important. If Emrakul is in the hand... Brandon is uh, is is dead, but if but if Emrakul is in the deck where it belongs, as we knew it was, then Brandon lives, which he did, so he won. So Brandon up one here. Let's think a little bit about these deck lists and see what we might find that might help out Brandon bringing in the nimble obstructionist. Let's take a look at Brandon's list here. Field. Deck lists. Haha. Okay. We have, yes, we have the uh, various potential sideboard cards here. Uh, Dovin Hand of Control obviously makes those artifacts cost a lot more. Yeah. Definitely something he'd probably be interested in. We saw him flash the uh, Obstructionist. <laughs> Definitely very yep. helpful here. That's. I kind of like Arcane Denial. I do too. It's just a cheap two mana counter spell that puts yeah. them off their their combo piece. Yeah, but that's probably what I'm looking at there. Yeah. And Cody, well, we're siding in the frenetic package. Yeah. He also almost always brings in fury. Yes, I think especially as Walker dependent mm -hmm. as Brandon's mm -hmm. list is, yeah. fury is incredibly good here for him. What do you think about back to basics in this spot? It's fine. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think the question is, what am I taking out for it? Right. Um, I'm not taking out... I might take out Fable of the Mirror Breaker. Um, I don't think I'm deviating from the artifact plan. Right. I, I, there's no interaction on Brandon's side for that. I no. You know, I don't think you take out Vault Key. Certainly not. Probably Grindstone Servant if you have an extra slot, obviously, because that's yes. cool staying in. Right. Um, because the thing is, the the cards that back to that you really care about on Brandon's deck, to me, are Thespian Stage Dark Depths. Mm, mm -hmm. Those are the non basics I care about, and they don't matter to back to basics. Right. Although he does have a lot of duels. In That's what list. I'm thinking. Yeah. It's just like being able to shut the him off. Pain most lands, of his mana. The painlands, the pathways. Like he has a decent amount of stuff in there. Yeah, I think I think it's I think it's very possible. Just gonna get caught back here for a bit. I think it's very possible we see back to basics here. Yeah. I like Chain, too. Yeah. Chain's got a lot going on here. Chaining Emrakul or Hexdrinker in response to an activation. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, the fact that it hits the walkers. Right. Is Hitting huge. the walkers is what I was thinking. You can't yeah. hit Emrakul, right, because it's got protection. Oh, yeah. Yeah, right, right. Yeah. yeah. It's got that protection ability. But, yeah, I, you know, I think, I think the, yeah, the, the, the Fury, the Treasure Package, and yeah. the Back to Basics is probably what I'd be looking at. Take Probably out, taking out the breach package. The, take out potentially the breach, and definitely the uh, yeah. painter package. You take out the the two painter package cards. You take out the fable. Yep. And then you just pick one other card that you're not in love with, and you take yeah. that out. Could be LED. Yeah. I yeah. If you're taking out breach, I don't think you run LED anymore. Yeah. I think PO is still fine. It's just like a reasonable value card yeah, in the list. It's just a good card to yeah. play. Because uh, I forget, does Pentad Prism sack when you remove the last? Nope, sticks okay, around. Yeah, so you can reuse that off yeah. an Oxical. That's another reason it's yeah. so wonderful with Urza, right? It just yeah. sticks around on your board. Pentad Prism, a perennial favorite around here. Uh, yeah. Gets played a lot in our, in our St. Lotus drafts. Pretty much everybody likes it. Yeah. It goes in all manner of artifact decks. I played it in my... Uh, Online VRD 
uh, artifact combo deck yep. that I really liked. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Sleepy time, apparently. You said you were well caffeinated. What happened? <laughs> I was, and then this <laughs> happened. I should have I should have gotten one of those monsters. Yeah. I'm sure I'll find some cold coffee around here or something. Yeah, there's there's nitro cold brew. For those of you that are watching, we do something kind of unique here at St. Lotus. So our buy-in for our vintage rotisserie draft, we like to use what we call a Lupe Fiasco buy-in, which is food or liquor. <laughs> so it's fifty dollars in food and or liquor. Uh, there is obviously an age restriction now because of that. And as long as you do that, that's your buy-in, and those prizes are drafted at the end. So the first place picks two prizes. Okay, here we go. We've got Obstructionist. We have a Hex Drinker again. Is that... We've got Soul Ring. Ooh. We've got Mox Diamond. We have a lot of... And that's a Time Vault. There is a ton of fast mana in Cody's hand. There's also an Academy in that hand, it looks yeah. like, on the left there, and a Tinker. Oh, man. This is what? really good. What? This... this Yeah, this... It, it, Cody loves it. Cody loves yeah. his hand. He needs us all to see it. Yeah, you you don't not... Yeah, that is a Tinker wait, with an Academy, have, a wait, Diamond, a Soul Ring, a Vault. Does he have a land to get the process started, or does he have to discard Academy to Mox Diamond? Oh, that's a good question. I didn't see if he had a land to get it started. It looked like maybe there was a lot of action in there and not How a lot of lands does, other than Academy. Is Mox Diamond as an additional cost, or is it a sack now? Can you so, tap to land an Academy in response to produce a mana? So Mox Diamond requires you to discard the land from your hand. Okay. So um, uh, so I wasn't sure if it was an ETB trigger now or if it was an additional uh, cost. No, so it's it's a it's a replacement effect that changes how Mox Diamond enters the battlefield. As oh, it's okay. entering, you may discard a land, and basically if you do, you get Mox Diamond, and if you don't, you don't get Mox Diamond. Okay, is it countered or do you sack it? I believe it just goes to the graveyard instead. Oh, okay. Let's take a look at the yeah. article text on Mox Diamond, because I know the practicality of what happens. Ah, yes, so if Mox Diamond would enter the battlefield, you may discard a land card instead. If you do, put Mox Diamond onto the battlefield. If, if you not, don't, put, put it, it in, in the graveyard. Okay, graveyard. yeah, so... So there is no response window there right. to tap. There again. used to be some vague nonsense yep. with Mox Diamond, but it does look like... It does look like Cody is priced into discarding the Academy to uh, to Mox Diamond here. You can see him sort of uh, getting ready to shove those cards into the battlefield. Brandon, meanwhile, looking at Crucible, Dovin, Show and Tell, Emrakul, and, and three lands. And I can't tell what the far left card is. I think that's Blightsteel. It is. Oh, that Tinker is actually really rough here. Tinker is very bad. Oh, this hand's a lot worse than we thought it was. Yeah, this hand is not good. Oh, oh no. no. Cody. It is so good. Why do you do this? <laughs> I, understand. Yeah. I understand, though. You want to you play your turn one Soul Ring off your Mox Diamond. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's right. Brandon yep. pitching the Crucible away. Going to go for the turn three show and tell him we're cool. Try to win that way. Mox Diamond discarding Academy. <laughs> Everyone's very sad. Make a Soul Ring. Play a time vault. Go ahead. But we have Tinker Key. <laughs> we do have Tinker for Key. Ooh, Brandon's in trouble. That's a dress down. That's not bad. Yeah, that's not bad. Dress down, of course, going to affect the creatures that we see on the battlefield. Not going to affect uh, any of Cody's permanents right now, though. No. Yeah, so I guess if we have Tinker Key, it's still a decent hand, just not as good as if he had had an yeah. extra land. So, so we're, we're going to Tinker here. Tinker. We're going to sack Diamond? Okay. I mean, I guess, yeah. That yeah, it's, I mean, it's our only you have source no mana colored advantage. mana, but... Yeah. Manifold Key. Yep. We're going to draw into a win condition and kill you. Yep, eventually, you know, eventually we'll just cast Blightsteel, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And it says, okay. I, have I, I, want to, I want them to play this out. Yeah. I want it played out. I want to see how <laughs> this game ends. <laughs> it's gonna, it would certainly take Cody a minute to win, but uh, eventually I think I it don't, does. I don't want to just see, all right, I win. Untap. Oh, look at that. And of all the people who might force Cody to play these turns. Brandon is the one. <laughs> who unfortunately did not draft Mesmeric Orb after saying, you know, Mesmeric Orb is my anti-time vault. Cast this, draw a card, look at it, and cry. No! Make him play it out! <laughs> I want to see how he wins! Well, 
we're not going to find out. He's going to win by concession. And we're going to go to game three. So we're going to see Brandon on the play this time. Cody taking that one down with a little bit of vault key action. That hand turned out to be quite good. I really wish that concession was sorcery speed here, just so I could see how that plays out. <laughs> I just I want to see how he did it. I'm sure uh, I'm sure we can reconstruct the game state yeah. afterwards, and and he can show you. Yeah. Oh, show and tell coming out. Interesting. Huh. I that's, guess blight steel is a bad thing to have your opponent show and tell. That's true. Mystical tutor coming out as well. All right. So what is coming in for those? Well, Brandon will show us. He's been very conscientious about that. Yeah, he's that. very good about that. Cer certainly not Mycos and Flavis. That lives in the sideboard. Boy, does it. <laughs> really good here, too. Oh, that's yeah. a memory lapse. So we have a memory lapse coming Okay. In. Maybe the denial, too. Have to assume. If that's not already in. Yeah. Brandon. Oh, the denial's, denial's already in there. Brandon that's taking... a river in Egypt. <laughs> <laughs> not just. Brandon staring <laughs> down some of his favorite cards here. Fast he does love fast bonds. Yeah. One of his pet cards, something that he's willing to pick basically in any circumstance for any reason. Yep. As long as he can get it, he's there. Oh, yes. Just taking a moment to think through each of his cards. Meanwhile, Cody has just sort of uh, slammed his deck on the battlefield and says, I have what I have. Yep. We'll figure it out. We're boarded. Yep. We're going to stay the way we are. Brandon's still messing around with it, looking at that worldly tutor, thinking about Emrakul. Yep. Got to keep the Emrakul in against against Painter, even though Cody may have boarded out Painter. Yeah. So a weird little game. Oh, Brandon, what, what are Brandon we doing? is going to board out oh. the Emrakul. He's doing it. Interesting. That's what's coming out here. All right. So, and no, oh, we're reconsidering. Back in it goes. Looking at a crab. <laughs> this is quite the process here. Brandon's really, really making us wait for it. Really making us think about this one. Yeah. The, it's, it, it reminds me of, you know, in the old PTQ format, when you would stay up until three in the morning. Yeah. The night before, figuring out your sideboard. Mm -hmm. Agonizing over it to sh knowing or not knowing, that the percentage points you were losing in your matchups by not sleeping yep. were not made up by your sideboard <laughs> options. Not in the least. At that, there's there's a point at which, if you you know, the later you go, it's like, well, I could just not have a sideboard tomorrow. Go to sleep now. And probably be better <laughs> off than if I agonize over this sideboard for the next five hours. Yes. Oh, the decisions we make when we think that we're capable of, uh, of doing things on, on no sleep. And as someone who frequently does things on no sleep, yes, it doesn't work. It's a bad idea. It is real bad. For example, right now. <laughs> right now, I'm not operating on nearly enough sleep. And yet here I am talking about these wonderful games of Magic the Gathering. That's why I'm not that's why I'm glad I'm not playing. I'm like, I don't have to I don't have to think about winning games. I just have to talk about cards. Yeah. Great. What a good deal. I think Brandon may have chosen to keep the Emmer cool here. It looks like he did put it back in. I think so. Which is good. Um, but show and tell may have just been cut, so we'll see we'll see if that ends up rotting in his hand or what the deal is with that. But we will see Brandon going first here. Okay. Opening up on some sweetness. We've got Lotus, we've got Channel, we've got <laughs> we've got Strip Mine, we've got Dovin. Yep, I mean that hand sure does a whole lot of nothing. It does. It does a lot of nothing, but uh, especially when there's a ragavan on the other side. Oh my gosh! And a muddle. Oh wow! I I I, I think Brandon's going to get punished by this ragavan. Yeah. Oh, Grimonolith with muddle. Oh yeah. Yep. It's quite the hand there's, for Cody. There's there's too much over on the other side. You you can't. This does nothing. If if that. If any of those cards except for Channel were an Emrakul. Yes. Sand would be the easiest keep of all time. Yeah. I just turn one Emrakul kill you. 
We're, we're done here, right? Yeah. All right, cool. It's been swell. Strip mine, Lotus, Lotus into Dovin. Turn one. Sure doesn't Brandon. do a lot against a Ragavan. Not so good against everyone's favorite monkey friend. Oh, he pulls the Ragavan out like, uh, sure, whatever. <laughs> I mean, sure, Dovin prevents it from doing damage, but also Brandon is just doing nothing from here on out. Yeah. He Could has he... Oboro, Fetchland, Channel, Land, I think? Yes. Um, Borrow fetch land channel misty, I believe is what yeah, we're looking stri at. Yeah, strip is also really bad when your opponent has a ragavan that makes treasure tokens. Yes. Now, of course, let's take a quick look at ragavan. Nimble pilferer. Yes, I did. Um, of course, ragavan is contingent on dealing combat damage to the opponent, so Dovin yeah. is going to sort of hold that ragavan off just for a while. Just gonna keep it keep it locked up for a bit. Yeah. Ragavan gets dovened. We get five turns of no advantage out of it. And yes. We're gonna strip this land away. Strip mine the mountain and say go. Brandon did not have crucible in hand, I believe. No, not not in the yeah. least. So we're not going to see any kind of strip mine shenanigans here that we know of. Oh, tapping a blue for the Mopal. Yep. Dovin. Got to work through that Dovin tax. So Cody still managing to take game actions, putting a land in play, putting an artifact in play, making stuff work. Going to slowly build up a board here. Brandon thinking about cracking the fetch, decides not to, draws memory jar. You do have better percentages to hit a land without cracking the fetch. Ah, uh, Yes. Hello, Twitch chat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why didn't you crack the fetch? Because better percentage. Deck thinning. Yeah. <laughs> uh, if only, if only you could see all the graphs I've seen Frank Karsten make about oh, the deck. Oh God, I know. Oh yeah, yeah. Mono severance should be in every deck. It, it, it's <laughs> great. Format, yeah, yeah. Just, yeah. Mana severance in every format. You love to see it. Just the best card that 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 is that, that is available. I used to play Mana Severance in casual formats. Just like card's great when I was when I was like fourteen. I, was, I I just had you know a mono blue combo deck that I would play in multiplayer games, and I would just Mana Severance myself once I had enough lands to be like, all right, now my deck is combo pieces and counter spells. Get at me. Good luck, everybody. <laughs> I was a real nice kid. It's, um, it's been swell. Hey, look, I, <laughs> I still contend to this day Winter Orb is the most fun card in Magic because Magic is fun and Winter Orb lets you play more Magic. Yeah. I, I had a great time playing against Winter Orb uh, against Brandon in the finals of ERD7. Yep. Didn't win. Had a great time. Yeah. <laughs> Dovin going down to two, locking down Ragavan. Brandon now on three lands, approaching the idea that he might ever do something with his Magic the Gathering cards here. Cody pokes his Mox Opal and says... I believe in you, Mox Opal. One day you'll do something. Maybe. Maybe, perhaps. Oh, oh! it uh, lets Talarian Academy tap for one. Talarian Academy now just Boom. as good as a Vanilla Island Arid Mesa going to get sacrificed, bring Cody down to 19. Cody presumably, presumably grabbing some sort of mountain or mountain accessory here. Yes, I agree, hyphenated. But even more fun than that is enter the dungeon. Yes. Because it's the same thing, but I get to go under the table. I, I have a vivid memory of uh, of en Enter the Dungeon being played uh, at one of the like, I so I or more accurately I was I was managing the spell slinging at Grand Prix Vegas yeah and that involved you know a bunch of wizards employees and so on and, yeah uh, you know one one of the people playing against one of the wizards employees had said do you mind if I play uncards in this deck yeah you know, Psy Master Thopters coming down and you know they were like no no, no that's fine that's cool. And so, uh, ten minutes later, I walk by, and you know, one of the designers is is under the table playing magic yep. with some kid. They're yep. like, "Enter the dungeon." <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> don't know what to tell you. <laughs> Look, we're under the table. So what the card yeah. said. I'm like, "No, this is where you're supposed. You're you're playing by the rules." Yeah, this is exactly where you need to be. <laughs> Thank you for following the yeah. rules. <laughs> I uh, had a friend that had a casual Sherazad deck. Oh yes, and Drelnok was his only win condition. Oh my god! Because Cthulhu Yeti. That's yes. literally the only reason why. Hall Breacher coming down. Oh, okay. On end step. I like it. If only there was a wheel effect to back it up. If only. Oh, that was a worldly tutor. There is a uh, memory jar and a uh, and a city traders in hand. So what we're gonna see 
is the results of memory jar hole breacher here. Yep. This is beautiful. Oh, this is brutal. With a worldly tutor, no less. Oh, yes. So we're just going to worldly get a bunch of treasures, hard cast Amrakul. I love you. this. Cody says, all right, I'm going to set my hand aside. Should do it on end step, so he has to discard it. But whatever, that's fine. It's okay. Yeah. So Hull Breach locked Cody out of drawing. Brandon gets seven triggers, gets to draw a full new hand of seven cards. There's and a decide. Crop Rod, a Hex Drinker, a Dress Down, a Crucible. Oh With the Strip Mine out. And is that Fast Bond? Does he have Crucible Fast Bond? He does. Oh, wow. So he's just going to strip Cody out of land. This now. game's over. Yeah, this, this is over. Fast Bond going to come down for Brandon, bring him down to six treasures. Brandon's going to spend a little life, but he doesn't care at all. Yeah, he also gets Hex Drinker out of it, which oh is pretty gosh. solid. Yeah, because he can level Hex Drinker, too, to give it protection from instance. Yeah. He'll go down. Oh, no, I guess he only gets two levels out of it, but still. Uh, I mean, he's going to have City of Traitors in his graveyard. It just depends how much life true. he wants to Yeah, spend. that's true. <laughs> But he, so he can easily he do City of City. Traders Strip Mine to yeah. generate as much mana as he wants, really. Yeah, so the city does get sacked here since we played Yav Coast. Yep. Crucible. Strip, strip, strip. I'm going to go grab that city just so we know. Oh, yes. John and Bree, thank you for the follow. We appreciate it. We are in... In the midst of some exciting action here, Brandon Curry is going off with Fast Bond here, getting ready to just blow up everything Cody holds dear. Cody, of course, lost all his lands just now to Crucible Strip Mine Fast Bond. Brandon still with four treasures and the ability to turn his life into colorless mana at a pretty decent rate. And Brandon. And a worldly tutor returning to hand with channel after this. Yes. Which means, okay, Brandon Brandon figured out his life total, or more accurately, Cody figured out Brandon's life total for him. That's fine. We figured it out. We're negotiating. We agree now. All right, good. Bargain struck. Bargain uh, struck. Good luck. <laughs> I don't know what you're going to do. Oh, snap, wrong account. <laughs> Well, I mean, you could just follow us on both accounts, right? There's yeah, no harm we're there. not mad at it. That's that's fine by me. Forest coming down off of the Misty. Yeah, cruise, uh, City of Traders Fetch Land uh, uh, accomplishes much the same stuff, but does also drain your life quite a bit faster. Yes, exactly. So the, the better play is to play, play City of Traders, strip mine your own city, Yep. And then repeat over and over again, responding to the city trigger when you play strip mine by strip mining your own city. Yeah. A thing that I've never done before, but apparently just figured out. Yeah. I feel good about okay, that. Okay, so here's here's two levels into Hex Drinker. So yep. we're going to get a 6-6. Six, six. Um, I guess we, what, seven levels is yeah. what we can get here? That's pretty good. I think we're fine. No, we don't. Don't cast rest down, Brandon. Don't do that. Don't cast crop rod either. You don't need that card. Don't don't do any of these things. Just make your hex drinker big. Yes. Deny your opponent all of their mana. Make your hex drinker huge. Uh, Brandon choosing the path of most resistance here. As was foretold. <laughs> As foretold. Something else that nobody got this time. Oh, yeah. We didn't see that. Nobody nobody decided to do that. Brandon going to go down to 10 here, playing the Misty. Bet he sure wishes he had a Zurin Orb right now. Going to lose that City of Traders. Going to replay that City of Traders. Go down to 9. Tap it for 2. Level up Hex Drinker. Maybe. Uh, so we have Hex. 1, 2. There's 6 mana represented between City and Treasure Tokens. Yep. Hex Drinker up to four here. You just spend the treasure tokens and pass, right? Because you dove in one of his guys. Right. And then you have a pro everything blocker plus Hall Breacher. Yeah. Yeah, you don't need to spend the life doing fast bond shenanigans here. Yeah. 
Especially, I mean, I assume you want to Emrakul off that worldly tutor since you can. Yes. So maybe you just don't level, you give it protection from instance, make it bigger than his stuff. Yep. And use all of that mana with the treasure tokens next turn mm. to get your Emrakul. Yep. Save some life on the old channel. Yeah, that makes yeah. sense. Gonna dove in your Ragavan. That's correct. Dovin does tick down, though. Thank you, Cody. Brandon thinking about leveling the Hex Drinker. He says, no, I'm not going to do that. Yeah, so we have 13 mana with everything. Yes. That he has right now. And Ember Cool's 15? Yes. Okay, so we'd need to pay two life or city. Yeah. Basically. Um, so we're going to pay two. Why are we doing this? We were thinking about dress down. Yeah, that we've changed our mind. Yeah, I th thank you for thinking better of it. <laughs> Just discard the cards. You don't need to use all those cards. Brandon in an interesting position here where he has an embarrassment of riches and and may just be confused about what to do just because there's so many options. If you're if you're if you're actually in this game, sitting in it and playing yeah. in it, I think it's it's harder than oh, yeah, it is for, for sure. us, for yeah, sure. Definitely. I just always like to point that out. Yeah. Looks like we're rotating what? the what? crops, what? sacrificing the city. Yeah, there we okay. go. All right. We're rotating our crops. What are what are we grabbing? Thespian stage. Thespian stage. Okay. All right. I see you. Oh, yeah, because we can worldly tutor for a land, too, and then we can... Mm. We've got two combos now. Worldly tutor, of course. Oh, no, oh, no it's just creatures. creatures. Okay, right. yeah. No, because Living Wish is both. Living worldly Wish tutor is the is one that's one. both, right. Yep. We've got Living Wish and yep. Worldly Tutor in this draft. One of those cards is different than the other. Yes. City of Traders coming on back. Brandon down to eight. Going to tap for three. Get a level up Hex Drinker. Good, okay. There we go. Now we have so many options, but importantly, a pro everything hex drinker that is a six six. Hex drinker is here, level going to go oh, up he's level to, seven. He'll be eight. Going after to go this. up level eight after this. Uh, this island comes in. Island's going to get used to make hex drinker big. Going to be an eight eight or six six protection from everything on level eight. Yes, tap it. Good. There we go. And uh, I'm happy to report that Brandon's deck has finally done everything he could ever dream it would do. Yes, he has done the thing, <laughs> officially. We are in there like swimwear. <laughs> Cody gets his hand back. Brandon gets his hand back. Cody goes to draw for a turn and thinks, well, what am I going to do about this? I really don't have a lot of options. I've got a Frenetic and Freet in my hand. That's a Fury. Ooh, okay. It has... No effect on a hex drinker. Hex drinker's got <laughs> protection from that. Yeah. <laughs> like most things, hex drinker has protection from that. Yes. Now, interestingly, one of Cody's outs is to confuse Brandon into thinking that killing himself with Oboro is a good idea. That is actually a play here. <laughs> uh, if, if we get ruined, Crab, thank you, Phyrexian Potato. Appreciate the follow. Uh, if, if we get this... <laughs> God damn it, Mark. <laughs> no. Oh, end step. Worldly Tutor. What are yep. we getting? Did, I don't know. Did he leave Emrakul in? Yeah, we There's, find out. There's okay. the Emrakul. There's the Emmy. And, uh, yeah, that's very castable here. Yeah, that's game, baby. <laughs> Yeah, there's uh, there's no getting that from under this. Brandon's going to get uh, get plenty of time to use Hex Drinker and Emrakul to kill Cody after getting the free turn off casting Emrakul the hard way. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Some more over there. The treasures. And yeah, with the treasures, it's ten and... fast bond for city because you can tap yep. city, play the fetch land, play city, crack the fetch land, play city. Yep. Four, five, six. Seven, eight. And then two with the treasures is ten. Nine, ten. Are we going to channel? Don't do it. You're dead to lightning bolt, which he doesn't have. <laughs> doesn't have, can't cast. Yeah. <laughs> no fire blast either. All right, we're going to channel. We're going to channel, whatever. Boom, got him. Is this? Can he channel? 
He's got green, I assume. Right, but... He has treasures. The life. The life problem. Oh, yeah, no, he can't. He dies. He's going to die. He's gonna. He, I believe he exactly kills himself if he tries he to channel He does exactly here. kill himself with channel. Okay, Brandon realizing that, starting to do yep. things with Misty Rainforest. Uh, starting to count. <laughs> He's trying to figure out how to math this out. Cody helpfully letting him know, if yeah. you do that, you'll die. <laughs> yep. You are welcome to cast channel for seven, my friend. I will allow that to happen. The, the honorable... Cody here, not going to not going to just take the win that way. <laughs> this is this is no PTQ. I've I've yeah you know were this a PTQ and my opponent tried to channel themselves to zero, I would happily accept yeah. their offer. However, this is not that. Brandon there plays the Emrakul after some uh, shenanigans. <laughs> F- Fury Prismari Command gotcha. There was no fetchable land, that's why he didn't go for the Misty. If you couldn't figure that out. Oh okay. ah okay. There's no fetchable land. Yeah. Uh, so we had to cast the channel. Okay. Or That's why he picked up the Misty. Oh, okay. Sack the city of traders. Yep, and then replay the city. Yes, but that only gets to 14, not 15, because there is no fetchable land with the Misty. So that's how he channels without spending all seven of his life. Okay, Okay. that makes sense. Uh, The other option, of course, as discussed previously, strip mine your own uh, city of traders and replay that a bunch. A line which somebody should maybe tell Brandon about. Yeah. <laughs> All right, but Cody takes that one down to go up to two and two. Or Brandon takes that one down going up to two and two. Cody falls to one and two after that match. Um, at this point, I think we should take a short break so I can do yes. some things not in this room. And yes. And some, some, some number of us will come back. Indeed, for we are going to take a break, and we will be back in just a couple seconds. Minutes, probably, realistically. Yes. All right, we are back on cast. We just need to update our overlay, and that should happen shortly. So welcome, everybody, to round doesn't matter. Yeah, whatever round it is, uh, Jason and Peter, Peter slash Thirsty slash Reptar, yep. respectively. So, so we have 
Dan, no, not Dan. We have who, who we have on stream. We have Cody, Cody who we've seen and before. Blyden, and Blyden, who we have not seen and is thus far, I believe, undefeated. He's, uh, that is what I've heard. Blyden yeah. is just tearing it up with this deck, with this Thoracle list. Yes. So while uh, they're still pretty, shuffling, we'll bring pretty this up sick, quickly. Yeah. I have actually seen <clears throat> Blyden play this deck off stream a little bit. I think uh, two rounds worth, and it is. Really interesting to see. There's a number of ways that, as you would expect, he can win at instant speed in his draw step. I've seen him win with Thoracle, and I've seen him win with Labman. And there's been a lot of hope in some of these matchups because to go off that early means you have to forsake your protection. Exactly. But, but he, it can definitely be done. Uh, I saw him beat Mason a couple... Both games that he beat Mason, he did it on the back of Cabal Therapy. Literally okay. just by having the information that was in his hand, and yes. then it was Shadow Mage Infiltrator in response, Demonic Consultation, you were already dead. Okay, yeah, I, ha I basically just saw all the combo pieces work, yeah. and I think it was a, t a turn three kill thanks to Aluren. Yeah. Actually, yeah. that's what I saw off camera. Uh, and that, that was one of the things that I had mentioned when he picked the Aluren. Uh, oh, we oh, just yeah. missed his opening hand. Oh, well. But I, I do want to... Was how symmetrical Aluren is and how it can actually be bad in some matchups. Yes. We don't because of the symmetry. Yes, then it was, uh, he uh, dropped JVP and Shadow Mage Infiltrator in, yeah. uh, clocked with the Infiltrator, uh, played the, the Witch, Divining Witch, yeah. off of Valurin, and then on tap, cast Oracle in response to Divining Witch for a card that oh, isn't in his seal. list. Hello. Oh, yeah, this looks like we're going for it. Yeah. We're setting up. Well, again, he, the nice thing about this format is you have perfect knowledge of what somebody's main board yes. is. Yes, yeah. Everyone has access to all of the deck lists all the time. You know what kind of control magic you're going against. You know what kind of matchup it is. Mm -hmm. You know when, in this case, you need to play a fast game plan because you're going against a Time Vault, Grindstone, Blightsteel list. Yes, yeah, uh, and everything list. I uh, was talking to Cody, and I, I let Cody know that thus far today, round one, game one was the hardest game I've had to cast because he had half of everything and yeah. he very much <laughs> sighed in his seat and said yes. Yes. <laughs> but one Underworld Breach finished every piece of the combo in that game, despite the, despite the fact that uh, things were a little messy if you were going to say, uh, what combo we, can we complete? It was very yeah. hazy, but Painter, Painter, your servant was in the graveyard, Grindstone was on board, Underworld Breach solves that problem. Yeah. It also solves the... I can kill you with LED on board if I can find the brain freeze. So we might be going for a fast painter grindstone here. or just one mono away. Yeah. We don't... Blue. Blue. Okay, okay. interesting. I it's, guess we have force of negation. If we have force of negation in hand for protection... It's also... The, it, between main and side, this yeah. is... Blue is the only color that matters in the main. Fury is in the sideboard. So we oh, that's call, true, yeah. We don't yeah. need to call red. Yeah. Uh, all we need to worry about is whether or not Blyden has... Uh, blue Elemental Blast or Hydro Blast somewhere. Which we know he does not. He does not. Yeah. Nobody, the only blasts that were picked were when Alec got the reds on the wheel. Yes. And Unmask only requires a black card, correct? Yeah. So as long as you don't choose black, you're not you're really enabling Yeah, you're not Blyden. enabling anything extra because yep. Blyden doesn't have any of the pitch yep. blue so spells. We, we saw Blyden with the Serum Visions in an attempt to smooth things out. We have and there's an Urza. Urza. That's going to make a 3 3 construct. Now, Actually relevant here. Yeah, a real a, clock. A Dr. Pee Pee Poo Poo token. Yes. Who is now sadly off stream. But that was a good game. Yeah. Last round. Yeah, it was. Uh, a bunch of us were there when uh, to help him cast that Emrakul. Yeah, to figure it, out how to do it. It took the minds of several people yeah. to figure out the best line to cast that Emrakul, yeah. including Cody. Yeah, Cody. Yeah, Co Cody helping out was great. Oh, yes. and there's a Divining Witch. Yes. So we must be... Labman has to be in hand, basically, right? I would believe so, because Cody has Bolt, right? You wouldn't just raw Cody. dog this. There's Lightning Bolt in the list, yeah. Yep. You, wouldn't, yeah. you wouldn't just yeah, place he has. This. You wouldn't unless you had it On right the, away. Yeah. And there is a or little... Or Thoracle. Yeah, with one blue up, do we have... We have a little bit of protection with that UC in Miscast. Yeah. I don't want him to sweep... You know, it's... It's Wheel. The, do we have the miscast here? That's an... I think we do. We're going for it. No, Vamp. Vampiric Tutor, even better. He does have a lot of copies of Divining Witch. Yes. And there's a Force of Negation hard, hard cast. cast. Well, you have to on your yeah. turn. Oh, yeah, to do that's it. fair, yeah. The miscast was in hand. We chose not 
to fire off the miscast. Interesting. Went for the is, vamp tutor instead. I think that's a shadow mage infiltrate. That is Limdol's vault. Limdol's vault. Okay. Yep. So we, we had were, dig. So we were were we one mana short of going off next turn if we Limdol's vault. Yes, before we draw. needed land. Yeah. Or so. maybe we're two mana off. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I think at the end of the day, that might have just been an exercise in remove counter, counter spells. spell. Yeah. yeah. From I, I think that's what that was, honestly. And yeah. Because if you're if you're Jeff down to what like three four cards there. Yeah. Fine. I'm okay drawing seven. I will force you, however, to counter this vampiric tutor because you know. Yeah. I'm getting the other half of this combo. Yeah. And to Caterberg, Caterberg's point, it's not like I don't want Jeff to sweep because he's doing something. I'm not un- I'm not excited about. I'm very excited to see this happen. The only thing I'm not excited about is that there's no new cards in this. This isn't like new tech, right? Yeah. This... Everything that's going on is old tech. And it's not to say yeah. it's boring or bad. No, and, and it's it's interesting. Oh, yep, we're taking the grindstone and an underworld breach and uh, a bolt and a paradox. Oh wow, we have everything. So with this duress. If we breach, okay. you just breach back grindstone. Yeah, right? is that the game? I think that is just game next turn. Okay, so let's breach is two. So let's just say effectively the soul ring, unearth grief. Okay, so we're getting both. Okay, that's how that's how we don't lose. Is yes, we, yeah, we get both. Yep. Okay, sure, that makes sense. Yeah, if he didn't have it, I'm pretty sure that that yeah. would have been game because yeah. two goes for breach. Let's just say that's a soul ring mana, and then you breach back the grindstone. So we would have been painter servant to tap the construct yep. to tap. So that's two plus the three lands. That's five plus extra land at hand is six. And we had yeah. we were uh, well over the thresholds to be able to win if there wasn't the second yeah. discard spell. Oh, Jeff, oh. take it, take it a photo of it. Yeah. Since since we are comparel, don't be a dick. Uh, you you are able to use your phone to take photos like that. Yeah, and it's also a nicety to Cody to maintain game state if Cody's used yeah. to playing at actual rel where you yeah. would just play heads up, you know? Yeah, we're not comp rel. If you want to use an electronic device, you have to stand up at the table. So Brian Kibler, please put your headphones in and stand yeah. up while you play Magic. Yeah, we're not, <laughs> we're not that level. Okay. Yeah. How many judge levels do we have here? Five? We have more judges than, than Mark's, I think. Mark's a two. Okay, so that's six. Levine's a three. You're yes, a one. That, that Dan's sense. a that's one. A six. That's seven. Uh, oh, Blyden's a one. Eight. Oh, we should have our own judge conference. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we, we could literally actually, and Hagen is a two as well. So we could actually have, if all of us were here, a judge conference just for us. Yes. Uh, so breakout cards, Chewy, we actually have a Thorical deck that works. And it's what's on camera now with Jeff. Yes. Uh Cody is like, if you could play Spanish Inquisition in VRD, that is what Cody's doing. It's all the combos all the time. Yep. Uh, per per Caterberg, we also have an Infect deck, and it is bonkers. still X one. Yeah, it is uh, still lost ridiculous. to Cody, right? I think so. Yeah. No, yeah. no, no. It lost to the Aluren matchup. Oh, okay, okay. It lost the Aluren matchup, yeah. which is the other deck we have. Uh huh. Yeah. We have a, an Orzov deck, which is basically Dead Guy L. Mm hmm. And oh, what's up, Kyle? Uh, I don't know how to describe Brandon's deck. Channel get you, I think. Yeah, it, it's a cheaty, cheaty, cheat fatties. That's what it is. It is cheat fatties, one thousand percent. Yeah, dot deck. Okay, so we have the lab man. So we have Bolt now for divining witch or lab man, which we know is in hand for Cody. Okay, so Jeff is. So we have to have Thoracle in hand as well. Yes. In order to run that lab man out. Well, even if we are not without deck, we are with deck. So if it's Bolt on Divining Witch, we have no free protection, right? We have no... That's fair, yeah. And we didn't get the Bolt. No. What is... Are we missing... Jeff can be lay levels beyond us in regards to what... Yeah, to what, especially what's going with... On. Jeff is one of the best CEDH players I've ever met. Uh, like, levels on levels of depth here. So it's possible that he may have... Both redundant pieces. Who knows? Oh, we got two coming in. Okay. Nope. Four. Yeah, no. Four coming in. That's a paradoxical. Okay. Ooh, that's a good one. Okay. So you return your rocks and your painter servant, right? So that's three cards drawn because you can't return the construct. Paradoxical outcome says so. Yeah. Did we float? Did we miss the float? Uh, no. 
Okay. We oh. did not, because he tapped the soul ring for the monolith, monolith. which Mo was used for the outcome. Yep, okay, so island monolith. So, so we don't have float, but we also haven't played a land yet this turn. So and if the we drew land, yes. soul ring, monolith, all right, we're back where we were. That's good. Okay. Jeff is at 14, and from what we've seen, let's say we don't cast the Pentad Prism, we can get Karnstruck up to a 3-3. Three, three. And I guess tapping the Cascade Bluffs answers the question that I was going to pose, which is, is it worth just tapping the Karnstruck for the blue to restart your chain? Yeah. The answer is, I guess, not. Okay. Yeah, it is interesting that he didn't tap the Karnstruck there to pay for it. There must and be more, like... Yeah. You know, we don't have perfect information. Yeah, we don't know true. what is in Cody's hand. Oh, snap. All right. Oh, got him. We still have Bolt Up, right? Show okay. do. So if we take a look at Cody's deck, we know Pentad Prism is in hand and Painter Servant. But you know what's not. The Grindstone's in the graveyard, so don't say that. Blightsteel. Correct. Yeah. Or Mana Fulky, but it doesn't win on the spot. So yeah. you're setting a Blightsteel for next turn if you go for that with Bolt. And I just... Kappa Kappa. 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 Kappa, Kappa Kenny. You actually, yes. Kappa Cannoneer is an artifact. It's an artifact creature. So you could, in fact, tinker for Kappa Cannoneer. And I, I, I have heard Cody malign not... Uh, taking Kappa Cannoneer actually over another card earlier in the day. Not in the draft, but in play. Yeah. So I think Cody's learning along the way where Kappa Cannoneer is good and where it is not. We, we passed by Mirage Mirror. We have Soul Ring. We have Monolith Soul... With Grindstone in the Graveyard. Unless this is LED, I think it has to be. It is not what it thought it has to be. Okay. Interesting. Are we short this this turn? No, we can do it Where this turn. Where is Monolith? Monolith is still in hand. We oh have my. not replayed Monolith. Oh my. Okay. So are we just going to uh, key vault our way out of this game? Okay. There's two. There's Pentad Prism for two. That casts a key. I mean, it cast a key before. Okay, so... Mm. Okay. So, I guess we're just bolting, right? We're, I we're all aboard the choo-choo hoping he doesn't have redundancy? Chugga-chugga? Oh, yeah, because we just bolt the lab man and we let him die to his activation. Yeah. You know the bolt is there, right? So we don't have to play that game. Yeah. All right, so... Um, Divining which has a cost. Okay, so we didn't activate because we didn't want to lose. So yeah. Jeff essentially Here's saying, the activation, I bet. Discard a card from your hand, name a card, and then you just exile your deck because you didn't find the name oh, card. We're, we're, looking at, we're looking at the hand. Wait, did he have Bolt? He sure did. Oh, 100% he had Bolt. Yeah, he's, you know what he still has? Bolt. Yes. Guaranteed. Yep, there we go. Sacking. Name a card. Room. Exile the top six and... One, two, three, four, five, six. Stacks of three. We named a card that... Yeah, okay. If we're going again, then we did not name a card in the list. And that no. Is the optimal... Yeah, so we, we are... We did name a card in the list then. He named Oracle. Oh, okay. Named we named Thoughts Oracle. Oracle. Yep, that makes sense. Okay. So we are... Thought Lash? There's Thoracle. Oh, that's kind of rough, honestly. I mean, I guess it's not that bad, because he can play a land and play Thoracle here. Yep. Yeah. Or Thoracle in response. Mm -hmm. Oh, we're going to consultation. consultation our way out of this? Yep. Oh, boy. And that's... We already used the force. Yep. We don't have counterspell. Woof. Yeah. That was game one. So, Leiden taking it down again. Yeah. Deck, deck is incredibly resilient. Yes. Although, granted, there's not a whole lot of counter magic outside of two decks. But I am curious to see how he does against Dan, because I don't believe they have played each other yet. Wait, is Dan on alert? Infect. Oh, Infect. No, I don't believe they have. Yeah. I know uh, Jeff beat uh, our Aluren player. Yeah. That that happened. Yeah, unless unless we missed something, which I don't believe we did, bolting the witch seemed like the play. But maybe maybe 
Cody just didn't know exactly what was in, in the list, so he didn't want to lose to consultation upkeep. Yeah. So you bolt the, you hold on for the, the lab maniac. But at that point in time, Jeff's showing redundancy, and you have to hope he doesn't have you have the redundancy. Yeah, yeah. right. Because if he has the consultation, once that thoracle's out, no matter what, it's game. Yeah, yeah, Jeff had backup for yeah. both pieces. Yeah. of what it comes down to, lab, laboratory maniac needed to be fished up with the divining witch. Yep, which was backed up by demonic consultation. Yeah, for for the win. So in that situation, when you have cons- when you have witch and you have lab man on board, if you bolt the witch, then you lose to demonic consultation, still in the unta- uh, in the upkeep. Yeah, right. Yeah, there, there there were no outs based on Cody's list. Sadly, yes, we're we're looking at hindsight, right? Yeah, because yeah, we yeah, knew yeah, he had, yeah, we yeah. knew at some yeah. point in time, yeah, <clears throat> it was either in the draw step or in hand was yeah. consultation. But if you're Cody and you're looking at the board, I don't think it's six to one, half a dozen to the other. I think you might just actually hit Lab Man. Yeah. And say, all right, go. Yeah. Draw the uh, or I'm going to kill you before you do. And then you put the life total under duress. Yeah. Okay, so, so Cody here definitely brings in Fury. Okay, yep. Let's go take a look at Cody's yeah. deck. Let's see what we got. So we bring in Fury. I think we may actually bring in the treasure combo. The treasure combo? Cavern Scoundrel, Frenetic Afreet, Psymaster Thopterus make infinite treasures. Okay, this is why he has fren- Frenetic Afreet. I hadn't looked at the sideboard. I yeah. just saw we were slaving cards, and I asked, is that the flip coin Afreet? Yes, because and- Cavern Scoundrel, whenever you flip, create two treasures. Yes. You can do it forever, so I am creating an arbitrary number of treasures. Yes. And I am creating an arbitrary number of Thopters. Here, and you're also Psy. creating an arbitrarily large Blastoise. Exactly. Here, yeah. Yes, okay. So it's it's just a little bit of redundancy that gives him a backup combo win. Uh, I He sided it in when he was siding out the painter combo. Okay. Was what he told me. So think, against Brandon. Yes, I think that... That came in. Yeah. Grindstone went out. That makes sense, though, because Brandon had the Eldrazi, right? I think... Yeah. I think we're still fine keeping the painter stuff in, so we might just look to cut somewhere else. I think the chain of vapor is also decent because if you have, yep. the more removal you have for yep. just redundancy, the better it is overall. I think the breach package comes out actually, which again is probably the like VRD package that I think suffers the most by being diluted. Yeah, I think there's also a question of how fast can Jeff go off, and I think the answer to that is turn three. So yeah. Breach is, yeah, a little too slow, but so is Fable of the Mirror Breaker, and so is Mirage Mirror. I think you actually have some... Yeah, so you take out Fable, Mirage Mirror, LED, Breach, and you can bring in the three pieces plus Fury. Yes. And maybe Stoic Rebuttal? We could do Stoic Rebuttal. It gives you extra control in addition to Force and I, the Prismari Command counter? No, Prismari Command okay. does not counter. Yeah. Right, loot, treasure, destroy, or two damage, yep. which is a relevant mode. Yes, it is. All the all the modes in that card yeah. are all are oddly always relevant, regardless of what yeah. you're doing. Uh, there was an something else I was looking at. Oh, um, Cyclonic Rift is just a two mana chain of vapor, right? So yeah, it's another piece of control. So you yep. could, in theory, also bring that in to slow the game down. Yeah, you definitely have some options to remove in favor of decks that are fa- uh, faster, like Jeff's overall. Yeah. When do people uh, so play pre-modern, pre-modern is at Realms of Gaming every Wednesday, I believe. Blyden's the one that actually hosts that, uh, and they do it out there. All right, so our players are still shuffling. So let's go back to Blyden's deck and take a look at the sideboard here. So, so I think the inverter package comes in. Maybe. I think Drown of the Lock does. Yeah, Drown definitely comes in. That card is really good here. Do we want to do anything with Entomb? Maybe the inverter package doesn't come in. You're just already so dense. Like you're getting slower if yeah. you bring that in. It's it's interesting. We're playing combo v combo, right? So yeah. you got to think what is Cody going to bring into control, and what do you need to do to deal with that? And I think the main deck here is set up well enough. All right, Parallax Nexus. Uh, remove a fade counter. Reveal a card in their hand, remove it from the game, and then they come back eventually, fading five. Yeah, I don't so, know that I care about Parallax Nexus here. No, that's an extra control element, uh, yeah. and against Cody, who is also all combos all the time. Yeah, I I don't think you want... You want to go faster in this case, because you don't have enough control elements yeah. 
Whereas Cody has like counter spells and stuff in his main, most of Jeff's protection is proactive disruption. Yeah, I think I bring so in... So maybe Nexus does come in, actually. I bring in Mystical Dispute, and I think I bring in Drown in the Lock because that's a mortal spell. Mm-hmm. And I think, in this instance, the mortal spell is going to be a, uh, a pretty decent look. Well, you know me. I love mortal spells, so... Yeah, and at any point in time... That's facts, Potator. That's facts. I mean, there's an amount there's an amount of cake that one human can have. Yes. And we're verging on maximum. Yes. Uh-uh. Destroy target creature with converted mana cost less than or equal to the number of cards in its control tree. So that gets the card struct, right? So yep. it aces that, it aces painter, and yep. it keeps it in. You're probably not going to get Urza immediately. Alright, Tezzeret, LED, Can't Tell, Island, Soul, Soul Ring, Ring Valk. I don't know what the, the card he's moving to the front is. Okay. Well He's apparently. putting Muddle away, I think. Okay. So it doesn't matter. Not fast enough is what it comes down to. I think I would get rid of LED. Oh, I guess LED taps for blue with Urza. With under Urza, and if LED yeah. is in... That, oh, that and there's sign- a Tezzeret. Yes, yeah, Tezzeret okay, Seeker. Yeah. yeah. Right, so that might signal the fact that the uh, Breach combo is still... Yeah, yeah, if we still have LED, I think Breach is still in. Um, Signet, Duress, and a bunch of question marks just because yeah. of the glare. I gotta say, these Easter dragon sleeves are pretty nice. Yeah, they're great, aren't yeah. they? Straight to duress. Straight to the duress. So duress. that's gonna be an. Yep, oh, we're taking Urza Tezzeret. Is you there? get to keep your Urza. Woof. That is riff. Yeah, that's kind of brutal there. Hey, look at that. You'll never guess what we're doing. Un- Ooh, it's a mobile. a mobile. It's online. Yeah, we could. It's online. We- that's a clock. It is. Uh, one, two, three, four, right? Four, yeah, four. Yeah, that's four. Not too bad. And if we're feeling really desperate, we could spend a win. Spend a win. A win. Yeah. If we, I mean, if we're hell bent top deck, there's no reason not to, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. It, it it just shrinks your clock by a handful of turns. I don't yeah. feel like doing the the math on that. Well, wait. How big is Urza two? I, I'm bringing up Urza now. Yeah, yeah, I think it's two two. One four. One four. Okay. Yeah. Then we spin. That's fine. Yeah, we Urza's, don't need to swing. Yeah, Urza's that, not yeah. putting in. Oh, it's five, not four. Okay, never mind. Yeah. We can't. But we have five there. Soul Rings, two. Yeah, oh, I was just yeah. looking at what's available right oh, now. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. thought... Yeah, no, now we can't, no. Yeah, I thought the spin was four. No. Nah. And this is why I brought it up. Yep. Oh, we got another Imp Seal. All right, Cody in the tank here. Am I casting this? Am I spinning? We're spinning, baby. We're spinning. Spin the wheel. You know what we get? We get anything. Even, even a, boat. a boat. Even a boat. Do we have treasure cruise? Do we actually have a boat? Nobody has treasure cruise. No, somebody has Oh, no, somebody does have TC, yeah, because it was in a sideboard. Yes, I think that's exactly where it lives. We were talking about, I think, it's, is it the deck with Uro? Are they fighting? Treasure cruise is in... Oh, Mason in round nine. Okay. Okay. All right, and we are... Wheel of Morality, turn, turn, turn. Tell us a lesson that we should learn. Fury! Woof. That's actually not bad. But it's a good clock, yeah. Yeah, that, that's an insanely good clock on this. Yeah. So we're, we've got... Nine? One, two, three, four. No, it's ten. Eleven. Oh, yeah, ten, yeah. Yep. So is that a... We are close to... Two turns. Yes. We've got a two-turn clock here. If we don't get another artifact. Correct. Which we can spin and see what we get. Exactly. Yeah. So Jeff has to figure out a way to deal with this. And this is this is where I would think, this is where I would want Drown in the Lock, right? Yeah. Because it's based on, the, the Destroy is based on mana value. And that construct has a, a mana value of exactly zero. zero. Yeah. And sure, there's only Tezzeret, but Duress stacked that enough that we can now kill this. Yeah. Okay, and and he's doing to, the, yeah, yeah, Jeff's doing the math now. Yeah, so he How sees we have a two-turn clock to get there. and Yeah. And this is a situation where I like to ask myself, how do I lose? Because I'm on the precipice of doing so. So I'm not looking to win. I'm looking to not lose yeah. right now. Once I don't lose, I can actually begin to play the game. Yeah. How are we not losing here is the question. And I don't know that there's an answer. We, that, that hand was explosive. Yes. I don't oh, know. we're going to 11? Does and this mean he has the removal spell? Yeah. I don't think you go to 11 without it. Yeah. Do you deploy, or is he deploying a blocker? Thor. Oh, he didn't tap the black in response. Uh, okay. okay. 
All right, so one, two, three, four, plus six from the Fury is 10. Well, we're blocking the Fury, so I guess we're taking... Uh, five, yeah, I just yeah. wanted to do the yeah. math to make yeah, yeah, sure yeah. that we were looking at 11 exactly, Yeah, it is, right? it is 11 exactly with no artifacts off the spin to win. Yes. Because if we do that, then it bumps up to 12. If we, hit, if we draw one and play one, then we're at 13, right? Yeah. And we can't just throw the LED away because it is tantamount to that. Uh, yeah, it, it is an extra point of damage and an extra blue mana. Mm -hmm. Now, if we're, if we're Cody, we're thinking, what can Jeff do for one black mana? Yeah. And the answer is Fatal Push. Yeah. We can Fatal Push is really good in this format and I think criminally underrated. Is there anything else? There's Cabal Therapy, but that is irrelevant in the situation. Yeah. We can unearth a card that doesn't exist, and we can set up a Vampiric Tutor. Well, we can... So the interesting line here, I think, is block unearth, or block push, main mm -hmm. phase unearth, win. Have, have another block, and yeah, and win. And granted, it requires exceedingly specific cards in Jeff's hand. Yes. Uh, but it does buy him an extra turn-ish that he would be able to dig. Yeah, and if we have the Unearth, we don't have the win. For what you were saying, we yeah. still get to delay an extra turn on that, and this gives us enough to maybe hit our redundant pieces because we have yeah. at least two of each copy of the combo piece. Exactly. Let's see. Oh. And we're scooping him up. All right, Jeff deciding, you know what? Let's not play it out. Let's. You, you, you got this one. Let's go to the sideboard. Yeah, I got no outs, and you still had all these. Yeah, so it's out. It for me, it seems like Jeff's hand was not necessarily full of air, but not necessarily cards that could close the game in two turns. Yeah, exactly. Because you have to give up Thoracle, that means you have to get Thoracle back, mm -hmm. and at that point, it's a question of well, how many more cards do I need on top of that? And how do many I have a lab man and a piece? Do I have it on Earth to buy a turn? Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, so this this is for all the marbles now. This is for Jeff's XO or X1. This is game three. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so Jeff on the play. I feel like of any of the decks in this, his odds on the play have got to be like double digit better, right? I think than so. Than on the draw. Yeah, with only one piece of fast mana in the in the mock sapphire, I think yeah. it's a little difficult if you had. Uh, you can get there. You can definitely get there. Yeah. Probably some of the best odds overall in the early turns. So we have Urza, Soul Ring, Mountain, Fetch, Time Vault, something else. I don't know that I keep this. Yeah, this Blight is a, Steel. That doesn't seem very good. No, this is a dangerous hand to keep if you don't have a blue source. Oh, oh wait, we, have, we have Vault Key in hand. Okay. Never mind. Yeah. I, I We feel good about this one. Yes. We, we, we kept a hand that can essentially win possibly through duress. Yeah. We, haven't, we didn't see Breach in game two, but we suspect it's there because of the LED, right? Yeah. So that gives us that redundancy for Cody that we've come to kind of expect. Yeah. Because everything that Cody is doing can be rebought yeah. via Breach. There's, there's no card in his graveyard that cannot be recast. Yeah. I haven't seen Jeff cast on Mask yet. So we, we do have three ways to prevent this win from happening. Duress, yes. Grief, and Unmask. Mm -hmm. I don't... Oh, him. Oh, and him. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but I don't think... Oh, and Cabal Therapy. But you uh, got a you got a silver ball at that one. Too. Yeah. Like, I, the, the thing is, Jeff has been using it to be protective. Yes. Rather than disruptive. Yes. And that's yeah. why I... Like, if I'm Cody, I'm fine keeping this and just being like, yeah, I mean, he's gonna... You know, when he goes off, he'll use his Duress to protect his combo. Yep. All right, Whereas no. I can now land, fetch, yep. soul ring. So we go get Valk here because yeah. it's the blue land. The yeah. Yep. And then land, soul ring, vault. Yeah, I think you play vault first. Because next turn you can key. I don't, yeah, actually. Activate, yeah. yeah, it's just mana efficiency it says vault. Yeah. What are you going to do with the key? There's no other fast mana that we saw in Cody's hand, right? I don't recall seeing any. Okay. okay. Oh, we're so going key. Interesting. Float it, untap. Oh, yeah, yeah. So we Tap just it, vault. 
Ass. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. This, let me know if uh, yeah, if Real Para wants a magazine. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, the old get got. Yep. If he had pass. Mo- yeah. Uh, if Mobile was in here. This yeah. Week. Oh man, if Mobile was in the hand, it's just nuts. It <laughs> as it stands, it's still nuts. It is crazy. Yeah. Oh, oh no! Oh, oh. Oh. No, man. It, we, oh. I literally said he's been using it to protect his combo. Yeah. 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 Woo. That was wild. That was a game. That was a good one for sure. Yeah. Let's bring it back. <laughs> All right. So uh, outside of that ridiculous opener, uh, best play hand you've seen all day so far. So... I've seen some hands that have been really close. I think I've seen Alluring get really close. Yeah. Exactly. I, I know. Yeah. Do you, do you... <laughs> yeah. We, we have Levine popping into the room just with this look of absolute... Astonishment. Disbelief. I just, I just, I, I just want to say, I, I just want to repeat what Cody said to, to, to Blyden after, after he put those cards down. And Blyden, Blyden made, made his, his, his murder face. Yeah. And Cody was just like, you, you cut my deck. Please don't kill me. <laughs> I just wanted yeah. to share that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was important. Yeah. Yeah. I, it, we, we actually made the comment as it started. If I'm Cody, I'm okay keeping his hand. Because Blyton has been using his discard as protection rather right. than disruption. And, so and Blyton then when choosing... Blyton immediately has it, and I'm like, yeah. that was the game. Yeah, yeah, choosing not to unmask. Yeah. yeah. That was it. Yeah, exactly. I've, I've seen some Alluring hands that look, the, the pot Alluring deck hands that yeah. look really good. That if it, Like, you look at the hand, and you can just see that you're going to get there, right? The, yeah. the end is inevitable, but nothing as clear-cut as that. Yeah, because the, I, the turn one literally... Do you have it? Okay. Yeah. When you're looking at the at these decks and you you look at the lists on Moxfield, I don't think there's any other deck that presents a vintage legal hand yeah. that you can expect a yeah. non-zero number of times in that format. Yeah. There are things that can be done that are similar to vintage, but I think that's like the closest one you'll find. Yeah. Like, the only thing missing was a workshop. Oh yeah, right, right. Like sure, fetch, duel. A bunch of moxes recall is definitely something you can sure, do in, yeah. right, in VRD, but that's just like the average hand. Yeah, that's right? that's not the not, turn sorry. one win that you get like that. Yeah, sorry, I don't want to say average hand. I don't yeah. want to mislead people. That that is a common thing. Uncommon is all right. Mis- misdirect your recall to me. Yeah, yeah. Um, that that is uncommon. I I really don't think there's anything else that's coming as close. I've seen some good infect hands, both on stream and off. And again, they're okay. clear cut, but it's just yeah. like we need another card or two for, for insurance. For it to actually be there, yeah. But yeah, for, for that to just have, especially knowing that there's no artifact removal, there's not a lot of control magic and stuff in yeah. Jeff's list, to be able to literally just dump it yeah. was great. Okay, so we have Alec coming on stream. Uh, now, Alec is on the mono blue mill plan. So I talked to him in between rounds, this, and he was yeah. telling me, yes, yep, that's him. Uh, he said, you know, I'm 0-3, doesn't feel great, whatever. Uh, the interesting thing, though, and I, I love this, he said, look, uh, the first time I came in, I didn't know what I was doing. The second time, I had a pretty good idea of the deck I wanted. Yes. And the third round, now that I'm here, my picks were way better, and I was way more patient. Okay. And it was nice to see that growth, having seen all of the VRDs he's been at, where he started with just, like, fresh, I think the format's a cool idea, and still feeling good, even though he's not doing well, because he recognized, oh, I'm a better VRD player, and you see the improvement. Yes. And, yeah, to Caterberg's point, that match is exactly why we have never had a 7-0. Yeah. Because you occasionally just get got by the random vintage god hand. Yeah. You don't have the ability to play 4x, 4, or 8, 6, whatever, forces. Yeah you have to abide by the singleton rule in this format. So it's yep. like, well, yes, you can play a lot of vintage style effects, yep. but you're never going to be able to get the redundancy of the protection. Yep. Or for something like Paradoxical, which we did see in the, in the matchup, yep. you're not going to get the the storm off because you don't have the critical mass of zero drop artifacts. Or yep. one, drop exactly. rock, one, drop, one drop rocks or two drop rocks like Grim Monolith that can actually net you mono when you Paradox. Yeah. Right, All right, so, so Dan is also 4-0 on Infect. Yes. Uh, which, but Dan is like playing in 
the next VRD already. Dan is just yeah. like just light speed yeah. in this in this yeah. event. Uh, so we've got packed Icker Claw Mirror and some lands going against the mill deck. Or, Which is also mono counter spells. Yes, exactly. That's what I was gonna say. Yeah. Like we have packed invigation against the deck that just plays counter spells. Yeah, and has Odawara, which I think is incredibly important in this matchup. Yeah, for the the bounce. Yeah, which we actually did just see in Alex opening hand as he was flashing. Okay, so yeah, we so. know Odawara is there. Um, the fact that it is. Bring that one up. Yeah, there we go. I mean, he, now he does not have a way to like recycle it, which is unfortunate. Okay. But. Oh, wow. Uh, Dan's six is almost identical to his seven. There's lands, Iker Claw Mirror, and a pump spell. Oh, no. Uh, Iker, Claw, Iker Claw Mirror is a good card, but yeah. it's not the greatest. No green source, too, is really rough for this deck. Yeah. Uh, I think he had a green source. He just didn't have Glistener. Iker Claw, I believe, was his only threat. Okay. Which feels bad. I'm choosing not to deploy it here. Into two open mana. Yeah, uh, why yeah, would you deploy sense. your own? Especially threat? if it's the only one. Yeah. It's there's gonna be this weird turn where there's gonna be a bunch of jockeying for position, possibly, just for Dan to be able to land a threat. And here we have Fraction Oh Fraction Identity into Test of Talents. Yep. Bloop. So now Dan's it's, going to be able to a, look at the hand. It's a negate that lets you see their hand. Yes. Negate it's great. and Negate probe? Yep, negate probe. Or negate peak. So we have okay. Prosperity, Sanity Grinding, Odawara Island, and uh, Storm Giants. Ma mana Land. Yes, so we know there's, there's yeah. no no counterspell there? No correct? counterspell there. Just correct. a bunch of mill. Just a bunch of mill and draw. So we feel, I, I'd and assume... If I'm Alec, I don't think I cast Prosperity in this matchup. I don't think so either. I, each player draws X cards. Why do I want to give you all of your pump? Yes. Why, why would I let you continue to further your game plan when I know it's going to just put me behind? Yeah. But I think... Uh, and especially now we can drop Iker Claw. Exactly. I was going to say, I think yeah. we, we feel fine dropping the, the uh, Iker Claw here and just let it ride. Yep. He's going to get in for one infect, right? Yeah, he's... And I think it's when he dies, they get a... Just Iker Claw one word. I think it is. They get a minus one, minus one? Like, came up... There. Oh, when it blocked. becomes blocked, it yeah. gets plus one, plus two, plus two. Which okay. is not going to happen in this matchup. There will be no. no blocking of creatures in this matchup, unless no. we see a cycled uh, Shark Typhoon. Yeah. I or really... depl oh, and here we have Mana Crypt with Iker Claw. And nothing else. The Crypt is in hand? Yep, Crypt in hand. Yeah, I don't think we... <sighs> yeah, it looks like there's three lands besides... We, we could deploy the Crypt if we think we're going to be casting Pact. Yeah. Actually, that's... Probably the only reason I would deploy that card, but we have oh, spell, no, pierce spell pierce too, right? Yeah, spell pierce two lands in crypt. I don't yeah. think there's any reason to run the crypt out here. No, uh, I don't. I think we can just natty get to five. Yeah. Dan was mentioning if you if you see there are two white border quote unquote cards in his in his hand that he honestly thought we gave him the white border waterlogged grove, <laughs> and then realized there is no white, white border, border water waterlogged logged grove. grove. Yeah. No, that's just the forest behind it, Dan. Yeah. Can't see the forest for the trees. Yep. So, I, is, okay, I guess we were thinking about what we want to do. Do we want to yeah. pass with the blue up to represent counter magic? Do we want to deploy the monocrypt and put our shields down? What is the worst that could possibly happen? Yeah. And I honestly don't know based on Alex hand. And there is a sea giant. Yeah, I mean, we got a... Grinding. Sanity grinding? Yeah. That's... Choo choo, baby. Yep. 14. Oh, 10. Yeah. For each blue mana symbol on the mana cost of so the real cards, target opponent puts the top card of their library. And we spell pierced it, of course. Boop. Yep. Three Which mana. Lose one. What are, what are, oh. Gem <laughs> Razor to make it a 4 4 infector. That's brutal. Bonk. Yep. Have fun. And we are representing a single blue mana here. Do we we have Odawara, so I don't think we. No, know. I'm I'm thinking about the about Dan's list. Yeah, I don't think he has a way to counter the Odawara. Well, uh, no, no, no. I just want to see what can yeah. Dan do with one blue mono. How disrupt, disrupt Fluster Storm, Mental Misstep. I want to pay the blue. Like yeah. what? What could possibly go wrong here? And there's Odawara. Yep. Which we cannot interact with. 
So we bounce the creature back. There's now Necroclamir. And now we redeploy. And now we redeploy. And importantly, there is a Berserk in hand now for Dan. Okay. So the Berserk definitely ends the game. Yeah. If Alec has nothing to do. But we have the Pact of Negation, so we're basically ready for a quote-unquote combo turn. The Pact is gone. He molded it away. Oh, okay. You can keep yeah. the Pact. Okay. So, okay. Single card left is just the Berserk. Yeah. <coughs> okay. So there's a land from Alec. Which is... We know Prosperity and one to two other cards. Hmm. Well, there's going to come a point in time where we might actually need to cast the Prosperity just to continue to be able to play the game. Yeah. All the Storm Giants is going to get you only so far. Yeah. And how much is Hall to animate? Is it six? I thought it was infinite, which, yeah, basically six. Yeah. Right? Uh, there it is. Hall of Storm Giants costs Six. five and a blue. Yep. Okay, so we played a Sanity Grinding, and we have three mana up. So we potentially have the Counterspell for the Berserk. Mm-hmm. Or not the Sanity Grinding. No, no, no. We played... Psychic Corrosion? Not Court. Fractured. Nope, that's no. a Sorcery. Enchantment. I think it's corrosion. It is psychic yep. corrosion. Whenever yep. you draw a card, each opponent puts the top two cards. So it's yet another swing's tutelage. Yeah. Right. We're not running max. Yeah. Toots. Okay. That, yep, so that, that was, was it. No, no response. counter for the berserk. Nope. Okay. So let's start with Cody because we we know Dan's deck is or basically with Alec. Just, or Alex. Sorry. Yes. Yeah. Because we know Dan is basically going to bring in blossoming defense. Yeah. Uh, and, hybridization is good here. Pongify is good Pongify here. Is Negate. Amazing. Dispel. Uh, Reb and Pyro, I actually like here. Okay. I think it, it helps the counter wars. So yeah, uh, Swan Song and Subtlety. There's a lot of really good options here, actually. Re reality Shift. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. No, there. There's a lot here. What do we pull though? Do we pull like the slow? Do we pull the, Prosperity, um, Telepathy, some of the slower stuff. I feel like. Yeah, the unilateral draw. Yeah. Right. Um. Okay, so for, oh, subtlety is also pretty good. Okay, yep. so let's say we are looking at Swan Song. Let's the black. Subtlety. I, I, let's hold on, subtlety. Yeah, for sure. like, Okay, so Swan, Swan Song, Song definitely. Uh, Reb, so it's two. Reality Shift is three. Rapid is four. Pongify five. Negate is six. Um, seven in Dispel. Yeah, so we're looking at seven cards to bring in. That is a lot. So we're taking out Prosperity and Telepathy. There's two. We're taking out High Tide because it does nothing. There's three. Yep. Um, I think we may take out Typhoon. I don't know if it's fast enough. But it's one of our win conditions. Yep. So do we want to go all in on the Jace paradigm shift plan? or, or I, yeah, think, I, I, I think Bellerin and Narset come out. Yeah, so I think so. There, if you're going to take out the unilateral draw, you take out the Narset too, yeah. I believe. Like Narset is good... Or, Narset's really good when you have prosperity. It's yeah. mediocre, especially knowing... Yes, it does need more Ornithopter. Uh, especially knowing there's not a lot of draw on Dan's deck. Yeah, you just need to run Dan out of cards in hand. Let, let Dan spend his time casting spells that you're going to counter, right? It's not going to be yeah. a big deal because you're bringing in everything you need. You can win the game on your turn after that, on your yeah. terms which could be your mill plan, or you could actually devalue the mill you plan, the big mill you spells, yeah, right? Yeah, Because you want to be able to interact, so you got to hold up, hold back mana, so you reduce the MV of your deck overall, you cut some of your expensive spells, and you just rely on, like, like maybe Paradigm Shift, Jace Wheel. Corrosion, yeah, stuff yeah. like that. I think Malevolent Hermit is probably kind of useless here. Oh, yeah, yeah. Your non-creature spells are uncounterable. I guess it helps you win counter wars. Yeah, it, it does add up, but you got to pay three into it, right? So it's yeah, and there's only three counters. I think that Dan is running. It's not a lot. This is this is difficult because you want to be able to to win pretty effectively, and if you're not gassing the mill plan, I'm unsure of what you're going to be doing in regards to winning the game from the mill yeah. perspective. Like, Let's see if they're suited up here playing because all the storm giants does put in work in time and we got there sure, we yeah. were almost able ready to play it all right i'm gonna trade out real quick mr levine is hopping in okay hey everybody i'm back 
Welcome to the fast-paced action of Infect versus Mono Blue Control. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I see we have Sanity grinding up on the board here. <laughs> oh yes. <laughs> Always happy to see that card. One of my personal favorite Eventide rares. <laughs> so we were, Dan's side of things looks pretty prescriptive. You bring in the, the reactive elements that you have in order to keep your creatures around. So we're looking at Blossoming Defense yep. mainly. And I think there's one other uh, Spell Snare. Yeah, he's got some defensive, uh, a small amount of defensive stuff. Not as much as I think he would have liked because he had to do that pivot. Yep. But he's still got plenty. Has Mind Link? Have we seen Mind Link mech yet? No, I don't think so. <clears throat> That's too bad. I'm really hyped about that card. Yeah. We almost saw Pack Mitigation get cast, but he had a mullet away. Ah, uh, okay. We've only seen that, I think, one other time on yeah. camera today. Yep. So we were just trying to figure out from Alex's perspective, what do you do? Because you have seven cards to bring in in your sideboard that are good in this matchup. Right. And they're all reactive, which means you're pushing back Dan's clock. Yes. You don't yes. have a lot to do with blocking, so you've got to deal with everything on the stack. So what aspects of your deck do you start to trim on I think that, this game? I think at a certain point you sort of have to decide if you're going to mill your opponent or mill yourself. That's pretty much where we came, what we came to as well. Yeah. I'm not sure what the better path to victory is. I think I think it's milling your opponent just because milling yourself is is a little bit of a fragile plan that does involve having Jason play. Yes. Um, so I think what you set yourself up to do optimally is you, you set yourself up to mill Dan and your backup plan is to beat down with Hall of Storm Giants. Yeah, I think, moreover, the more you mill Dan, the higher opportunity you have to reduce the threat count. Yes, 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 and yes, yes. when you're playing a deck that really doesn't have a lot of onboard removal because you're mono blue, you have, you're bringing, basically bringing in Pongify, Rapid Hybridization, and reality shift yep. for removal. You need to make sure that Dan cannot really get a foothold with multiple creatures. Right, and you have you have some some reactive counter spell counter mm -hmm. magic as well. You know, the 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 negate, the dispel, things like that to to stop some of the pump spells if you need to. Yes. But but those those three removal spells are really the core of what you're looking to bring in there. Yeah. And basically by doing so you remove you're a drop when you remove the uh, Jace Wilder Mysteries and Paradigm Shift, you get to drop the MV of your deck a little bit, but you also get to have like have that internal monologue of there's like our tri archive trap is cool, but if my opponent's not searching their deck, right? Yeah, can I effectively pay the five mana for this? Exactly. Card? That's that's something that's a lot harder to to work out. I I also forgot about Shark Typhoon. Shark Typhoon is another effective uh, yes. sort of backup plan for yeah. Alec here. Yeah, we were we were talking about that about the the defensive Shark, shark Typhoon just to cycle to kill a a. a an unsuited attacker, a naked yes. attacker, right? I don't think you're really going to be able to hoist Dan like that, so to speak. No, it's going to be difficult. Dan's, yeah. Dan's a very savvy player. He, he's, he's, he's going to be aware of that. Yes. I don't think there's really a time that Shark Typhoon gets to gain value prior to hard casting it. No, it's, it's, it's tough to do that. It looks like we are back in action here. Mm -hmm. Alec, turn one, Steam Vents, and Mox Ruby, leaving the Steam Vents untapped. Of course, that life total, not very relevant. Nope. But once upon a time, pulling up that Ink Moth Nexus for Dan. Dan goes ahead and plays that. His hand is stocked, by the way. Oh, my gosh. And that's he's going he's gonna to spew off a little bit of that with this Chrome Mox here, pitching this Might, Might of Old Crosa, so that that can generate green. Looks like they're going to be casting probably a creature. Maybe this is Icar Claw Mirror? No, nope. but this Plague Mirror. Mirror. I was close. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have not. I've seen Plague Mirror a little bit. Uh, yeah, this off is camera. just a uh, a colorless mana creature that uh, that goes ahead and has infect okay. as well. Okay. Alex is going to go ahead and quench that. Drop the uh, one of these blue pathways. Mm. They've all got names. We know them. We all understand what they are. No need to talk about the name of that card. Yeah, knows. when the only red card you're bringing in is, uh, or the only red ones are the blasts. You really don't, and you have two red sources already. You do not need the red side. Yeah, that, that is that is blue pathway through and through. Ikma uh, yeah. Nexus gets animated here. Comes in for one. Dan says, "Yep, just, just one. one. Thanks very much." Passes after that wooded foothills. Yeah, there was the opportunity to crack the fetch for a green source, put Rancor on it, just let it fall off and recur the Rancor because Rancor is such a fair and balanced card at one green mana for what it does, right? <laughs> to just punch a, punch a little harder, but with four open mana, the opportunity for yet another counter spell rears yes. its ugly head. Yeah, very very hard to justify running running the Rancor into that open mana there, uh, especially because if, if you do get Rancor countered, that's one of the few ways to actually lose Ex Rancor for exactly. good. Exactly, yes. So this would have been the the most opportune opportunity for Archive Trap, and I believe it is actually the only opportunity for Archive Trap in this matchup. Yeah, I think I think Wooded Foothills is really the only thing Dan is doing that's going to, to, to make Archive Trap happen. I wouldn't be surprised if Alex sent that one to the, uh, to the old sideboard zone. To the shadow zone, game. yeah. That's what I, 
the the milieu plan is also interesting too because you have double sphinxes tutelage, which is really effective, or like milieu opponent plan. But do you want to? Do you need to double up on that? Yes, Rancor. Yes. One of one of the best parts of Magic: The Gathering as young people was, uh, you know, the cra the Crambler is a friend of mine. We 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 definitely learned uh, some words playing Magic in our younger days. Oh, the, it's interesting how games like that and D and D just increase your vocabulary for sometimes unnecessary words. Like, how many synonyms do you need to know for shoulder pads? Right. Exactly. Epaulets. <laughs> Still, pauldrons, pauldrons. Right. Spalders. <laughs> like, when, when in my life am I going to use the word vorpal other oh, yeah, than yeah, when yeah. reciting the Jabberwock, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, when you're playing AFR, of course. Yeah, of course. When the vorpal, when the vorpal, <laughs> the vorpal sword, sword shows up and goes snicker snack. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like not a lot of action on both sides here. Yeah. Alec coming in with the Ink Moth Nexus. It's hard to say. <laughs> There's a knock on the door, but the door is the door doesn't really <laughs> open here. No, the door does not open. Go around. Okay, so I think we're going to brainstorm lock ourselves here. Yep, Narset, Narset coming down. Dan going to respond by brainstorming. Yes, he is going to price himself into being brainstorm locked. As you said, not a lot of opportunity for him to change the order of cards in his deck. At this oh, point. there's a what if foothills in hand. Okay. Actually, so we can do that. <laughs> How many different biomes? I know. <laughs> I mean... If you're a Star Trek fan, you know them by letter. Oh, like yes. Class style planets. <laughs> Classification, right? <laughs> Conveniently, every planet is class M. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just, just, just for no reason. Just for plot reasons. Spell Pierce going to take down this yep. Narset here. Yeah, knowing about Karsts and Tarns, things like that. Yep. That just doesn't really come up. Oh, the slipperiest of Karsts. That's right. Oh, hang on. We've got a, uh, a windswept. Heat. Yes, I saw that in hand as we pulled up on the brainstorm. Ah, uh, very which is, good. I didn't realize that was in the list. I, I overlooked that. That's going to help Dan here. Dan oh. is going to go ahead and do this Rancor trick you are talking about. Stick that on Ink Moth Nexus. Let it fall off at the end of turn, no problem. Bring it back to yeah. the hand. Oh, so we have, we already have Alex deck. And we know uh, we know there's not a lot of one mana interaction. And there's nothing on zero. So no. At this point, it's free. Yeah, un unless, uh, unless a, a null got brought in, which I very much doubt it was, right? Uh, yeah, I don't think so. I was honestly trying to, to parse out what we could possibly catch with a null when we were looking at the sideboard. And it, like... Yes, Rancor is an option, but I don't think there's anything else, so why would you bring a one-for-one one spell? Like not that? worthwhile here. No. You're not looking for that kind of action here. If, when, when you are literally trying to counter one card, you know, yeah. bring that in. No, no, no. Dan, serving for three Infect, goes ahead and casts Invigorate, Invigorate for free. That's a plus four, plus four. We're looking at a seven power Ink Moth Nexus. <laughs> Alec gleefully gains some life. <laughs> And he's going to go ahead and cast There's Rapid Hybridization. Dan yep. is going to respond with... With the leak. Oh, that's... Uh, I think that's... Uh, no, that's the one mana... Oh, yeah. That's the one mana cantrip uh, card. Right? Disrupt. Disrupt. That's the name of it. And Disrupt is going to take that one home. Disrupt Dan it does. He's going to win this game. Yeah. Was that the match? I believe... Yes, that was the match. Uh, All righty. Thirsty had to jump out for yes. our... Uh, Right, the swap in the middle of it. Yep, yeah, that's how that happens sometimes. So, so Dan's going to take that two down two zero. Mm -hmm. let's, um, go, let's check the standings. Actually. Yeah. Just check the. Uh, there is not audio on that scene, so let's cut back to us. I'll add it later. Yes. So that's uh, Dan. That moves Dan up to to quite. Quite a nice record, I think. I forget exactly what his record is. I think he's like X1 at this point. Mm -hmm. um, and, of course, we saw Jeff Blyden fall down to and, and take a loss there against yes. Cody Owen just a, a short time ago. But Jeff is still front-running for first place. I, I think so. Well, I, if, if if he and Dan are now both X1, now, now we're in the... Oh, yeah. We're now we're in a, a potential playoff scenario. Okay, that's that's right. We we play off. We don't do tiebreakers. Yeah, no. The, the tiebreakers are playing playing more magic because we decided at some point, <laughs> at some point, we decided we just wanted to play a lot more magic. Yeah. And then you know, sometime around eight p.m. tonight, we'll remember why that was a bad idea. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And then we'll forget and continue to do that. I mean, the options are either we play more magic or we scour the tournament rules for the calculus to do tiebreakers. Right. Yeah. Which uh, I mean. We, we have that information. I could easily do that in Excel. However, 
we don't want to do that. That stinks, right? Like yeah. it's it's much more fun to play Magic the Gathering exactly. and determine who wins yeah. the tournament, especially for who wins. Like for third place, I really don't care. And in fact, I think we decided for third place to do tiebreakers this time if that happens. Oh, okay. But for first, first and second, if there's a tie for first and second, we play it out. Oh, yeah, and that's where everybody just gets to bird. Yeah. Bird, go home, whatever they want to do. Fair enough. Some people get sleepy. Some people stick around. I always stay till the end, no matter what. Around. Yeah. Yeah, I can't, I can't leave. I got to see it. I got to see it through. <clears throat> Light in versus damp. Okay. Very exciting. That's going to be a lot of fun. That, oh, if they haven't played and they're each other's last match, yeah, this is effectively the finals. Okay, let's go back to the standings. I'll add the Eidos for. Okay, so we should have our audio source. Yes, good. we're back. I'm not sure how up to date these are <clears throat> because. Well, we have Jeff at four and one, which is correct. Dan's definitely played more than three matches, though. Okay, so we need to we do need to get some of this updated. All right, we can definitely do that. Yeah, we'll figure that out in between uh, rounds here. But uh, for now, let's, let's take over. a look and see. Ah, yes, we've got some folks getting suited up here for uh, going to game two. Lightened up game one. Oh wow! Okay. Okay. All right, I'm gonna tag out. There's you'll jump back in. So enjoy his dulcet voice. Alrighty, so it looks like most people are on their round five. Yeah, let's go ahead and Mark said he just upsted, updated the standings. We've got audio in that scene now. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. All right, so. Do we? Uh, okay, Jeff and there Dan are both yep. four and one. So this is not necessarily the finals um, because they could they could still end up tied after this. Yes. And we've got we're some... working up the standings now. Okay, great. Okay. Yeah, we're... Okay, so we, we may not have be all the way updated here, but we're at least close. Jeff and Blyden both being four and one means that this is not necessarily the match for all the marbles. Yes. Still very cool. Yeah. It seems it seems very likely. Yes. Uh, and this is actually so if we go back to gameplay, catching it live. Uh, we had Alec and Dan. This is actually Blyden on the right, and on the left will be Brandon. Oh. Going into game two. Oh. So okay. not not quite all the marbles. Okay, so it's not Blyden and Dan, it's Blyden and Brandon. Okay. Uh, yeah, because they were in the middle of their game, so uh, Dan was holding. Right. Uh, yeah, so we will see. Okay, we're going to have an audible, actually. Okay, hang on. One second, everybody. Uh -oh. I'm going to take a quick uh -oh. second to take hang things on. out. Hang on. Uh, all right. So I can give you an update of what's going to happen. We're actually going to have uh, Brandon playing against Jeff. They're going with game. They're already done with game one. Okay. Blyden got game one. Yep. Yep. Uh, so we're going to watch the last two games of this match. And we're okay. going to hold uh, Dan versus Blyden because until it's the after. finals until afterwards. Okay, Got that it. works. Yeah. We're going to try to hold that as long as we can. Okay, yep. that works. Uh, I am excited for that because both of those are incredibly linear, fast strategies that yes. don't do a lot of interacting with one another. Yep, they're, That's they're great. <laughs> Bly, I mean, Blyden's got a little bit of discard. Dan's yeah. got a little bit of counter magic. They might... There might be a little flurry of interaction, but yeah. overall, no. they're going to try to walk past each other. Yeah. So we've got Emery, Denial, Channel, Lotus Petal, Shell Dock Isle. we got a whole lot of mana, nothing to do with it. Yep, so Brandon hoping that he will eventually draw something to do. If he keeps it? If he keeps I it. I hope he doesn't. I also hope he doesn't, but it appears uh, he has. Yes, all right. Blyden not favoring us with a look at his hand. That's okay. We'll figure it out. Uh, he's he's salty after that loss. <laughs> I uh, can understand that. Yeah, his, that was a rough one. He, he was actually more upset by game two and flipping the Fury. Yes. Uh, which was interesting because he was like, I had it two turns earlier. Fury was just such a bad clock right. that it just cost me the game. Yeah. Yeah, the 3-3 uh, three, three double striker is not to be underestimated. Yeah, it's real good. It's 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 quite the quite the clock. Turned a three-turn clock into a one-turn clock was what, yeah. what he said. He did not like that. Jeff, going to take a minute. Check his text messages. Not sure what he's doing there. Yeah, he's checking the sheet, it looks like, to oh, see okay, what, sure. what is in the list. Um, That's fine. Yeah. Again, uh, we, we are rel. Don't be that guy. Yep. So we, we are able to check phones, whatever. Yep. And uh, Jeff, Jeff not being that guy in this situation means... 
doing a quick check, which yes. he's done, which is fantastic. We're going to go ahead and see an island from Jeff here. Oh, going to send out that grief early. Exiling Lazav. Lazav the multifarious falls into the into the grief zone. Well, you know you know what's real bad here, channel. Yeah, I mean Emery's there too, so I just I don't know what you take. I feel like I'd take channel first because Emrakul's a clock that I don't know Jeff can deal with unless yeah. he just has the hand. If if Brandon if Brandon rips the Emrakul, it's just you know it's it's just kind of over, right? Yeah. There's no coming back from that. <laughs> Brandon just super deep in the tank here. I don't know why. Oh, he has denial. Oh, he has arcane denial. He could choose to uh, to cancel this out. He chooses not to. Let's that resolve. All right. So we real quick, we do have an update on standings. So while Let's Biden pieces this out, we'll take a look. So we do have. Oh, oh. Dan's at four and two. Oh, interesting. So if Blyden gets this. I think he's runaway favorite because they've both played their six match. Right, and then Jeff and Blyden, uh, Jeff and Dan play, and if Dan, Dan has to win and then win again, yes, exactly, in order to take it home. Mason still Mason also is still X1. alive. So is Brandon. Oh, after this, if Brandon loses, he's out. So Mason is still alive. That yeah. is important. And Brandon has to beat Blyden to stay in the picture. Yeah. All right. Here. And we then go. Mason has to lose a match. Yep. This is a very interesting, like, highly contested until the very end VRD. I, <laughs> yeah, I don't think we've had this in a while where we've been going into round six and seven with yeah. three, four people live for first place. I wonder if we... If we I, do I, the dreaded cut to top half. Oh, no, the four-way the four way tie. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my gosh. For, for all the hours. <laughs> Just here forever. There's a Shell Dock Isle. What are we going to bury here with Shell Dock Isle? Let's find out. Basic land. Crop rotation. And Crop three rotation, lands. gemstone mine, forest, and something. City. Oh, okay, city of I think. Yes, that is city of traders. Yeah, oh, that's so bad. Ugh. Oh, that's brutal. Ugh. Fetch first. Always fetch first. Reduces your chances of, <laughs> of hitting a land. It helps your percentages. Twitch chat. Twitch no, chat. Get Help out me here. out. <laughs> Kind of thing that Twitch chat likes to type at me in alternating capital letters. Yeah. Super helpful. Love Thanks, them. guys. You're the best. <laughs> but we love you who who are here. You don't do that. Yeah, you you guys are great that are here. We're y'all are fantastic. We're, we're among friends, so it's, it's fine. The, it's Twitch chat with capital T, capital C. You know what I mean. Reanimate, Reanimate grief. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. That's brutal. Uh, well, you, you gonna crack that arcane denial, or am I taking your channel? Just gonna grief you. Well, you're gonna lose the life. Sure. <laughs> fetch fetch fetch. <laughs> yeah. Brandon says, all yours. Take my channel. Take my denial. Do and whatever. Tireless you want. tracker. Take my tireless tracker. Just yeah. please let me rip dark depths. Yeah. That's what he's thinking right yeah. now. There are times where it's better to not fetch, all right. I'm trying to hit a land drop off my top deck. I'm yeah. gonna save that. The oh, taking the channel, and we're gone. So Jeff reducing oh, the explosivity of Brandon's draw here, trying to make sure that uh, that Brandon can't simply draw out into a, a an Emrakul and win the game off yeah. of nothing. That's Nimble Obstructionist, it looks like, has been drawn. So that's, hey, You know what that does? That cycles to counter a Thoracle. It sure does. Yep. That's a pretty good card in this yeah, matchup. Yeah, that one is of, very good here. One of Brandon's silver bullets here. Uh, we're dropping the thespian stage in a tracker, buddy. That's the that's the the way and the only way. Yeah. Yeah, grief is a. I I think those elementals were ones that we all thought would be taken Why significantly higher graveyard? than they were. I'm not sure. Yeah, because reanimate is permanent. Yeah. Grief should still be around. Uh oh, hang on. Yeah, <laughs> all right. Jeff just realized. Wait, I, uh, yep, I, I reanimated that card. That sticks around. Again, Comprel, don't be that guy. Yeah, Brandon, just get it back there. Not, not happening. It's fine. Leave it there. All right, so tapping two for the talisman, which. 
Again, Blind didn't take a whole lot of rocks. He took a Talisman and a Demir Signet and a Mox Sapphire. No fast mana, just some fixing. Problem solved. And Grief is swinging in. Passing the turn after that, so Jeff representing some type of, I don't know, Blue X disruption. The very simple answer of, oh, yeah. <laughs> yep, yeah. I reanimated it. You sure did. Oh, yeah. That sticks around, doesn't it? It sure does. Come on, tireless like... tracker. Get a clue. Crack the pedal for green. Get the tracker. Come on, Brandon. I strongly agree with this line. Come on. Ah, no. Why you do this? Oh, we're doing huh? something with blue? Man. Oh. That doesn't that doesn't do that. That you literally need blue you need green He's realizing for that. That, yeah. that doesn't work. Those those don't do those. Yep. Yeah, that okay. does not do the thing that you think it does. Yeah. Uh. Oh no. Stipe. Oh! <laughs> oh, you got Man, not, my friend. That's that's a finger gun moment. If Blyden is not doing finger guns right now, I'm gonna be real mad. We're gonna we're gonna find out after this if he did them. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna have to ask. <laughs> Brandon's so dejected right now. What? <laughs> Like Brandon, Brandon, he's still gonna lose his life. Yep. Okay. Stifle. Stifled. Yep. <laughs> yep. You still, you still pay your life. Yep. You still, you still got that lotus petal. Faux green. I don't know what we're doing here. Yeah. I can verify verify that I have no idea. Okay. All I right. have no idea what's going on. You can just call me Tally. <laughs> This is a this is an interesting situation. Brandon gonna fall down to thirteen from the grief here, and Blyden Blyden's playing an aggro deck. I don't know if you knew that. <laughs> oh, yeah. He he actually beats for three, and that's how he gets there. Mason is four one. Ooh, Mason also live. So Mason JVP. Mason took down Swifty. Mason was telling me about how uh, Swifty played a Lurin, and uh, that let Mason win. Yeah, <laughs> uh, happened, happened twice now because oh. it happened against Blyden. Oh my god! He was able to instant speed Thoracle. Wow. Yeah. The dangers of a learn that we didn't think about. Yep. JVP for Jeff. That's going to get arcane denied. We can't be allowing you to have that level of card selection. A couple extra draws for Jeff and an extra draw for Brandon. There we go. We're going to remember all of our triggers. Fantastic. How many green mana? There's a green mana in his hand. Great. Cool. We, we can track her now. I mean, we could already track her. We have Lotus Petal. Why are we being so precious about Lotus Petal? It's just a treasure token. Like yeah, it's said. just a treasure token. You can get more treasure tokens. Ragavan's been out on camera and didn't get any treasure tokens. Brandon made Hull Breacher and got seven treasure yeah. tokens. There's plenty to go around. He's got tons of treasure token generators. Who needs this petal? Just you. So I, I, I always think of Lotus Petal. I, I find that players treat it a lot, of, a lot of times the way that they'll treat an elixir in a role-playing game, right? Yeah, you're, it's you're, precious. You're, it's precious. i got to save it. Like, no. This is a resource, and you should use it at the time where it is most valuable to use, right? But did you know that Necro is a bad card? <laughs> because <laughs> Necro, you have to pay life to draw right. cards, Oof. and you lose when you reach zero life. Thank so you, why would Quest you... Magazine. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Sheldock. Yeah, yeah Sheldock is really not as good as it used to be, I don't think. It, it has to be in the dedicated shell yes. for it to dock inside of and be effective. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a harbor. It's docking yeah. in the deck. Yeah. Oh, oh boy. <laughs> it's docking in the shell. Yes. It's there. <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's definitely gone way down in my estimation just because games don't go as long. No. We're we're killing each other a lot faster than we used to be. Yeah. Well, especially this this format, there's a lot of linear strategies with no disruption. Yeah. And yeah, the, it's the just... dearth of sideboard cards drafted. Yep. It's very easy to ooh, just get your plan through. Yeah. I drank a whole glass of cold brew. <laughs> so I'm, I'm, <laughs> We're still... I'm recovering. Yeah. There up, it up, is. There up, it is. Up, Pop the pedal. Oh. Land, land, tapped. Got him. Tireless tracker. Does it resolve? It does. Yes. In cube, the shell dock aisle is still an all-star because you have less control over the focus level of yeah. your deck. Brandon falls to 10 being attacked by grief. Jeff yeah. drops a drowned catacomb here. Got all the man in the world. So speaking of cube, something interesting that Peter did with his mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. he has Lore Seeker in his cube. Oh, yeah. Now, the interesting thing is he has a dedicated Lore Seeker pack. Oh, that's fun. Specifically with cards that warp the draft. 
That's really so cool. it's specifically like Thassa's Oracle. Stuff like that that there are archetypes for that you have, but if you get them, it warps your deck around it. That's so clever. So you only get them if you draft Lore Seeker. But the <laughs> thing is, you you get one pick from that pack, so you don't know what other people are going to end up with. But yeah. it's like Thoracal, Wheel, Karn Liberated, stuff like that that's very specific archetypes that they want. So it unleashes this like Pandora's box, box of-, of here's key warping <laughs> cards, and it's it's really interesting. Jeff just unmasked Brandon's nimble obstructionist, so that is not going to be uh, that's, that's not, not going to be available be going forward. Yeah. Brandon gets a clue. We should be so lucky to all get a clue one day. One day we will all have a clue. Yep. You only got one now. You got to sack the fetch land first. Oh, there we go. Yep. And here we go. Oh, that takes a turn off the clock. Ooh, grief now. <laughs> yeah, that, that aggro dick looking real spicy. Brandon is three turns away. He's going to have to find a second creature to help block grief, which of course has menace. Uh, criminally underrated evasion ability? Yeah, extremely so. Yeah. Especially in limited, but even yeah. in constructed, something that just goes underrated very much. Yeah. Especially in multiples, it oh, stacks yeah. so much faster than anything else. Oh, yeah. The... the the number of games where, like, I've living ended and people have been like, all right, I have creatures too. I'm like, yeah, but you're low. And you can't pluck all my griefs. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, I've got three. <laughs> I've griefed you a lot in this game. Yeah. You can't. <laughs> you can't help it. You can't stop me. All right, are we passing back? Brandon Ooh. with a couple of clues. Thinking about here whether he should maybe crack something, maybe attack with the tireless tracker, since, of course, he's not going to be doing a lot of blocking. Should he cast Karn? Is he going to solve the mystery is the question. Ooh. He has so many clues. It was Emrakul the whole time. It really was. <laughs> Emrakul is in his hand. Yeah. The whole time. The whole time. Karn, <clears throat> the great creator, may come down here. I think that is a bad move. I don't think that accomplishes anything. Sure doesn't. I think you just let this grief tick away, draw two cards when you can, yep. m- put a five power clock on them. Yeah. Start beating down. Yeah. Crack those clues and beat down. That's what I'd do. Yeah. <laughs> like, you're not going to stop Thoracle. You might as well just attack. Yeah, your obstructionist is gone, so you... you, you... Yeah. No! Maybe he thinks Karn will be a distraction. I'm not sure. Yeah. Uh, I guess it shuts off... Uh, Talisman. Talisman. Yeah, baby. you got five mana now. Look what are you going to do? Nothing. Cracks nice. in for three. Jeff to 13. Oh, no. Jeff's still in a very strong position here. Maybe unable to use that talisman. Still has plenty of mana available. Yeah. Brandon going to go count his deck, see about that crop rotation. Yeah. That's too many. Yeah, that's way too many. No depths today, boys. Should have cracked them clues. Could have had it. Be faster to count the cards you have. In the graveyard. In the graveyard and battlefield, yeah. Yeah. And boom. Ooh, it oh. is a distraction. Grief taking a swing at Karn, the great creator. Jeff a little worried about Mycosynth Lattice here. Going to play the Divining Witch. Get ready. We got Lab Man. Oh, yes. Or Thorical, one or the other. Oh. What does this card do? Score one for Divining Witch. One more point. It yep. got red today. We got a reader. Divining Witch, of course... One of our favorite uh, demonic consultation variants. We've talked about it a lot yeah. today, I'm sure. But yeah. um, those of us who haven't been watching the stream all day may want to see it. Yeah, let us pull it up for you. After I, all, I do believe not super relevant in this, this matchup. This is the first time this card has been picked. It is the first time the card has been picked. Um, of course, Jeff Blyden loves this card. He does. Yep. So it's going to be. A, Demonic Consultation, it's going to exile your top six and then go find you the named card, remove everything else it sees, and of course, if what you're naming is you are already dead from Kamigawa Neon Dynasty and that card has gone entirely undrafted, well... You're already dead. Yeah. It's going to mill your whole deck. You're going to play the Thassa's Oracle, and that's the ball game. Oh, what what are we doing? What are, what are we doing? 164th of the time, the best card ever. Yep. Yep. Yeah, well... 
this one time is very good. Exceeding it. Oh, three mana. Nope. Brandon nope. looking for Crucible. Yep, we're playing Crucible. Not sure what this accomplishes yet, but we are playing it. Tick up Karn. Ah, we do. Wait, Karn plus makes it a creature? It makes up to one target artifact a creature. Yeah. So it might just be make nothing a creature would be the most likely thing. Making the crucible would not be a creature would not be super helpful because it would not have haste. It but it be would be able to block, block grief. grief. Yeah, which is certainly a thought. But uh, the problem is that because he never spent any clue tokens, uh, the tracker still dies. Yep. Does does not actually survive here, so... And I'm um, starting to think that uh, Grief may be a secondary concern here. Yeah, we're tapping a black and double blue. That much. looks like... Oh, no, he's playing a card. A Thoracle and in, Thoracle in response. response. Activate Divining Witch. That's not... Well, he's got black mana. Whatever. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's fine. Close enough. We're going to crack and extend. All right, so Jeff's going to go. take this one down to move to five and one. So let's take a quick look at the standings then. In that case, if he is five and one, Mason is also five and one. Wow! So Brandon is now eliminated. Yep. So Dan, Blyden, and Mason are the last the last ones left. Yep. Mason only has one match left. Who hasn't he played? It is not Jeff. He already played. His, his only loss was Jeff. Okay. Uh, Dan and Jeff still have to play. I don't know who Mason hasn't played. I'm trying to go through my memory of I who I wonder if played. it's Dan. It can't be Dan because Dan's only got one match left. And he has oh, to play yeah. Jeff. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Um, could be Alec. <laughs> could be Alec. Is it Alec? I don't know. It's No, just... it's not. I saw them play round one. Oh. So okay. I don't think it is Alec. Yeah, so if Biden... I saw him play Sam. Yeah. I saw him play Swifty. Is it, yeah, I guess it's Cody or Brandon at this point. Yeah. Not sure which one. But. Oh, wait, no. Round one was Brandon versus Alec. Oh, okay. So, so it might be yeah, Alec. Then. It might be them. It's oh. hard to say, but we're going to get one of those sweet matches coming up very soon. Oh, yes. We're getting the Sam and Brandon match next. Yes. Ooh. <laughs> okay. There we go. So let's take a look. Real quick, where is Sam's There it is. Yep, list? you have it. 42 shades of, of tiny bones. Yep. So, Sam's list, which was my personal favorite coming into this. Really fun deck list. Yeah. Uh, now, it's kind of interesting because I had thought it was going to be like a, a taxes shell. Yeah. First after Voidwalker. But it's just rogues. Yep. Even Bitter Blossom makes rogues. Voidwalker, rogue. Like, all of these cards. They're all rogues. They're all rogues. See, I, earlier I praised the, quote, small Una's Blackguard package. Yes. Opposition agent is a rogue. Yeah. Thieves uh, Guild Enforcer, obviously, I knew that one. So the only creature that isn't a rogue is Stoneforge. Stoneforge, Mystic? Esper Sentinel. And Esper Sentinel. And, and Loris. Oh, and Loris, that's yeah. Fine. That's That's almost a rogue. Yeah. Metamorph could be a rogue if it wanted to exactly, be. Exactly, yeah. So she's just black-white rogues, which is interesting. That's really cool. Yeah, seeing seeing a tribal synergy like that, I don't think we ever have. Mason yeah. had like an, a deck with some elves in it. Yes. But it wasn't an elf deck. It Whereas was, this distinctly yeah. feels like a rogue deck, and we also have Mason Yeah. on wizards and fairies. Yeah, Mason taking advantage of both of those tribal synergies to some level. Mason did also play a Goblins deck in one of the online Yeah, VRDs. that's true, he did, yeah, I and it to, was very good. I had to beat his Goblins deck so he wouldn't be undefeated. Yep, yeah. <laughs> the most stressful match of Magic I've ever played in my life, I think. Yeah. Uh, interesting, we didn't have Helm drafted either. Yeah, no Helm. Leyline's thing out here, just just exiling your graveyard, which is a little bit interesting with the Thieves Guild Enforcer on the other side of things. <laughs> Blyton just came in and flexed now that he's X1. He's, he's happy. flexing. X1 and flexing. Yeah. I love to see it. He bounced back real quick. Yeah. Good for him. Uh, and interestingly, she's the only one that has, like, removal in her main. Yes. There uh, is a little bit of anti-synergy with the Leyline and the Thieves Guild Enforcer, but that's a very minor thing. Not going right. to come up almost ever. Yeah, that that's the kind of thing that I think you're okay with, yeah. just because, like, 
whatever. And basically you know? everybody is doing something with their graveyard, so main decking ley line is actually is, is not the sweet. worst. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then over here for Brandon, we've all seen this list. Yeah. Uh, the mill package turns out not so great when you've got ley line of the void. Mm-hmm. Evercool, not so great to mill when you're facing down ley line of the void. Mm-hmm. Um, so that'll that'll be interesting. Let's take a look and see if we have them back up. We did see one of the uh, one of the games that happened off camera. Uh, Brandon was playing against Swifty. Brandon showed, like tipped his hand toward me and frowned, and I looked at his hand. His hand has fast bond, uh, lands, a boro, and ruin crab. That seems awesome for him. Yeah, he, he was <laughs> frowning because he was very unhappy that he was about to turn one swift. He was like, I feel bad about this. Like, look, statistically, this isn't going to happen even once a draft. Yeah, like, exactly. Like you you, you do it because you can. <laughs> you do it cause this is the who has to drive on the way home match. Yeah, incredible. exactly. I love it. So we've got Brandon on the left, Sam on the right. I mean, I can't help but root for like it's hard to root against Brandon. I love Brandon, but I, I gotta. I, just, I feel like I, I like Sam's root for Sam deck a lot and the Rogues package. This yeah. is so cool. Yeah, I I want to see it succeed. I wish that her win had been on camera. Yeah, same. Uh, because we saw her get rolled by the Lauren deck and infect, which is also it turns out a good strategy. Did we just roll the same number? We yeah, sure did. That's adorable. That's even more adorable. <laughs> Roll one die. Yeah. Do something different. <laughs> Look, if you roll the same Seven. number again, you right. both go to jail. Yeah, Monopoly you both go to rolls. jail. This this is Monops. Did she, did she add a third die? Tell me she added no. a third die. Oh, she, oh, she got one. my one. <laughs> All right, there we go. Yep, get those out of here. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Thespian Stage, Strip Mine, Crop Rot, Leyline, Mystical Tutor, Oboro... Other card. Pedal. Yeah, pedal. Ooh, uh, we're looking at Oh, we have Crucible. Pretty, yeah, crucible, we have crucible strip mine. But uh, we're also looking at a pretty quick depth stage line here yeah. with Crop Rot. Yeah. Meanwhile, uh, we've got Disenchant. Oh, fracture. that's. You know what that is in her hand? Oh. We have, we have pre game effects. We might have pre game effects. That would be very good. Yes. Yes, it uh, would. I am, I am going to step away to make sure she knows that card does what it does. I think I've seen her do pregame effects. Okay, there we there go. There it cool. is. Yep, right? there it is. Now, <laughs> Brandon. Oh, never mind. Strip mine doesn't work. Yep. Bajirkaberg. And turn one Bajirkaberg, just because that's never just, going to Yeah, get it. <laughs> get that out of here. No more graveyard for you, ever. All right. Well, the strip mine crucible plan has been effectively ruined. Yes. Uh, pedal, cool. Yeah, strip mine. Strip yeah. mine crop rotation. Up. Oh. Get rid of your bajuka bog. We're thinking about stripping, strip mining the bajukes. I I am not sure that strip mining the first land is a play I like when they didn't mulligan. Very rarely am I into strip mining their first land. If they mulligan, absolutely I'll run it out. Yeah, there ab- absolutely. But if it's not a mulligan, I'm not comfortable doing that. Right. I'd, I'd rather wait. I, I I would be more apt to use strip mine to either put Sam off a color or say or just use it as the land I sacrifice to crop rotation. Yeah, this, exactly. In this match. See, so we have a Thieves Guild Enforcer, which we can cast. Also has Flash, so not not super... Not pressed to do it right now. But we're going to, and then exile two cards from the top of your deck. Yep, those cards are gone forever. Hope we hit some sweet ones. Mana, Mana Vault, Vault Lotus Cobra. Lotus Cobra. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's a good point. If I have a bad hand and I have lots of lands, sure, I'll fire Yeah, that's fair, mine. yeah. If I, I also don't know that I... Lands yeah. Forever. It's contextual. Yeah, that's true. It's all contextual. No no white mana, importantly, because it looks like she does have Fracture in her hand. Yes, Fracture is in the hand. We're going to go ahead and play Sheldock Isle here. Let's take a look at the top four. Oh, what's... Oof. Those Dogen, are all cards. Karn, Hullbreacher, and Misty. Karn is going to... Dock at the port. Yeah, I think I think we put Karn in, and then you you let yourself get milled some with these this rogue nonsense. Yeah, 
And then you... Oh, Lattice. we're going no. Hall Breacher. Hall Breacher. Interesting. Now, Sam's not drawing a lot of cards outside of her draw step on That's her own. That's true, yeah. So the question is, is there... Does Brandon have Memory Jar? Yeah. Well, and we know... Because Bob puts into hand. It doesn't draw, yep. notably. And we know that's one of her advantage engines. But nope, there's no Memory Jar there. No Jar. Interesting. Show and tell. That is a very interesting pick. What do we got? No white man. Is that a fetch land? Nope, that's a swamp. That is a you swamp. Know, you know what fetches a white land, though? Demonic Tutor. Demonic Tutor. Sometimes you got a DT for a land. Sometimes yeah. you don't want to do it, but it's what you got to do sometimes. She does have Horus, too, so yeah. she can apply another clock. That's true. That's true. I once cast Gifts Ungiven for four lands. Yeah, I yeah. De definitely it's, have done that. It's not fun, but sometimes you have to do it. Yeah. Three mana. Yep. Boom. There's everyone's favorite cat, banned in all formats, and Thieves Guild coming in for one here. Got him. First blood. We should really get that as like an add-on. <laughs> I'll bring my stream deck next yeah, time. Please. We'll, we'll just press the first blood yeah. button. I'll set up the soundboard. That's good. We, we need that. Channel into nothing. Yep. Uh, Uncastable channel into nothing. Even better. Uncastable channel. Lewis of the Poor. Yeah, Lewis of the Poor Foresight. That's yeah. correct. And um, there we got a thespian stage. We doing it? We doing it. I, I like the name of the companion mechanic because it will be it will be with us until we die. Yeah, it will. <laughs> yep. It will haunt us for the rest of our days. Yeah. <laughs> uh, add... Add three mana to a to a to a card and yeah. it's still playable. So we it, funnily enough, we did say the one case where Ley Line is bad is with Thieves Guild and Forcery in yep. the very first game. That's what we get. Ooh, tiny bones. Yay! Oh, oh little tiny bones. Yeah. Tiny Bones just wants uh wants to steal soup for his family. Yeah. Uh, tiny Bones has a has a family of little skeletons that they're trying to feed. That's canon, by the way. It is, actually, <laughs> which is great. Mill two. Doesn't matter. I feel like you you pop Crot Rot? Mm. Just so the depths doesn't get milled? Yeah, no, I think you have to. Yeah. I think I think you have to to, to do the, the sad sad times lotus petal turn your strip mine into a uh, into a depth into a dark yeah. depths and, and just really really destroy your mana situation for Do the shell dock, do the shell dock, do the shell dock. Oh man, okay. No, nah, he's gonna float the colorless to do nothing with it. Wait, oh no, he can, no, oh, he can float it oh, to oh, activate my. Thespian stage to get a twenty twenty. Wow. Yeah. Which We'll win the game. Fracture destroys, does not exile. And Vanishing stroke exiles. Exiles. Sam still has no white mana, though. And does not have Vanishing Stroke in hand. But if we get a white source, yes. we can DT for that. Oh, my gosh. All right. Do, do we have this? But this is Sam's turn. Yeah, this this is on Sam. Oh, that's true. Yeah. So we just get a 2020. Yep. Yep. Brandon says, I don't have any lands anymore, but here's... My face. Yep. On Merit Lage. <laughs> Get this Dr. Pee Pee Poo Poo out of here. He's a physician from Medicine here's, University. Here's this card. <laughs> this is what this does. Yep. We all have to we all have to learn these these things. Indeed we do. The the amount I feel like like the amount of cards that Sam has had to learn. In such, I don't like that. That's very good. Yeah. The amount of cards that Sam has had to learn in such a short time is very impressive. Yeah, for sure. Been playing for mere months. Yeah. Yeah. And, and he's played now in multiple VRDs. VRDs, yeah. And a lot of the Discord ones, obviously, and, yeah. you know, this one. Has drafted some really cool decks. Yeah. Including the one we're looking at. Yeah. Yeah, I think this is a really this this is a really impressive impressive showing for somebody who's been playing for for such little time. Yeah. Unfortunately, Brandon has Merit Lage. Yes. And Brandon says, "I'm going to untap and I'm going to attack you, and you're going to die. So you might as well attack me and gain some life, so that I don't kill you in one turn." Yeah. <clears throat> oh, there we go. We're at twenty three. We we got a turn. Yep. So we can we can hit the white source. Sam is live to hit either the light so the white source or vanishing or vanishing verse. verse. Yeah, we have two One, hits two. here. Oh my! Sword supply shares also does it. Yeah. 
Oh yeah, she does have swords. That's mm-hmm. true. Mm-hmm. There's multiple. Out- there's 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 quite a few outs here. Quite now. a few outs. There's there's the two the removal spells that matter and the white mana sources. Yeah. Which includes the pearl. The yeah. Max pearl. Is yeah, in the there. pearl is in there. That's true. Attack you. You go to three. We got it. So you're saying there's a chance. Yeah. That's yeah. This is her second VRD, and she hasn't played anything other than cube and VRD. Yep. Oh no. Oh, that is not the removal spell we're looking for. Yeah. Sometimes your mana base just gets you, and this yep. is one of those times. Unfortunately, this is one of those times. We have four planes. Interesting that she went heavier on the swamps, having the Urborg. Yeah, I think um, I think she was probably led to that by her like the high number of, of yeah. double double yeah, black pips. So I think that's very reasonable. Yeah. She's got the yeah. I, heat, I guess if I changed pathway. anything, it would have been double. I, I would have run five and five rather yeah. than six and four, which is a minor change and does probably doesn't matter. It's also possible that the reason she ended up favoring the swamps over the plains because she also has the mox pearl, right? Yeah, that's true. Uh, yep, looking for anything. Oh yeah, it, Lily would have been great there. Mm. Liliana does do the job right off the top. There were quite a lot of outs. Yeah. She just did not find any of yeah. them. She's going to take a second, say, well, I can't cast swords to plowshares. Shuffle them up. These white cards don't help me. And that's it. She taps the swords to plowshares, knowing, yeah, wish I could have had that. That would have been great. Yep. What are we looking for? Vanishing Verse. That's what I wanted to look up. So, ah, yes. Notably, this was the first out that I jumped to, but there were multiple because, again, Sam has more removal than anyone in this draft. Yep. Oh, can't, we, it's working on it. We're we'll searching. It. Yeah. It takes a second sometimes when there's a card with the same ish, like when there's Vanishing. Yeah. It gets confused a little bit. Ah, oh, we got the good handshake. Wait, is, is that one. it? No, it was game one. Okay. Bad pick. Get out of here with that. <laughs> that pick's fine. It was a bad card to pick up from her deck in that moment, I yes. think, is what Mark is trying yes. to express. That's she fair. should have picked up a different card from the top of her yes. library. I think we've all been there. I, I've, I frequently want to pick up a different card from the top of my library than what I, what I get. So let's take a look here. If we are branded, what are we bringing in? So... This is an interesting match looking at Brandon's sideboard because I don't think his sideboard really addresses many of the problems that Sam's deck is trying to pose for there him. There is no Sylvan Safekeeper. Nope. We lack Sylvan Safekeeper. Reality Smasher, I think, is the only one because it's resilient to removal. Yes. You could bring in Reality Smasher. That's an option. Um, but it may honestly be better. Like It's either Reality Smasher or Leave It. Yeah, and I, I think it's probably Leave It. Yeah. Um, Sam, on the other hand... I like the balance plan a whole lot here. The balance absorb plan is very strong here. Yeah. Contamination is very strong here. Containment priest is good. Uh, yeah, maybe, maybe the, yeah, the contamination secure package. Yeah. Um, I think Heretic Kathar is very powerful here. Yes. Ooh, making all of Brandon's lands, lands under, come in, under tapped. Uh, yeah, that's huge. And uh, Vindicate could be could be yeah. solid as well here yeah. to pick off some of those problem lands. Yeah. Or just other problem permanents, something like a Crucible. Exactly, it, yeah. Just have another out for some stuff yeah. like that. And sure, the token's indestructible, but it gets... Yeah. That's being stage. It gets, you know, the relevant pieces there, yeah. yeah. It looks like Sam has uh, has picked out Vindicate in addition to potentially some other cards here, so that's good. Yes, she did draft Emo Sorin. Uh, yep. I, have, I haven't seen Emo Sorin on the battlefield yet, but I do like the flexibility that it brings to this list. Yeah, I don't know how many times it's been brought in or if it's been brought in, but it's an interesting card nonetheless. Yeah, I I think especially in a list like this, it is incredibly effective because it. Every mode is relevant yes. to your game plan. There's and no I think that's a problem with a lot of... Oh, there's no comma. Uh, I think that's a problem with a lot of walkers in this format. Yes. Is they have irrelevant modes to what you're doing. And Soren the Mirthless is one of the few that I feel like every single mode is relevant to this list. Yes. Uh, Elspeth Sun's Champion is another one that I think has all relevant modes. I love Elspeth Sun's Champion. It's, you know, six six mana is a lot. It is. I'll, I'll grant you. Yeah. It's very hard to cast a six mana spell in this format fairly. Yeah. But 
Uh, unless you're playing a lot of green. Yeah. In uh, which case, Elspeth Stone's champion may be a little bit off plan. Exactly. <laughs> but uh, it's, if you can cast it or, or put it into play, it's good. those modes are relevant. Yeah. And then Gideon Ally of Zendikar, which I think is just arguably one of the best walkers in the format. I love Gideon Ally of it, Zendikar. It, it does everything you want. I will admit I have an enormous soft spot for Gideon of the Trials, or uh, yes. as I like to call him, Gideon Himbo to the Gods. Um, <laughs> that's, that's that's my absolute favorite favorite Gideon, favorite Gideon just because I, I don't like losing games of Magic the Gathering, and, and yeah. that Gideon stopped me from losing games Yeah, that, that's the true. I, I never got to play it, which yeah. is really disappointing in VRD7. <laughs> I still really want to put it into play. I, I just haven't gotten it. Yeah. It's, it never, it, I never draw it. It's the worst. Uh, QB, that is a good point. Emo Thorn does not narrow it down so i have brought it up for everyone it is soren the mirthless he without mirth but with eternal life which sounds pretty boring he just stepped right <laughs> yeah. uh, he's 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 here to ask me if i've ever heard of closing the goddamn door is yeah. what i can see yeah. here just right out of that yeah. music video <laughs> yep. he's got black parade on exactly yeah his drink, yeah, and his drinking absinthe. Yeah, yes, that, that is yes. absolutely right. Canonical yeah. absinthe. You can't tell me otherwise. He's he's going to ask you why Pretty Hate Machine is the best Nine Inch Nails album. <laughs> and if you disagree, he will throw you out. He's gonna he's gonna eject you from his yeah. his mansion party. Yeah, all industrial all the time. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he he is right. He he is right. I agree. It is absolutely the best. Play line every game. Pre-game action every time. Yep. <laughs> that was Brandon's exasperated hand gesture. I love it. Yeah, that, that the still version is the superior version of that song, though, Mr. Hagen. The, the still album on Ooh. the second half. Oh, those are the best versions of all of his songs. Oh, we got a mill, too. Deal with it. Exile, your top two. You're losing Mana Vault, and you're losing and Misty. Misty. Oh. Losing the fetch land is a little bit yeah. of a bummer. Uh, Sam may have Leyline every game, but Brandon also has Crucible every game. Yes. So it's good that the <laughs> Sam has Leyline every game. Brandon going to go ahead and very carefully uh, switch his Bark Channel Pathway to Tide Channel Pathway there. There may have been an issue off camera where those cards, those two objects got separated by accident. But Ooh, we sorted that out. It's a ruined crab. Yeah, it's crab time. You're going to mill me? No, I'm milling you. <laughs> but she keeps her graveyard. She does. That's true. Yeah. Yeah, and, and now both times now, not not. Oh, look at that! That's a fracture for a crab. It that sure. kills a crab. Does fracture hit creatures? Uh, I think I that's like the one thing it doesn't hit. Artifact and channel. Oh yeah, sure enough, it does not hit creatures. We're Appreciate. gonna DT though. We got the DT. Sure, whatever. Sure. Tutor it up. Have get, fun. Get your swords to plowshares. Oh no, Lily. What 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 are we pointing out for Thieves Guild? I'm not sure. Yeah, okay. Mostly that it exists. Yes. I like Lily a lot here. I also like Lily a lot. I think I think Lily puts a lot of pressure on uh, on Brandon on both ends. Yeah. It does look like Brandon has tr tireless tracker in hand, but Lily will come down first. Yeah, so Lily will come down first, sack to the ruin crab. Yeah. If that's what she gets. Oh, we're we're fanning him out for the camera. Yeah, we gotta gotta show it off. Yeah. How do you feel about Lily Last Hope in this format? Uh, so, I think it depends a lot on the number of X ones that you feel like you're going to face, right? Yeah. Because I think that's the primary, like, a lot of what you're going to be doing if you're playing Liliana the Last Hope is, is yeah. you want to be picking off X ones. Yeah. If if you are experiencing a lot of Thalia, you know, two mana Thalia and other other utility creatures. It still seems very slow, though, as a yeah. three mana answer to those problems. I'm not a huge fan. Yeah, I talked myself out of it. <laughs> yeah, I I don't. The em, the thing is, the emblem is just so good. Yeah, if you have a shell that can abuse that emblem, like with a moat or something in an aggro heavy VRD, sure. I think it's great. The problem is finding the aggro heavy VRD, right? Yeah, not only finding the aggro heavy VRD, but in an aggro heavy VRD, finding the time to go get your moat at four mana, yeah, or, or whatever whatever other defensive man measures you can deploy, and then building Lily up to that level. Yeah, so. God the Shrine Plains, Douthy Voidwalker. Oh, Douthy. Cracking for Loris, that's rough. Paladin class and Zurin Orb. Oh, no, it's the kind Zor. of brutal no here. No more Zor yeah. balance. Yeah. Uh, 
and what are you can't fetch walking ballista off of prismatic he vista <laughs> wasn't wasn't there for a brief time an errata with island fist just conius where it was mistakenly errata to be an island <laughs> i don't know but uh, i i i, I, I really hope that yes happens because i hope that occurred. yeah so i could just fetch island fish off of my polluted delta yes that would have been great here's my here's my six power weirdo <laughs> yep, cutting one card, put it back. And you put it back. Yeah. I'm not moving your cards around. Those are your cards. Don't touch them. I don't touch those. I'll, I respect that. Oh, oh that's a Vindicate. Ooh, oh, we have an Esper Sentinel good. and a Vindicate. Oh, she got Bitter Blossom. Oh, wow. That seems really good here. I like this. Yeah. Bitter Blossom going to really apply a clock. Uh, Thieves Guild Enforcer uh, triggers when rogues enter the battlefield under you control, and fair, if Bitter Blossom makes fairy rogues. It sure does. <laughs> and that's not Esper Sentinel. I think that's... That's Bright Clan Pathway, Yeah, I think? Yeah, that's the yeah. flip land. So we're going to drop a Bitter Blossom and be milling every turn. Deploy the fairy rogues. Yep. Each opponent mills, too. I like this. I we like don't this. get anything yet. It's Tribal Fairy, not Tribal Rogue. Yep. Relevant. We're going to Mystical Tutor. Oh no, what are we what are we getting? What are we getting? This is a good question. What is Brandon gonna find with Mystical Tutor here? Brandon may be finding the Tutor, tutor chain. chain. Yep. Yep. Toot toot. Mystical for worldly. He's second guessing himself. Nope, he's locked in. Okay. I, I think he may be going here for the double crab. Yeah, oh yeah, mystical for worldly. Yeah. Worldly for Hedron. Yeah. Interesting. Although it's so slow. He, yeah, and he also can't draw and cast the crab <laughs> off the tutor. Uh, All right, there we go. One, one. One card. The your bottom card is now your top card. Well, your second from the bottom. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's worldly tutor. Who knew? There's right. a forest. I was like, does he have okay, a green yeah. source? Yeah, there we go. I had, I had questions. Mill three. Una's black card. No. Planes. Stoneforge, no! How good would Una's Blackguard have been here? Oh, man. So Insane. good. Does that trigger, does Una's Blackguard trigger on enters, or do you have to cast the, the rogues? I believe it's enters. Enters the battlefield. Oh, my gosh. Yep. Oh, that's a delight. Yep. So here's two mana, three mana. Oh, he has show and tell in his hand. He does. Yeah, so we're going we're gonna to uh, show and tell Emrakul. Worldly Tutor Emrakul. Yeah. Okay, all right. Brutal. That is rough. Mill, baby, mill. Yep. Yep. Time to mill. They did not mill. No milling. We're going to read the tireless tracker. Just check this one out. Do a little learning. Remember what this does. She's just keeping the Vindicate in case. I'm not sure what the I'm not sure what the plan with the, the Vindicate is, but up oh, we're milling. Oh! Ho, ho, ho. Did we hit Emrakul? Emrakul! Oh. Emrakul has been hit. Wow! That's huge. That that changes the entire Good landscape Lord. of this game. Yeah, that is absurd. Just going to check in on Tireless Tracker again, make sure we know. Are we just going to vindicate it and just get there? I, I feel no, like that's the plan now, I right? We're all aboard this. Tireless Tracker. I, I, feel yeah. like, I feel like you cannot suffer that particular card to live. Just say, all right, I'm going to match up the right removal spell. We're going to kill it. Kill it dead. Yep. Wow. And I'm glad we have the good Vindicate art, too. I appreciate our, our, yeah. our, 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 our art choice. choice. Yeah. It's the, the original Apocalypse Vindicate. With the good, the good art, the good flavor text. I believe justification in French. Oui, justification. Yep. I have a, I have an unopened French box of Apocalypse <laughs> that I that I like to pretend has, has the, the foil, foil vindicated. Yeah. <laughs> well, it, it could have anything, even yeah, the even the foil vindicated. Foil, yeah. So I just sort of, I just sort of imagine to myself yeah. that one day I will open that box and uh, and open the foil vindicate. And in reality, what's going to happen is I'm going to die, and that box Wait, will still be sealed. Did she just pass it back without swinging? I'm not sure. Chamao. And I think Brandon's question is, would you oh, like yeah. to attack me? Yeah. It, the flyer gets through. Yeah. Flyer, uh, the flyer came this turn. The oh, right. Came. Yeah, yeah. Flyer can't. Yeah, the question right, is, right. Uh, I mean, I guess 
Would you, you know, like to swing in to a zero yeah, three? Would you like to swing in for no reason? No. Okay. okay. So she has the right of it here. Don't yeah. attack. Yeah. Brandon definitely feels feels quite bad after losing his ever yeah. pool here. Very sad times for him. I think we know who's driving home. <laughs> this is this is game two, right? Yes, game two. Brandon's still gonna worldly tutor. Gosh, I wish I wish Sam had an instant speed rogue to flash. I in. know. But these Guild Enforcer. Obviously already here, the only instant speed rogue available right now. Brandon thinking about crab, thinking about hex drinker. Those are probably the two topmost in his mind. Ballista, maybe. Ballista does help deal with some of these X1s, the Enforcer in particular. Notably, it does not enter the battlefield off of show and tell. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. So we would have to cast it. Oh, yep. It's a crab. It could be anything. Yeah. Even a crab. <laughs> Even a crab. He does have to. I think I showed the camera and realized, wait, I do have to reveal Yeah, this I have to reveal this anyways. You guys get to know a second sooner, though. Well, I mean, I, I appreciate the early suspense. scoop. You know, su subscribe to my Patreon for early scoops on what Brandon is putting on top of his yes. deck with Worldly Tutor. If, yeah, I mean, if you can, if you find my Patreon, let me know. Yeah. I, I haven't seen it. <laughs> We're drawing a hedron crab. We're playing a hedron, a hedron crab. Do we have a land? Yeah, Ew, there we go. Yeah. Bop, bop. Oh, wow. That's, I mean, it, it's still mill six, but Wasteland doesn't feel great against no. the. It still does what it needs to do. It here, does. It mill six. For yeah. six. He's, he's trying to beat the, uh, the Bitter Blossom clock here. Yeah, which I think is. Very likely. At Dark Rex is yeah. gone, but he, he's absolutely beating the Bitter Blossom Clock yeah. here with these, these crabs. Assuming he, he continues lands. to draw lands. Yep. Um, there is a level of variability here there that Sam does not have. Oh. <laughs> now, Metamorph is very interesting here um, because you could Metamorph Thieves Guild Enforcer and up the, uh, the Milk Clock on your Bitter Blossom, right? Yeah. Or you could Metamorph one of the crabs from Brandon's side. Yeah, I, I think I like Thieves Guild Enforcer here, right? I like Thieves Guild Enforcer because it's also going to trigger Thieves Guild Enforcer uh, yeah. and itself. Yeah. True Name Nemesis did go undrafted today. Yes. Wow. T TNN went completely undrafted. I didn't realize yeah. that. I Especially in a draft where we had someone take Zealous Persecution. Yes. And Deluge. Yes. The fact that those weren't done in response to a TNN pick is kind of bizarre to me. Because it is such a, yep, and we're getting skill and four, sure. So we are milling four. Mill four. We are going to mill four every turn. Yep. Uh, and Brandon has to continue to top deck lands in yep. order to mill. Which, how many lands does he? Couple run? lands leaving Sheldock Isle out. Thespian stage out. We have eighteen lands in the list. Yeah, one of them. One of them, of course, is Dark Depths, so. which we saw go. So, secret, secret seventeen from the mana production standpoint. Wasteland going to come in and slap that bright climb pathway right out of existence. Well, as maybe soon not. As Sam finishes actually using it because she's the one with priority. Dang it! Yep. Well, or, she she tapped it for the oh, metamorph. Okay. So now now we're looking at damage, Got uh, it. Okay. which we we should we should be swinging. We we should be we did not swing. We didn't swing. Yeah. So so. Yeah, I think we would have wanted to swing with one of those one of those fairies there. Get in. Oh, oh yep, we're Flight milling. Drove. That's another six milled. Yep. I saw a planeswalker go by. That's bad news. Yeah, that's not great. That that was probably the time we would have seen Soar in the Marthless. Oh, we oh, saw no. him officially. We saw him. We saw him briefly. We saw we yeah. saw the corner of his loyalty abilities. Yes, yeah. it was Kaya. I don't. Yeah. Know. What could have been? I would have been happy to see either Soar or Kaya, frankly. Yeah. Yeah, and, and now, interestingly, the mill clocks are comparable just because Sam's milling every turn. Yes. So now I almost think you have to start applying the extra pressure of the fairy rogues. Yes. Because definitely. just the ability to be able to swing in and apply a different clock mm -hmm, is mm -hmm. huge. Now the question so, is, from, from from Brandon being on 20, let's let's say that attack happened last turn, Brandon goes to 19. Does that, or, or 8 to, oh, wait, no, 19, 19, yeah. yeah. Does that really matter? My my inclination is that no, it probably uh, doesn't. Yeah. It probably never comes up. Nissa hitting the graveyard here, or the exile zone rather. Yep. That's a big one. That's huge. I they, haven't I haven't seen Nissa in play for Brandon. No, yet. I haven't either. 
See, I'm taking a quick, quick look at the, the lay of the land, see what Brandon milled here. Gosh, I hope we hit some more rogues. I'm gonna go ahead and counter library. That's not a lot of cards. Eight? Something like eight. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeesh. Uh yeah, that's that's it's a hefty pile of exiled cards, but not quite as many as have been milled from Sam's side. But that was about nine lands, which yep. with the five is fourteen of the eighteen. So we do have four wins here. Yeah, okay. Uh notably. Now, having eight-ish turns to win, mm -hmm. those swings start to matter a whole lot more yep. since they compound every turn. We're so we're go down 18, to 18 now. here off yep. of those two fairy rogue attacks. Very sad that we don't have Uda's Black Guard here. Yeah. Isochron, Scepter, and Fracture, Fracture hanging out in the hand. Not doing a whole lot. So just put them together. Oh, we're, we're doing it! Pa pow All right. Well, I did. I did see Scepter Chant from Sam earlier. Unfortunately, Blyden was uh, was able to miscast yeah. the chant on the critical turn to win the game. But she did assemble it, which was very Drawing. cool. That's a six. That's a land. Oof. That's six. We got eight, maybe two, something like eight. Three. She's gonna have four, five. Uh, Six. There's not a lot of cards left. There's like one there. left, maybe. Yeah, okay, maybe there's at least two. one. I see the corner yeah. of a card. Yeah, <laughs> we have at least one there. Brandon says, go, I, I suppose. Two card. Oh, two cards left. Wow. One, two, three. Oh, that's a land. That's a Boro, even. That's very important. Yeah. Four. It's two the Yavamaya Coast. A Boro being the most important of the group. Yeah. All right, so what do we have Opposition, Opposition agent. agent. <laughs> Brandon already, I think, has spewed off his tutors here. Yeah. The fetch lands are gone. The Misty's in the in the exile pile. Opposition yep. agent, though, is a rogue, notably. Yes, it is. So that's very important here. That that's is an four extra cards. four cards. Yep. Does have flash as well. Yes. Can be deployed at surprise speed. But at some point... Doesn't really matter. Surprise! Surprise! It's it's opposition agent. Millmore. Two. Uh, under the scepter, we have Fracture. The black-white removal. That was Yavamaya Cradle of Growth. Yeah, an artifact enchantment or planeswalker. Brandon has either zero or one land left in his library. Yes. I'm not quite sure which number it is anymore, but it's either zero or one. Yeah. Brandon's going to take three. Look at his card. It's Channel. Uh, and it looks like we may have like five or six cards in Brandon's library here. Yeah, we may, so we're gonna may waste. be really close. Sam's going to be drawing her last card for, uh, this this upcoming turn. Which it has to be a rogue. Yeah. In order for her to win. Oh, oh, wait. Oh, is that four cards? Oh, my God. Is that four cards? I think that's four cards. Is he dead? No. How can... Wow. Did the mill deck just... Did Softshell Crab just get crabbed? <laughs> Give him the clamps, clamp. Oh my gosh, Mill four Two. one. He has five. Oh, he's got five. Wow. No. Did we draw a rogue? Is the last card a rogue? No. It's sword. No. Oh, oh no. It's swords to plowshares. Oh, oh man. So that was close. incredible. That was an amazing game. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Take get all these, your tokens, get you these tokens out of here, yeah. <laughs> that was a wonderful oh, match. Man. Oh, man. That was... So close. Oh, <laughs> just one off, man. One of, the, one of the best things about VRD is that you come here to play seven matches. Yeah. You play all the matches. And maybe you lose a bunch and not all your matches matter. I've been in that position. Not all your matches matter for, for prizes or whatever. But all your matches matter because you're playing them all in real life. Yeah. And that makes them so much more fun. Uh, and, it, and it was interesting talking to Alec earlier, and I said this on stream before, that he came to me and he was like, look, I've lost everything. Yeah. I've lost every match. I feel great about this event. I was like, well, why? And he said, the first one I came to, no idea. Right. I didn't know what I was doing, didn't know what it was. Yeah. Second time, I came in and had an idea of the deck I wanted. Mm -hmm. Third time now, 
I was way more disciplined in my picks. My picks were good. They were mm-hmm. the deck I wanted. They made sense with what was being drafted around yep. me. And it just and similar to when Nemo was here. Nemo did yes. one and was like, I feel great about this. Yeah. My record may have been 07, but I feel great because I learned so much about this format and how it works. I think and, that's one of the most important things. Your first draft, you learn a ton. Yeah. I made so many mistakes in my first VRD. Yeah. I was incredibly lucky to do as well as I did. Yeah. Like, I had a positive record at the end of the VRD, not because of anything I did well, but because I drew, like, tinker time, sweet Tinker Time Vault. Yeah, hands, exactly. Right? Like, yeah. I, I drew very well. Yeah. I learned a ton. Let's take a look at the standings real quick. So it is, in fact, for all the marbles, Mason and Blyden. Well, Mason, Wait, no, they played each other, right? Played, yeah. So so we have we have Dan and Blyden who are going to yes. play on camera. yes. And Mason still has to play his mystery opponent, right? We, I really don't know who that is. Do we think it's Alec? Maybe. I, Yeah, it, it could be. I thought I saw them play, but I may not have. I don't know. Yeah. But, uh, but we're going to see Dan at some point play Blyden. Yep. To see if Dan can, can pull Blyden down into the realm of two losses. Yes. Okay, Alec does have to play all the other three. Okay. Mark's here to tell us all about it. Yes, here we go. So let's take a look at the standings live while we have this explained to us. So so the situation is that we're going to have Jeff versus Dan with the Battle of the Juggernauts yes. uh, to see if we're going to have a, a potential tie, right? This is the, the, the final three that we know of right now. Yeah. Uh, in addition to that, we're also going to be having, in the corner, Alec playing all three of his opponents. <laughs> At uh, the same Dan. time. Yes. Yeah, we're gonna Simultaneously. Arch yeah. enemy, game <laughs> game. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, you know, Alex gonna Alex gonna be grinding through this as fast as he can. Probably get the last one over two of them on here, and then we'll see what happens. Yeah. Get... So does he have to play Mason then? He has to play Mason. So he doesn't it make Swift sense to him? have him play Mason first? Uh, because if Mason takes the loss and Blyden wins, I think we, we okay. We, they're currently playing. We're trying to get yeah, Alex no through games as fast as possible. Okay, sure. Yeah, yeah, no worries. Yeah, 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 yeah. So uh, we're going to get uh, Jeff and Dan to to see what happens there. And Great. Then that will be interesting either way. Right? Yes, if, yeah, for if sure. Jeff wins, he'll be six one, which means the Mason match suddenly becomes very interesting. Yeah, yeah. and if he loses, that means that if the Mason, Mason match becomes very interesting. Exactly. So yes, we're gonna get Mason on yeah. on stream after yeah. the Jeff and Dan match. Good. Okay. Cool. Because either way, that's that's a match for Mason's yeah. life. So who do we have here? We have Jeff on the left, and we have Dan uh, on the right. Light to you, by the way, uh, Mason is currently playing Alec. Oh, okay. So, ah, so okay. we'll All right. find out the result of that either way. Got it. Probably during the middle of this match. Gotcha. Yeah. Sure. Please, please chat it in, and I don't know where the title plates are for this. The notepad doc. Uh, check the check the taskbar somewhere. If you can get the taskbar, of course. Yeah, maybe. Uh, so that who's, was, who's that driving was. home? Brandon uh, just I, came in, so I, we're... I believe I am. Okay. <laughs> I believe you are, too. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, let me find my sweatshirt. And then I'll sure. All right, so we have Dan on the right, Jeff with the... Alt, uh, there we go. I'm happy either way. Yeah, I'll tie. Yeah. All right, we have the lovely Peter coming in for me. BRB. Mason just won. Okay. Got it in three. Mason is X1. Yep. He's 6 1. So we, we need Jeff to win to have him be the finals. Oh. Wow, okay. No pressure. This is a really exciting one. Brandon. Yeah. How you doing? Uh, I'm good. Yeah. You know, uh, it's always great to... I don't know if you guys can pick me up on that. A little bit, yeah. 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 Uh, it's always great to come out of one of these with a winning record. I think four and three is probably, what, fourth place? Something somewhere yeah. around there, yeah. You know, if I if breakers go in a very specific direction, mm-hmm. uh, you know, third or fourth. So, right. like, I'm happy with that. I went out in a fun way. Yes. And next time I can finally come back and do commentary. Instead. Yes. Yeah, you can join the team. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I have a question for yeah. you, but only because I saw it happen once. How many times did you cast Emrakul today? Cast? Like yes. actually cast? Actually yeah, cast. Yeah, cast. Uh, I think, I think only twice. Okay. May, maybe three times. Okay, I was there for the group think one. Yeah. The Where it's like, the, do we need to fetch? There's no fetchable land. How do I, we... 
Yeah. And they're I, channeling for two. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think uh, I was just trying to, I didn't know if he had like a lightning bolt or whatever. Mm-hmm. I, did, I have, this time mm-hmm. I was a little bit tired. I didn't look at any death list beforehand. Okay. So right. I was just trying to keep my life total at a maximum possible just in case it got goofed up. Yeah. yeah. But uh, yeah, cast that one. Um, I think I got it against uh, Alec as well. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. I think that was a channel. Mm. Yeah, it's still cast, channel still casting it. Yes, that counts. Because you had you have show and tell. I do. You have to show yeah. and tell. Yeah. yeah, that's why I asked specifically about cast. I don't care how you got the mana. I just wanted mm. to know if you paid the mana. Right, I did a couple <laughs> of occasions. Yep. Okay. Makes me happy. Yeah. Yes. Are you sticking right. around though? Or are you heading out? I'm sticking around. If Good. You, That's if you guys what. Want me around? Good. I'm, uh, yes. <laughs> cool. We you just you had that you were like putting on your sweatshirt. I was like, is he leaving? No, I just you know I yeah uh, got to let the people know who I'm repping. Definitely. Ah. Uh, oh, they can't see you. They can't see you right now. They can't see the CRJ sweatshirt. Well, you know, just if the time comes. Yeah. yeah when is... the time comes, Dan, we're we're starting off this sweet Dan versus Blyden match. Blyden playing for his life here. Mason is six and one. Yes. Jeff has to win this match to survive. Dan starting off hot. Uh, Oath of Nyssa under the uh, the the Chrome Mox here and the Forest means Eternal and Ikerclaw Mirror. Jeff gonna go ahead yeah. and Serum Visions. Jeff, as always, nice enough to flash his hand to the camera, but I could only make out the UC. <laughs> so uh, I'm flying blind now. He tried to help us. It didn't quite work out, but that's okay. He's a little too a little too fast. Yeah, he's he's trying to help. We appreciate that. The interesting part for me about Jeff's deck is it's very difficult to tell how close he is to. Either com either version of the combo. Yes. Which I, I imagine is terrifying for his opponents. hundred percent. Jeff Pit unmasked pitching Lazav. We've got a waterlogged grove, a berserk, and a Galera right. elemental uh, in the middle here. <laughs> it looks like a one mana value spell, maybe a green one. Uh, yes. Oh, it's moving a scale up. Scale up. <laughs> Get it out of and here. Rightfully so. All right, Berserk and uh and Waterlogged. Grove back to the hand here. Not so good without the scale up. Rancor coming down. Three, in fact, coming Jeff's way. Damage. That's so. a hot, hot top dick. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> so we're at an in, we're at an impasse now. Um, maybe, maybe not. Do we sack the waterlog grove to draw a card to see if we get the pump spell we need? Ah, the to wrestle away. The but that takes care reserve. of that. Yeah. That is rough. So Dan now back to a uh, a three more yeah. turn clock. Definitely got a cash in the waterlogged grove mm-hmm. here. Go ahead and draw another card. Two cards to work with. One of them a forest. Think, one of them I not. Think, I think it's an island in the forest. Oh, it's nope. Glistener. Oh, Glistener. Elf. Okay. Jeff is now facing down lethal, lethal poison on board. Jeff does have fatal push for the situation and blockers. You could deploy one of those blockers. Of Shadow course, Shadow Mage. Mage Infiltrator John Finkel, the legend, coming well, on down to the board here. Now, Iker Claw Mirror is the the mirror that gets larger yes. when blocked, so yes. it will clobber Finkel and well, come over. It, it and with Trample, it yes. means that actually Jeff 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 would be kind of sad if he blocked Iker exactly. Claw Mirror. <laughs> he should a, actually just block Listener Elf. It is a zero sum game if he chooses to block yeah. the Iker Claw Mirror. Yeah. Now, and we don't have any free spells. No, no free spells for, for Jeff, for Jeff right. other than the, uh, I mean... The Unmask. The Unmask, which is not really relevant here. Finkel, Shrinkle, down to a 0-2. Jeff at 9, Poison Counters. Finkel, Shrinkle is maybe the worst thing I've ever said on camera. <laughs> uh, I, I think some people would argue that it's a bet. <laughs> oh. Unearth popping off. Oh, is there anything is that to you on Earth? Just a cycle? Or are we just showing you that we got nothing? I think it might be we've got nothing. There is the opportunity to still win Thassa's Oracle. You need to land there, which is why I revealed the Unearth. Uh, ah, okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, it was a, it was a, I'm going to, I'm going to Craig Jones my, my uh, Lightning Helix yes. into play. <laughs> now, is a cycle on Unearth 3? Uh, you know, no, it's 2. It's 2. It is 2? Okay. Yeah. OG. Yeah, yeah that's, so that's, there yeah, did yeah. exist the opportunity to win. On Jeff's turn with Thassa's Oracle, in response, demonic consultation. Yes, correct. We, yes. we had if that he, opportunity. If he had the, the the right cards, or if he had gotten another land for who knows what in his hand, mm-hmm. he would have been able to do his thing. That did not pan out, and Dan's going to take the yeah. first game of this match. And that is actually why I do think playing against Jeff is terrifying. Yes, because one poison away from dead with anything off the top, yes. you could just lose on the spot. Before we before we go to the sideboards, can we go to the cast review for just a second? We can absolutely do that. 
I just want people to see Brandon and his wonderful sweatshirt. Hey guys, <laughs> it's it's important that we see on? this and history. I appreciate it. I mean, yeah. look, your your hair has all of the energy that mine doesn't. That's what matters. Yeah, right. <laughs> yours has <laughs> given I, its you know energy. Yeah. yeah, no, um, it's a gift. Yeah, really, no, <laughs> it's a blessing and a curse. <laughs> So I've got a question about Jeff's deck. Yeah, is Shadow yes. Mage Infiltrator, uh, kind of an old head, just like flavor pick. Is there something better than that in that spot, or what? 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 What is the motivation that Jeff has for getting Shadow Mage Infiltrator? He's not doing any ninjutsu yeah. shenanigans or anything. No, like that. I think I think it is no. largely just like this is a good blue black card that I remember being a good blue black card, and I sure. want to cast this good blue yeah. black card. I don't think it's very good. It fear is an interesting keyword in yes. this environment, so we can't really forsake that. But I think it's the fact that it's just a better Ophidian. Yeah. And so it shores up a couple of things, which is I want to be able to just draw a card every turn. Sure. Right? Essentially for free. And you get that with fear. You you, you could play two other cards in that spot, any other creature in curiosity. Or something else that draws a card, and I just think this might be the most efficient way to do that. But to your end, it only draws one card a turn, and I'm sure there's a better way to draw more than one card for three mana. Yeah, it does It does seem like the kind of card that just is very replaceable yeah. here. And we don't have uh, a force no. of any color. Is it Suspicious card. Stowaway that's the... Yeah, that's the one I'm thinking that, of. That might have been... I was like, is it Shipwreck Stowaway? But it's Suspicious Stowaway. That's the uh, Suspicious Stowaway into Seafaring Werewolf. Uh, So this is an unblockable card that when it deals damage, combat damage, you get to loot. And then, of course, it's going to flip into something even more exciting that's also green. Uh, It it flips into a 2-1 that can't be blocked, and when it hits, you draw. Okay. So I think I this this was a card that I was thinking about for like a, a blue a blue based beatdown deck mm-hmm. that uh, that I think is would have been very good in this spot yeah. and also happens to cost less. When was Shadow Mage taken in the draft? Mid. Wait. Yeah. Okay. It was this late? It was after both forces. Well, obviously, after both yeah. forces were gone. I, I. It does. It does pitch to unmask, unmask which is but, and grief. Yes, and um, um and that that's actually a very good point. Yeah. For. If you're running two of those cards, yeah, uh, I mean, because apples to apples, like clearly suspicious stowaway is better. Yes, I would take what Jeff picked with that just to get that extra utility for those those two cards. I think that's yeah the would, the, the idea that you can pitch it to unmasking grief is huge. Yeah, uh, and if Jeff had decided to, if we saw a heavier creature based format, maybe the idea of moving into the black pitch spell from alliances that I can never remember. I always think it's contagion, and that is the wrong card. It it is it is contagion. Is it? I thought contagion was the. Ah, uh... uh, okay, okay. The pro the promo oh, van came. This is from. Uh, and dropped from off. Oh, nice. Dropped off. Uh, Bree Bree dropped off some uh, judge promos. I thought contagion was the black blood moon. That's contamination. Contamination. That's okay. the one that uh, Sam has actually. Okay. Yeah, that so, was, did that ever get cast? Did we ever see contamination? I have not seen contamination get cast. I, was, I really wanted to see somebody get contamination. Yeah. I think it went into the graveyard against me. Ah, uh, okay. Crabs did their job. Yeah, I, I was pretty sure she would bring it in against you, and I'm glad she did, but I'm sad. It, I'm, I, I love you. I'm sad it got milled. Uh, that's totally fair. <laughs> <laughs> I don't disagree with that assessment. Uh, so while they're still shuffling up, I do just have to say, number one, just round of applause for my lovely girlfriend, Sam. Yeah. Doing possibly the hardest thing you can do as a newcomer to Magic, which is play in this format. Oh, my gosh. Oh, yes. And not only that, but on camera, she managed to have a or play a game against me in which something happened that in my 25 years of playing Magic, I have never experienced, which is both players having zero cards left in deck naturally. That was not, incredible. I, that was, it was just tremendous. <laughs> like, was that game one? Uh, it was game two. Game two, okay. Uh, the crabs versus the rose. Yeah, for, got it. For mill effects. Yeah, we were having a very uh, heated discussion about the moto economy. <laughs> and uh, the oh, issue with vintage okay. box right now. <laughs> yeah, you... Oh, yeah, the, the, the vintage win trading? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's real rough. Yeah. I saw I saw Justin, uh, you know, right, talking about that on yeah. Twitter the other day. Yep. Looks like we are making our way into game two here. Jeff mm-hmm. starting off. He is down a game here. Justin Island pass no... No uh, ponder, no serum vision. No, yeah, no, no draw, no discard, nothing here. Botanical sanctum for Dan. Okay. 
Duress. Yeah. No. Met with the spell pierced. Duress so getting you... spell pierced. Very nice botanical sanctum doing its grim work here. As as Dan now now reduced to being basically Mason's enforcer here. Oh wait, there's no way he's. Did he sideboard? No, he didn't sideboard into persistent petitioners. Okay. No, I, I I would I could would not expect that he would do that. I he's trying to got to try to outspeed Jeff, right? I, is that a oh that's a Tasha's though. Uh, that is a Tasha's hideous laughter. Uh, oh. That is that could be a big problem it's for Jeff. Twenty here. mana value total, 20, right? So that's four, five, nine. nine. This looks like me casting 12, at nauseam. Fifteen. 15. What, Seventeen. Nineteen. And there we are. That was a lot of mill. Yeah. The reason why I asked Dan Sided into Persistent Petitioner was because he played an island, uh, sorry, played the Tropical Islands, no Infector, and passed the turn. Actually, I should go say hi to Bree before they leave or something. I don't know how long they're staying, but I need to make sure I say hi to them. So, yep. so hop on in here, my friend. Okay, so I would love to saddle on up. And there's a Shadow Mage Infiltrator put in work. Well, you know. What it does. Dress on turn two into Shadow Mage on turn three, draw a card turn four. Living the dream. Yeah, I mean, Jeff's been around this game for a very long time. He knows how to get uh, efficient turns in. We were talking about, uh, out uh, again, during the your previous round about how the the he's, idea he's of... better than I am? No, no, no. The idea of VRD is kind of similar to like Vintage Cube, where it's just a lot of the most powerful cards, and so you expect to see a lot of the same things overall until you have somebody who wants to play esoteric odds and ends, like Jeff. Yeah. Because just two drafted a bunch of cards nobody's seen in 15 years. Yeah. So we're hemming. I was pleased to see uh, somebody, and of, of course it was Jeff, uh, finally draft Lim Duel's Vault. I've, I've, I've been saying for a while, after just like randomly coming across that card in, mm -hmm. in a box, that this is a very good VRD card. If yes. If you're in... Uh, 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 Oracle? Or just in, in, in just general? In Demir, yeah. yeah. Um, and so I'm happy that Jeff decided that it was time. Let me bring that up. I want to make sure it's the card I'm thinking of because it's uh yeah, which where you just keep Blue looking black. at five, right? You can choose to keep looking at five. I believe it is. The system has picked up the card, but has no image for us. Zoot Elor. Uh, we might be able to pull it up on Moxfield for. Oh, there, oh, there we go. go. Oh, so it was reprinted in the commander set. So it's originally from Alliances, I believe. Yes, I oh, can verify It's that. been picked in 12 of 63 drafts. Was not aware of that. Mm -hmm. Top five. Yeah. And you get you get to repeat. I mean, it, this is the perfect deck for it, which yes, just goes to show uh, how much support this combo has and the fact that we are just now uh, having dedicated Bosses Oracles packages in VRD. Mm -hmm. Uh it's simultaneously a little bit confusing, and it's it's refreshing that this is kind of uh, where one of the main archetypes is heading. I, I've also heard that Jeff is a very good CEDH player. Yes. And very knowledgeable in that format. And if you floated around EDH Commander Twitter long enough, you will have seen inevitably people chiming in, chiming in about CEDH needing to be, to be handled by the RC and the overall rules committee because Thos' Oracle is running okay. rampant in that format. And so... I, if I had to guess, and I haven't talked to Jeff about this, that a lot of that experience has probably started to bleed in. Probably. And, you know, I was talking about this last night, that this is the deck that I was planning on playing. Yes. Um, but uh, so we see that uh, the the Bog Witch, I believe. Divining <laughs> Witch. Divining Witch, excuse me, uh, has hit the battlefield. Uh, so we're Surefire signal that, oh, uh, uh, there it is. There's the Thoracle. And I, uh, I don't know that Dan has anything... Uh, so can, we're going to hold priority that. here, and we're going to activate Divining Witch in response to the Thoracle ETB trigger. Discard Unearth, name yep. a card that isn't in our deck, and reveal cards off the top of our library until we find that card, or hit the end of our library, then exile those cards. Mm -hmm. And when you have then, no cards in library... Then the Thassa's Oracle trigger just says, uh, Scry, uh, oh, you win the game. Yes. Because there's nothing left. Because, great, great, great. That's yeah. a, this is a super fun win condition to put on a random little... You drop Merfolk. It was a lot more fair when it was just Laboratory Maniac, and you had to do the work yeah. of drawing a card. Yeah. 
I uh, I would tend to agree that Thassa's, Thassa's Oracle is probably just like a mistake of a card. Uh, like the fact that it can't like if that triggers on the stack. Yeah, I th- I think yeah. Thassa's Oracle is is overall a really interesting card when you look at Magic from the Pioneer format on forward. And it speaks to the idea that Watsi is correct in the fact that they really don't balance cards for older formats because the moment yeah. this card was printed, almost every one of those formats became a hellscape. Like yeah. ad nauseum decks with Thassa's Oracle t- like, took over Modern for a week or so. I just generally don't think that any card that only costs two mana mm-hmm. should give you the ability to win the game. I don't think there's... Yeah, because Laboratory Mania costs three, right? mm-hmm. not four. Right. right. And Platinum Angel costs a million, but that just keeps you from losing the game. Yeah. I mean, you've got Felidar Sovereign, you got Battle of Wits, and all of these have pretty ridiculous win, win con- or, you know, conditions on, on it. Yeah. And uh, Thassa's Oracle is not that outrageous to achieve. No, not at all. Obviously, you really only come into uh, issues with it when it, you're talking about vintage or CD, CEDH. Mm-hmm. Obviously, this is kind of a subset of vintage, so yes. we see it here in VRD. Uh, I think it's perfectly at like fine in this format. There's you know, there's time vault. There's yes, it, uh, there are there's, there's hedron crab. There's ruin crab. You know, the, we, we saw really on stream just... we, the the vintage gotcha hand of vault. Soul Ring, Manifold yeah. Key, Untap Soul Ring, Time Vault. Yeah. Against Jeff. Yeah. Like, just classic gotcha. That Boom. When everything, when everything you have the ability to draft can be just this degenerate, it, it all kind of comes out in the wash. Yeah. Mulling to five. Who? Ooh. Dan. Dan is mulling to five. That is, a, that is a low number of cards to have, especially for an Infect deck. Uh, the, this is the, the meme I love seeing of uh, Jim from The Office behind a set of blinds, and it says, uh, the thoughts use in your hand as your opponent mulls to five. And he's just smiling. <laughs> and it's like, Jeff has Unmask and Duress and Grief. And all those cards are going to be very happy. It, it, this, this does not look good for Dan. Yeah. It we, looks like Jeff is going to... Uh, I mean... We've seen this in so many VRDs where it's like, oh, how are you going to come back from this? And then it's just, you, you, they have to play the game of Magic. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but um, it will be tough unless... Infect can win off very few cards, especially yeah. with Berserk. You need a land. Uh, so one land, Glistener Elf. Which has just hit the board. Yep. Invigorate and Berserk. All right. Oh, oh, and Jeff passes. So this is exactly the start that Dan needed. Uh, mm-hmm. to get out of this. If we have Invigorate Berserk and no response from Jeff, that's the game. Yeah, I don't know if... He would, yeah, I guess he's got four cards. We ha- I see a Blossoming so he, Defense. Is that a Blossoming Defense or a Blighted Age? There's de- there could be both. There's definitely a Blossoming Defense. Oh, in and, a, and a land. Oh, a Spell Snare. So I guess oh, Divining okay. Wish and Thassa's Oracle. Uh, that's, oh, that's nice. Yeah, Yeah. So two sides of that, that combo. One thing we've seen where Jeff uh, that could have caused Jeff, Jeff to lose the game is... He doesn't use his discard aggressively. It's very kind of like almost reactionary. He oh, he certainly his used combo. his discard aggressively against me. I will say. Okay. I will say that he finally got my nimble obstructionist on uh, uh, on the third discard. Mm. Which I was Here's Lumdell's vault. So this is the alliance's art. Okay, and so is he? I'm sorry to interrupt. No, no, not at all. Um, is he going to try to get Oracle here? Or maybe grief. Does that leave him in? A, I mean, I guess we don't know what else is in Jeff's hand because he still has four other cards. But. So I think we're just we're. This is on the stack. I guess Dan is holding priority here to determine whether or not he wants to hit this with spell snare. So he's probably crunching the same numbers we are. What what is the follow up here? What are we looking for? I think. Oh, oh. So is that? A, oh, that is a spell snare on the on the vault. Yes. Okay, now is that the end of Dan's turn? Yeah, I feel like that means Blyden probably has uh, the consultation in hand. Okay. And then here's the witch? Yeah. Yes. So, as opposed to... Uh, as opposed to the demonic consultation, we've got the witch, witch. and yes. it will uh, be ready to rock next turn. Oh. And it will not. That's miscalculation. 
This is going very well for Dan. Yes. Uh, relative to uh, that start. It's interesting because, in fact, these are both combo decks. Mm -hmm. So one of them has to attempt to be the beatdown. You know, that is one of the, the articles people cite as like being tantamount to their understanding of the game. The Mike Flores article, who's the beatdown. Yeah. And when you're playing combo, you only have so many sideboard slots to dedicate to change your deck enough to maintain your velocity mm -hmm. and deal with what's going on. And it looks like Dan has just brought everything in that he could possibly bring in to interact with Jeff. You know, we might... Those early hands might have been good infect hands, but just didn't have the protection that he was looking for. Yeah. It, his list seems very tight. Yes. Uh, that he's got a lot of room to kind of mess around, because it's all one drops, two drops. I don't... I don't know that he's got any... There's oh, all so he's got the... Gem Razor. I don't even yes. know what this card does. I'm not even going to look at it. It's, na it's naturalized. But, it's yeah. Reclamation Siege, whatever you want to call it. It yeah. just makes the Infector a 4-4. Four, four, yeah. Uh, right? And then he, yeah, in terms of uh, three drops, he just has the Invigorate and Oko. Invigorate's not a three drop. Nope. Uh, so it's just Oko. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so here's Lab Maniac. So as it stands right now, I think the only way out of this for Jeff is Demonic Consultations with the Divining Witch down. I don't think we have another way to... Oh, he's unearthing the, the Witch. The Divining Witch. This this does look bad for Dan at this yeah. point because uh, he is it. It seems like he is in top deck mode. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we said that he has a blossoming defense. I here. thought it was blossoming defense. I maybe. guess it might have been uh, either the miscalculation or the spell, spell snare. snare. Yeah, I think spell snare probably resembles it a little bit more. A little bit, yeah. Our yeah. perspective. Yeah. All right. Has eight power and pump in his hand. Oh, okay. Okay, so, well, so we are just getting word that Dan has an eight power pump in his hand uh, at three poison counter. If Jeff does not block and does, and he's tapped out. Mm -hmm. uh, this is this. It comes down to this, and so I, you I think Dan, I think this means Dan wins because he has to have both of those creatures. Uh, Jeff has to have both of those creatures in play mm -hmm. in order to pick up the W. Yes, you can and afford... And if he doesn't block, it's over. And there it is. There it is. Oh! And there it is. I don't know if you guys can hear this, but everyone in there just erupted. I can see that's groundswell, and that's wild. about it. And that puts both of them at 5-2, and two, and so we're going to see a rematch of these two in the finals, yes. unless, unless Mason also ended up going 5-2. and two. An incredible... Boom! That's seven, baby! Oh, yes! Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's get back to the let's caster, go. Hume. All right, Ma or is Mason stick around, or is he leaving? Uh, I mean, I can stick around for a minute. It's up to you. I that was, yeah. think that's game, right, baby? Yeah. That was a... Yeah. That was a because you, you can't afford to block with the Laboratory Maniac. It can, it can take two counters before you it's, have no way to win the game if you're Jeff. It's, it's, so a singular pump spell, because the minimum is yeah. plus two, plus two on a pump spell. He had Inverter in hand... Jeff yes. Yeah. So, like, maybe he can try to block the Diabolic Edict guy. Or uh, the Divining Witch. The Divining Witch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I don't know. It's close. You, it's like, close. Wow. And he, it's not that many combinations of cards that can't No, so what happens if, 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 yeah, yeah. Congratulations, Mason. Woo! If, if you, wow! yeah. Did you, did you go 6-1? Nice. If you Inverter in that spot, you almost put yourself in this Whoa. weird uh, deck stack like you're a Doomsday deck. Funny. Like, playing in the absolute dark where it's like you have to go like runner runner on draw spells like a doomsday deck would to I, win under thoracle if you invert her in that spot so i'm gonna get up at this point because we now have the two time in the room ready to talk to you uh you won with elves right yeah so we got the two time champ here i'm as as the former i'm gonna exit let mason talk about his dub yeah come on in You did it all off <laughs> off cam too, right? You only had one feature um, match today. Unfortunately, yeah, I'm kind of bummed about that. But you know, I guess it is what it is. I the matches were kind of like going by furiously. Some people need to like finish quickly to get out of here. And, yep. Yeah. So you know, kind of kind of a bummer, but it is what it is. I had a really fun time. I thought this was one of the the closer sort of matches. Like I said, everyone, like I was saying before, everyone kind of had these mid rangey sort of interactive decks. Mm -hmm. So it made for some really interesting matchups. Yeah. So we, I'll, I'll bring your deck up, and I'll, I'll put it up on, on camera now that we have it up. Because when you came yeah, in before, we we still had, we didn't have your mock field set up. You came right in. You didn't have the time, right? So mm -hmm. we can actually take yeah, a look right. at this. 
So the, this with this work of art. So you were on camera oh. one time today? Uh, yes, I think for the second match of the day or something. Like that. Something like that. For, yeah, first or second match of the day. Yeah. So I ha like so the, the list came together. Yes. Yes. Uh, everything worked really, really beautifully. I got to do. I mean, I basically got to do everything. I got to kill the Aluren player with his Aluren. I got to kill the Painter Grindstone player with his Painter Grindstone. I got to loop uh, Venser with Mystic Sanctuary and Caracas to cast Time Walk infinitely. I got to, uh, you know, Aether Vial in three drops with, uh, like, free counterspell backups. Yep. I got to Aether Vial in Lutri a lot, which was sweet. Nice. Oh, Did you actually end good. up copying anything with Lutri? Oh, I copied a ton of stuff with Lutri. I think I copied... I think I, like, used and... I, I used Lutri to his fullest in almost every game that I played. Okay. Not just match, but almost every game I was putting into my hand and using it. Okay, so... To either double up on recalls or treasure cruises or time walks yep. or sometimes, like, force spikes, but, you know. So I didn't ask you this when you came in before, I guess you had, maybe you hadn't settled on the list yet, but we weren't sure if we would see Lutri in the main or the sideboard. Aether Vial hmm. speaks to either or still being in question. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think like you get so much value out of having access to it as your companion that you should probably always try to do that. Mm -hmm. Like Luris, I can see because the, the deck building restriction is so harsh, but Lutri is so free. Yeah, you might as well. So what, what, was Lutri actually the companion? Because on Moxfield, we just see Yeah, the yeah. So time. I was like asking, oh, how should I list it so that it, you know, yep. they know that I have it and everything. But yeah, it was my 41st card. It was, it was okay. my companion. Okay. Because, um, the, yeah, it, it makes sense there. Mm -hmm. yeah, absolutely. I, and honestly, like, I actually think, I thought my deck was going to be very good, and I think it actually worked a little bit better than I thought it was going to. Mm -hmm. um, there was still room for improvement. I could have made some, probably, m improvements. In terms uh, of build, or...? Probably as far as recognizing blue-white was going to be the open color combination. Yep. Instead of holding out hope that I was going to be either blue-red or blue-green. Okay. Uh, and just maybe working my, my sideboard and stuff to be a little bit more holistically sound. Okay, because we noted that Prismatic Ending hadn't been taken, March of the Otherworldly Light wasn't taken, I don't think Path to Exile was taken. There was some good white... Removal slash removal temple spells, spells left on. Yeah, and with the the, the mid rangey way the the draft kind of shook out a card like March of the Otherworldly Light. Yep, probably would have been great. Okay, so you know I didn't pick some cards like Prismatic uh, just because I wanted to make sure I could play as as much of a flash game as possible. And with Teferi three picked so early in the draft, that kind of yeah. Mm -hmm. Puts the kibosh on That's that. That's why I was thinking Blue White was not going to be it. But like mm -hmm. when you look at the lands, Tundra was like. Last yeah, so it was a very late pick, I, so, know, I realized. You know, kind of makes for an interesting time. And I think blue-black could have maybe worked out, too. Mm -hmm. But uh, obviously there were several other well-performing blue-black. Yeah, picks, Fatal Push so. was taken, so you had, like, Edict and then the two C the two mana value removal spells. Uh, mm -hmm. So it puts you in a little more rougher spot from a mana value perspective. If you, you want to try and be, like, really trim on that. And, right. And dedicate your spells to, like, your tempo spells that you're one and two slide in blue black might not have been the, the best option there. Yeah, it's kind of tough. And, you know, you can't always just stick with mono blue. My plan was to stick with mono blue before I got it in my head that spell color was going to be great. Mm -hmm. And also, I was going to play Caracas in my mono blue deck, so then I'm like, eh, Tundra and Hollowed Fountain are like the last lands anyone could ever possibly take. I've got yep. Caracas already. It's not that hard to just slide, slide it in, in there. there. So, so we, we talked earlier when you were in here that Caracas might not be great today overall because just yeah. the lack of legends. Yeah. Um... I didn't use it on my opponent's stuff very often. I think I tried to use it on, um, oh shoot, what's it? Uh, Corey, I think, had the Kiki Jiki yes. flip card. Yep. For some reason, I thought that was legendary, so I tried to bounce it. He told me, no, obviously it's not. It's, uh, <laughs> it's an enchantment creature. Yep. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, there, well. there's not enough room on that, that type like, line. Yeah, there was like, I, it, the, the sleeves had some glare, so I was like trying to look. I was like, what is that? That's a super type, right? It's probably legendary. I'll just bounce it. He's like, no, that's enchantment. Okay, so it was. So it's just like um, shenanigans on your own side of the board yeah, then? Yeah, but it was very good on, at doing that. Between yes. Bendillion Click and Benser, I was bouncing my own stuff uh, in one of my very first matches. Oh, and Lutri. Lutri, okay. And Lutri, mind you. Uh, in one of my very first matches, I was 
Viling Venser, bouncing it with Riptide Lab, playing it, and then cracking it back to my hand mm-hmm. all in the same turn. Yep. And it was not fun for anybody involved. It took that game took like forty minutes. Oh, okay, crazy. yeah, because you're just like slowly eating away somebody's board like you would see a Miracles player and it like was it's like, just like yeah, it was chew just it up, chew it up. Painfully, it was like capsize locking somebody, but slower. Yeah, yeah. Where, like, <laughs> where it's not even a zero sum game; it's a negative sum game. Yeah, 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 yeah. it was rough. It was rough. Yeah, it, but I mean, honestly, and again, Lutri was just incredible all day. Yeah. so good. We noted that. Uh, when you picked it, this is the only card that has more picks than drafts because this card was made available after it being spoiled, but before it was a legally a legal card. <laughs> because the in the Aquarius spoil a spoiler, this came out very early uh-huh. in, in yeah. this in the season, so oh, it was really actually funny. picked before Aquarius was legal. Mm-hmm. That's they just really funny. Floated this one through, so it's like eighteen of seventeen, yeah. something wow. like that. It's the only card. Honestly, I think. I think all of, there are like probably four companions or something that should see more play and get more love. Like Lutri is great in the mm-hmm. companion slot because he's so free yep. and he's good in a few different, very, very easy to play decks or, or a few very, very, I shouldn't say that. I should say a few very good and very versatile decks. You yes. can play him a lot of different color combinations and he's good basically across the board. Mm-hmm. But Yorin, I think is very good as a companion. Luris is certainly good as a companion. Mm-hmm. Uh, that one big five mana elk guy, Giganta. Giganta. I yes. think that card's probably good. You just have to think about it a little bit, but I'm sure that there are builds where that's good. I actually think maybe uh, Niv Mizzet mid range deck. Five C Niv Mizzet. Yeah, 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 yeah. The one that draws you a ton of cards. Yeah, because you need to basically play guild colors, which means unless you're doing something weird like Plasma Capture, where you have double pips. Yeah, like that. I think I think generally you can play a bunch of charms and a bunch of different multicolor cards like that. And yeah, exactly. A lot of one- like, you, you, like, I think if you were going to go back to, like, uh, Invasion, Plane Shift Apocalypse block and just look there, you're going to find a lot of what you need for the Nemizid deck in this format. Like, you, yeah. when you play it in, is it, is it Pioneer and Historic? Yeah. You don't have access to all those cards, so the deck looks a, a little yeah. But short. you get access to, like, Colagon's Command and stuff. And oh, yeah. Boy, yeah. howdy, are those cards not Oh, stuff. absolutely. Um, Bant Charm? What about Zerta? As a companion or... A... Um, oh, Zerta's super busted. Yeah, Zerta's yeah. insane. Okay. Uh, the fact that... Uh, so in this draft, we didn't really have a ton of dedicated artifact players, which mm-hmm. is pretty different. Yep. Uh, we had a lot more mid range decks and yes. a lot of people staying away from a lot of the really artifact-centric builds. Um, but the artifact-centric decks are generally some of the most popular. And the fact that every artifact-centric player does mm-hmm. not start by trying to draft a Zerta deck is crazy to me. Yes. Zerta's insane. I, I've gotten the pleasure of drafting it in a sort of dedicated Bomberman combo deck once. Mm-hmm. It's completely insane. Speaking it's, of Bomberman, it absolutely busted. Uh, the reality chip was a card that didn't go by, but actually looks like it might have been decent in your deck. Um, It's really expensive. For the re- I think. Right? Two, it costs two it costs five two. mana to get Total? it equipped up to yeah. something. It's two and three, right? I think that's tough. Okay. I think that five mana is quite a bit. I really wanted to try it if oh, I tried playing Affinity. Uh, it was on my it was on my list of like new cards that I really think could be very cool okay. uh, in that archetype. Mm-hmm. Um, I think you just have to be kind of careful. Also, playing cards off the top of your deck is insanely powerful. Well, that's why I think it would be good in your deck. It is a creature, so it could slide through the vial. Yeah. Okay. So there you go. So you can make it a little cheaper that yeah, way. Yeah. That's kinda, what I kind of get it. But get it on something for three minutes. Yeah. To your point, it still costs three minutes sorcery speed, right? Because mm-hmm. you don't get the bonus of being able to cast cards off the top until you actually equip it. Right. And it also lets you play lands. So actually, I think this would have been a very cool card to see in um, Brandon's deck. Okay. Uh, because Fast Bond, playing car- playing lands on the top of your deck. I don't know that he had Corsair of Crucifix. No, Oracle. Brandon went through a number of decision trees to get where he was throughout the draft. Yeah. The it was, deck- he looked like he was kind of finding his way through it. Yeah. Um, the, the, the plan was to start essentially do something with Fast Bond. And right. it did end up there, but... The idea of the deck was more along the lines of the mill deck. He mm-hmm. did get the the crabs, but did not get the rest of the suite that he wanted to. Yeah. So he still kind of stuck with that. And with uh, with fast bond, it works out really well. So because he's playing off mm-hmm. the top, but he was kind of in crunch time because everybody kept like those decks were the ones playing footsie with each mm-hmm. other. Right. Uh, and so as cards kept, it seemed like as cards were taken out from underneath him, he just started to like to scramble a little bit for some playable. Yeah. So it's like, all right, this is the next one on the list, and then like. Yeah, one mm-hmm. of the other two players doing the same thing would, would grab right, him, right? And it's like, right. 
That's oh. definitely tough. And I saw him do some really great things with um, Ouroboro or Oboro. Oboro Palace in the Clouds, yeah, because that's the one you can rebuy. Yeah, you can just rebuy it infinitely, which is cool. I've never used that card in my Turbo Land decks. I always just use Bounce Lands, the Ravnica Bounce Lands. That's something we had talked about last night when I was going. We were, we were talking about options um, when we were doing setup. And specifically for his deck, and I think if he went the other way with bounce because I was we were talking, he was like Sakura Tribe, all then this thing and this thing and this thing combos off, and I was like, but what about Sakura Tribe Scout, a Ravnica Bounce Land, and Retreat to Coral Home? It's three mm -hmm. cards, you just make infinite. Yeah, yeah, infinite or I mean, blocks. Fast Bond plus um, uh, Fast a Bond single plus Bounce Land, land yeah. would give you like basically enough Rune Crab Triggers to kill somebody. Yeah. Obviously, you can pair them up, and you know, I think. I think this card would have been interesting, especially since those Turboland decks so frequently get to utilize a good uh, creature package of different green creatures along with Green Sun Zenith, mm -hmm. like Oracle, Moldiah, Corsair, Crucifix, Sakura Tribe, Scout, Prime yep. Titan, those kinds of things. So you have stuff to put Reality Chip on, and it can act as another sort of way to Oracle the top of your deck and pile your own. Yeah, that, that's a good point. So it seems really... Seems really nice there. I would have tried it in Affinity, because uh, I think it's pretty neat. Yeah. Zero to cost mana that aren't blue but they're the problem with zero dot. but it's half your two card combo if it's it's i have half of my two card combo in my opening hand every single game and all the mon like there are redundant monoliths that you can have so yeah so half your combo is the hard half to get and you have it in your opening hand every uh, game. also like pick a color that doesn't work well with blue that isn't it's true. blue and they but all like red red specifically does great in the combo artifact decks you get goblin engineer and welder and Faithless Looting, Duretti, all these yep. like goofy cards that just like sort of trash for treasure, pull your stuff back. Yeah, absolutely. They do great. Right. Yeah. Um, uh, the the artifact, like you, we mentioned Reality Shaping, I think you and I talked about it before, like with Kappa Cannoneer and the other Kappa Cannoneer that's in the main set. Like I hmm. thought that mm -hmm. was a deck that was just going to be primed to actually play some a lot of the, the new cards and just kind of make waves. And I'm not like saddened that we didn't see it. It was just surprising that so many people just oddly enough like just glommed onto this one theme and then everybody else just kind of played around it. Yeah, I thought that was a little odd. I think that's the biggest that's the biggest reason you don't see like different archetypes in VRD more often. It's that the decks are really good and they're very complicated and you can do a lot with them. It's just that I think players sometimes get stuck and I drafted a boring deck today, so I can't really say too much, but you know, sometimes people just get stuck on pick a color combination and then just try to pick good cards in that color yeah. and don't really worry about what your deck is going to look like at the end of it. Okay. So yeah. It's a little complicated, but it's it's one of those things where just the more preparation you do before the, the yeah absolutely you know, when so it's, when it's I guess that's a, that's a good question and we always bring up the Discord for people who are interested in learning about mm -hmm. uh, VRD and want to to get to play more VRD you know you you came down here from Chicago you, you're yeah. in the Discord you Chi Town present taking the trophy again <laughs> and you're joining the Discord but do you guys do anything locally uh yeah uh, up in Chicago we've got a group of guys um uh, our man Andrew Swift actually started us VRDing like years and years and years back mm -hmm. um and since then there's been a group of us that have been VRDing pretty regularly during COVID we started doing them uh online asynchronously the, sa the same way we do yep, in the Discord. Discord and we did maybe 12 of them or something over mm -hmm. the course, or it, it, that's an exaggeration maybe 8 or something over the course of um, the COVID shutdown. And we do, you know, we do one every New Year's. We usually do a couple a year. Okay. Um, yeah. Outside of that sort of spurt that we did. Nice. But yeah, we get a lot in. There's a lot of really great VRD players up there. Yeah. Um, and I we've been talking about trying to do some kind of content around one of our drafts. Okay. Be looking out for that in the yep. future. Anything else you want to shut up before I kick you out the booth? No, I would like to thank Mark and his lovely wife for hosting an incredible event as always, and I'd like to thank all you nerds for putting up with me. So I appreciate that. Thank you very much. <laughs> thanks for coming in. Second win. Yes. Thanks for stealing a trophy. That's right. right. No, no, the well last draft tonight. Yeah. Oh. We're about to do it. The last match. The last draft. Last draft. Oh, Eric will explain that. Okay. Oh. oh. Oh yeah. Yes. The draft. This is the off-camera draft. Well, this this draft is 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 actually occurring. The the, the objects are on camera. So if you want oh, to take okay. us to the draft interface, to the gameplay interface, actually, we've got all the bottles here. Uh, so what's going to happen is that we we have one final draft, and the final draft that we are doing tonight, of course, is the draft of the prizes. Now, I don't actually know uh, what what uh, places like <laughs> we were still trying to figure out. I think what places people were in at the very end, especially because I know Cody was still playing for live. Let's what actually check on the standings. And here we are. Uh, these standings. Okay, so if we Mason 
Dan and Jeff. So so Dan and Jeff are, are tied. Okay. Brandon and, and Cody are tied. So I think but we have the so the one zero for the tiebreaker. I think that tie we don't we don't use that tiebreaker. Oh, okay. That tiebreaker is fake. We that's challenges tiebreaker. We don't Got care it. about that. Okay. I think what is happening is that Mason is going to pick the first bottle. Yes. And then each of those folks in in some order are going in in some order are going to pick bottles. D- Dan and Jeff in some order. I think I think maybe we're breaking the tie by by actually that tiebreaker might be right because I think that's the heads up tiebreaker. Yes. So I think what will be happening is that Dan Dan will pick second. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, we might have missed the first. Oh no. Um, well, it was uh, wasn't the gin. Do, 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 do. It was the oh no the mystery bourbon still there. Yes. It wasn't the Macallan. Hold on. Yes, we're going to find out what that first pick was. It's very important. Bam, bam. But they're they're going to pick uh, one by one. Mason picking first. And then going down that order, in in order, and then Mason will get, I believe, the last three bottles remaining. Um, and I think the only thing that Mason uses his uh, his VRD bottles for is VRD entry. The wine. So, what's that? Mason took the wine. Uh, Mason took the wine first. Ah, uh, the Woodford going second. I like that pick a lot. The Red Breast there going third, I believe. I'm not as familiar with the Red Breast. I might, I'm interested in the Larceny as well as the gin. I think that both of those are pretty exciting at this point. I am not a gin person, so uh, I'm, if I ended up 7th and 8th and just had gin there, I think I would have rather have had the Applebee's gift card that yeah. Jason was joking about all day. <laughs> Mystery bourbon going forth here, leaving a bottle of champagne, the, uh, the, the, uh, the, the Macallan 12, which is kind of the mm-hmm. like most neutral pick here. That's the most middle-of-the-road scotch. Good to see you, buddy. Thanks for coming in. Saying goodbye to some folks here. VRD Stalwart, Stephen Higgin coming in. It's not a proper VRD until I'm on the screen. Okay. It's really like not. That. So my anecdote for what we're seeing here is when, uh, for the majority of last night, Jason was going to be playing, so we had we had had to go get our buy-in. Right. And. Eventually, we found out didn't have to play, so we didn't have to go. And I just skipped my mind that there was a buy-in like that for the event. So we come in, and I just see like liquor in everybody's backpack. I'm like, "Oh, this event is a lot more interesting." Than <laughs> <laughs> it is the Lupe Fiasco buy-in. Yes, yes. the food or liquor. Yes. All no. right. I think this is the earliest one that's one that's ever ended. Yes, it is because we had no playoff. No playoff. And the so. draft was very snappy. I yes. know you were here for a part of it. Yeah, yeah, I got in for a part of it. Yeah, so it did seem to go pretty pretty swiftly. Yes. I think everybody was established, so there was not a lot of like hemming and hawing right. outside of Brendan. But, like, also, we I don't think we had any particular slow rollers, no, or yeah, no, no, no. or anything. Yeah, and, and I don't want to harp on, on um, make it sound like I'm harping on Brendan for anything. It's just when three players players are playing footsie in the first, yeah, like, he's in the first seat taking his power and other and like substantial cards for the the. the that aren't core that shouldn't he shouldn't have to worry about, but then your core starts getting stolen. Yes. From you, it is very. There's a lot of decisions that you have to make. It does. It does naturally take some more time. Yeah. So, what are our big takeaways from today? Anything? So let's let's move to the let's let's uh, the come back let's, to us. Let's get the screen up here. So, <laughs> ah. the ah. I think the big takeaway is that self mill is still pretty decent. Yes, uh, because that basically spilled across three different decks today. Three yeah. out of the eight decks involve self mill to some degree. Uh, Jeff Jeff's deck being. Just by record, the best right. of the bunch because it had the most redundancy, and I don't know if that's based on card pool knowledge, right, or end experience, or something else. Yeah, I but but it was the the best performing overall. Oh, the draft. Yeah, yeah. honestly. Uh, yeah, so I was just getting a message to make sure we uh, hype out that August thirteenth is going to be our next. That will be our yes. summer VRD. So we do these quarterly. Yep. And August 13th is the summer baby. So that will be the week after Gen Con, um, if you're planning on doing that. I don't know with uh, COVID if I'm going to do it yet. Uh, if I do, I'll take my daughter up for a day. Yeah. Uh, she's enjoyed it before. But Yeah, I think uh, my wife and I, might, who was in the chat, Cryptic of Mine, might come down for that one. Okay. And- uh, my my wife, uh, who was in the chat earlier, uh, I don't know what, what she's doing now, but uh, will be will have just gotten back from Japan, I think, Ooh. a couple days before. Oh, yes, yeah, so I remember you were So I probably won't, like... Come do anything substantial, but I'll right. at least stop by. Yeah, and I, Alex, thanks for showing up. You know. Oh, hey, Alex. 
And then uh, the right after that, there's actually going to be uh, Nerd Rage Games that's coming yep. back to the St. Louis area. So yep. Oh, okay. Have, uh, over in Collinsville, over in that's Collinsville. right. Well, that's where they always come to the St. Yeah. Louis area. Oh, so. right. Yeah. Yeah, so I, think that one, I think one of the big takeaways of this day, as I said this earlier in chat, is mm-hmm. that no one had... Re- like, so there's been a lot of talk about Thornicle, and there's always this kind of threat. Yes. That, and in here, we always discuss it, right? Like, yes. oh, are they going to go Thornicle? Are they going to go Thornicle? Right. And it's never really happened. We've seen it on some of the couple of the discords in like a couple shells, but no, it's always been like control, like Thornicle's just an extra win. The closest anybody really ever got in one of our paper VRDs was actually Dan Zelinsky and his Underworld Breach self mill Thoracle yeah. nonsense. Which last time he went one and six. That he said yeah. he hated and thought was terrible. Right. Which was split out. We had yes. Underworld Breach and Thoracle in two different decks. And too. wheels. Right. right. And, yes. he, and Dan, well, Dan's only win was me in that one. Yes. <laughs> Sadly. Oh, uh, I'm only still here. Fantastic. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, no, Jeff, I, I think, throws it on. I mean, this is a you know solid performing list. Yes. And it really shows it is a strategy that can be gone deep into probably opens up some new thoughts. So I think for those that watch VRDs closely, watch the discords, I expect to see more of this list popping up for a little while. Yeah, I I would expect that. And I think something else we might see in time is the Alluren list. We saw the, the Birthing Pot Alluren list. It what brings, did he end up with in that list? Uh, I, I watched a couple of the games. They looked fun. Andrew, let's take a look yeah. at the standings. What did Swifty end up? Swifty ended Swifty up three did. and four. Okay. So not... Not the the best showing, not the worst showing. Right. Uh, I did see a couple of games, we hear about a couple of games, mm-hmm. where Swifty was the victim of his own Aluren. Yes. Uh, one of those games uh, against Mason, where uh, Swifty stuck the Aluren, Mason was short on lands, and uh, Mason ended up uh, winning the game because of the Aluren. Also, uh, Jeff picked it up because of the Aluren casting, Jace Vrind's Prodigy, Shadow Mage Infiltrator, and something else through... The Aluren. Yep. Okay. So just saving all that mana, just being the untapped, pick up a card with Shadow Mage of the Traitor, then the next turn just dropping combo pieces through it. Yeah. I just think, taking a look at this deck, because it was a question I asked myself, can you play Aluren and how do you get Aluren reliably? Mm-hmm. And I think the the marriage of these two decks is a really good way to look at it. And the reason I think we might see it is because I don't think this is a final product. No. I think this is a really good place to begin your iteration. And so we might see this pop up because of that. People want to experiment with it and iterate on it and, and try something else. Um, I can also see... Uh, food chain being built out from one of these lists as well. I think the the biggest takeaway for me, so I, I had come in, I always come in, if I'm going to commentate, I always come in with a with a plan in my back pocket in case I do need to play, right? Mm-hmm. I have a lot of deck lists mocked up, of course. I'm always trying to update those. But if I, if I was going to play today, based on what I thought the meta was going to be like, I was going to try to draft mono red. I was okay. just going to try to draft red cards and attack people and burn their faces. And based on the meta that I saw today, I think that would have been pretty good. Mm-hmm. A lot of these decks were a little bit soft to early aggression. A lot of people were fighting very early over over their archetypes with each other and missed out on the chance to get a lot of sideboard cards. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's a that's an environment where something like mono red thrives. So that's the and I think the the lesson here the the big lesson here though is from from Dan Zelinsky the ability to pivot partway through the draft. Yeah. Yes. Finding finding an out, finding an off ramp when your strategy is getting cut away from you when what you're drafting just isn't working. Having that off ramp in your colors, having that backup plan in your pocket, is so important. Well, I also yeah. think there's something to be said for. So there, I think there's two kind of two pivots I see here, and one is Dan's, which I think is a very solid pivot. And he also yes. pivoted something he's very familiar with. So yes, pivoting something you're familiar with is good. Uh, but I think sometimes when we pivot, uh, and this is Brandon's, I think that we we pivot into a place of comfort, but it also is, it ends up being kind of a little messy at times, right? Yeah, and yeah. that's uh, so the focus pivot is a particular strength. Yes. There. Uh, what new cards did we see show up? That, that's a question I asked the entire day, and I think Kappa Cannoneer is did, the only... Did Kappa main deck, or... Yeah. How did it... No. Yeah. Cast it once. Okay. Yep, so last You've night... you got Cody here in the room as last well. Last night we prepped for it. So last right. night we prepped for Kamigawa Neon Dynasty, and we were putting the sheet together, and right. we put uh, Swift Reconfiguration on there, yep. we put Lion Sash on there. I don't think Reality Chip made it on there. No, Reality Chip didn't make our preview show. We did not add the... Uh, Planeswalker, the Demir Planeswalker. Kind of Shizuki. Yeah, we, yeah. So we when we say that. new for here, it's the new since uh, Val counts too. So Soren the Mirthless. Oh, okay. Yeah. So then Soren. So what we saw actually then was Soren uh, the Channel Lands, mm-hmm. and I think that might have been it. Okay. There was like one other. We had one other Neo card go late. We had the Mind Link Mech, uh, which never. I don't think oh, Dan right, ever yes. brought in, but was an interesting that was an option. Interesting option for the Infect deck, just sort of as a redundant threat, but ultimately not something that Dan yeah. decided to go with. Yeah, right. there were a number of cards that we talked about last night 
as well, just to add to the sheet, just to, you know, get up to because it's a three by three proxy sheet, right? You right. Know, what do we think? And uh, I believe Kappa Cannoneer was the only card to come off of that sheet. Yeah. Um, a lot of people pivoted off of Neo, which was surprising to me because I thought it brought a lot of options, but some of that is due to the fact that there just was not a dedicated artifact deck here. Right. Right. There, the, there was the uh, well, Cody, Cody's deck was the closest to a dedicated artifact deck, and it wasn't necessarily like it wasn't the artifact deck you think of when you think of the artifact deck. Yes, it was a it was a combo deck that was you know that that, that used artifacts rather than the artifact deck. When I think of the artifact, I think deck. I think of more like you know we've got Goblin Welder, we've we've got you know Doretti, the things that Mace yes. was talking about sort of near the end of the interview there. Um, you know my my deck from the the one of the online VRDs, the I, the Zerta deck. That's, yeah, that's that's all the that's a the artifact deck. Yes, <laughs> I think another good way to put it is: can your deck utilize Arcbound Ravager? Right, then you're probably in the artifact uh, deck. Bloom Shrieker is that? <laughs> Um, that's newish, right? Oh like, yes, he says. Oh, that's a neo card. Yes, that's yes. correct. That was in the Aluren list, correct? Yeah, yeah that, yes. that so, ended up in the side. That's, that's a solid Aluren card. Yes, yeah. it's another Eternal Witness. Yeah. So yeah, that, that's sure the Aluren since it's not dying or going away. Yeah. Yeah. Cor- correct. Yes. Um, instead of, I think you, you could have also played the the Megamorph Witness from Modern Horizons two. Mm, mm, the one. oh the uh, the the Eternalized one, Timeless Witness. Yes, right. that one's a little tougher at four mana. I think it is four. Okay, and because would, because the Alluring deck is so 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 heavy on yeah, permanence, two limb so Yeah, sweet. yeah. It, it's not like they were hurting for things to do, but right. yeah, I thought it was three Eternalized for four. So oh gosh, mistake. yeah, it's yeah. it's four and it's Eternalized for seven. I Ooh, think. God, yeah, yeah, yeah it's a lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But well, covers sound really good today, guys. So we had a lot of fun today. Yeah. yeah, it was a, the every every part about this was. Yeah, was y'all, a blast. Did, y'all did a great job. Today. I, I I want to particularly say, Peter, that I thought you did a fantastic job today. It was it was a lot of fun oh, getting thank to you. commentate yeah. with you over the course of the day. Yeah, I and I enjoy this as well, and I hope we get to, to do it again in the future. I, I, I hope well. We we may we may mm-hmm. not we'll we'll see what my future holds yes. in terms of um, don't depress me, Eric. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Right, <y'all>. we, uh, <laughs> things we can't talk about. Yeah. Yet. Things 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 are happening. Uh, I love being involved with VRD. It's one of the most fun things I do, just in general. Um, but as we wind down here, I also want to make sure that we say thank you once again. I know Mason said this, but I want to thank both Mark and Neem for, for just being such fantastic hosts. Absolutely. Uh, you know, as always, opening their home to us, uh, food and drinks and just putting up with all of our nonsense all day. And I know I know Mark Mark wants to play. Mark loves to play. And we got to get him more opportunities yeah. to do that. It's been almost 24 hours worth of shenanigans in this house. Yeah. Well, over, actually, because we were here for setup. Although it was pretty light yesterday. It was just about three of us, you know, moving yeah. things around. But it, it's still intrusive. And it... it Definitely needs to be said as many times as possible. Yeah, it's, Thank it's, you. it's hugely appreciated by by everybody here. And uh, Jason Jason's out there somewhere, yep. and he also did a fantastic job today. It's yes, a lot of lot of fun, a lot of fun of us as always getting to commentate with him. Mm-hmm. But I think at this point we're pretty much done here. Yeah, we've Un- done we've Un- done the thing. Yeah, until next time. Yeah, thanks everybody. Thank uh, come on back August thirteenth. Yes, until then.